hello everyone in this video we are going to learn how to install and start working with Python and start working with Python so think about Python and the code you want to write as the language it's a language programming language and you want to write it somewhere where can you write this think about it compared to for example English language or Spanish or Arabic languages you can write it anywhere you can write it in a notebook you can write it on a whiteboard on your computer the same for the programming languages including Python you can write it on your on, on an environment for example like PyCharm there is another environment like Anaconda and both of these the first two they need they require installation they require installation I will show you one of them maybe we can take Anaconda or PyCharm or both of them how to install it and there are other tools like Colab by Google which doesn't require installation where you can write and start coding and start writing your Python program without requiring any coding so let's go ahead and start with the first one install we have two steps installing python from python.org then install pycharm okay let me go to a new tab on google i will type here python.org click enter then you have this screen depending when you are watching this video the screen might be different the website might be a little bit a little bit different but you will be able to find a button that says downloads downloads now i'm using i am using windows so i will hit on this button python 3.11.1 if you have mac os you click on mac os but for me i'm using windows so i will go ahead with python 3.11 3.3.11.1 now this is the version 3.11.1 this is the version of python there are previous versions and possibly or most prob probably there will be future versions so if you are watching this video sometime in the future that this version might be 3.12 or 3.11.5 or something so don't worry it's all all of them are the same some updates here and there but don't install something old like 3. Point, let's say 8 or 3.7 some features might not be working so 3.11 is perfect i will hit enter and the installation will start the installer you can see it on the bottom left side or corner of your screen i'll hit enter one click left click on this then it will ask me install python 3.11.164 bit yes this is what you want 64 bit okay select install now to install python with default settings or choose customize to enable or disable some features let's say click on this and see what does it have you have documentation okay no problem these are some documentation files giving you some uh, help and uh, maybe learning documents pip install pip which can download and install other python packages yes we require this uh, idle install this uh, development environment yes we need the development environment where we write our code python test suite no problem keep everything the same click next then advanced options don't change anything just keep the path the same and click install installation restart do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device no problem click yes we trust it we know this website it will start installing it might take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on the speed of your connection let's wait for it so as i said this is one way the first step is to install the python the python from python.org also there is another step which we need to which we need to install which is pycharm okay pycharm let's wait a few seconds okay perfect installation has been finished now setup was successful click close and that's it perfect this is the first installation second one i will go sorry i will just go to a new tab and here pycharm i will type pycharm download pycharm download it's from a company jetbrains.com click on the first one download pycharm python ide or id for professional click on it and once you click you have two options you have this website jetbrains.com pycharm download you have two options professional or community professional is for more advanced more features it's paid not free paid one you don't need this one at the beginning we will go with the community it's a free of course and also includes everything you require as 
starting point for Python. I will click download and it will install the PyCharm again on the lower left side. It will take a few minutes. So this is the PyCharm is the environment where we are going to write our code. Okay, this is your notebook. Let's say this is your whiteboard where you will write your code. The code you can write it anywhere. Even the code you can write it on a paper, right? Or you can write it on a notepad or a Word file. But it has limited application or it has limited features because you will not be able to debug or to see if there is error. Once you install the environment like PyCharm, it will give you the ability to understand if there are errors, there are some documentations for help, there are some functionalities, it gives you hints and so on. So that's why you are installing the environment. Let's take a few seconds, wait for it. Great, installation has been finished. I will click on it, lower left side. Now it's starting in a few seconds. It will open a new window or a new box. And it will ask, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? No problem, yes. Click yes. Welcome to PyCharm Community Edition Setup. Click next. Keep the path as it is, don't change it. Next. The only thing you can click here is create desktop shortcut. This is the only thing. The other things keep it as it is. Next, install. Now it will take a few minutes again to install PyCharm Community Edition to your laptop. Let's take a few seconds or a few minutes and we'll come back after. Perfect, installation has been finished. Now completing PyCharm Community Edition setup. It says PyCharm Community Edition has been installed on your computer. Click finish to close setup. And you have the option to run PyCharm Community Edition. We can do that or we just click finish. And now we successfully installed Python from python.org and installed PyCharm. How can I start coding then? How can I open PyCharm? Simple, go to your start menu and click or search for PyCharm, PyCharm. You have PyCharm Community Edition. PyCharm Community Edition, simply click on it and you will have a new box or a new window that is going to open in a few seconds. Okay, let's give it a few seconds to open PyCharm Community 2022.3 from JetBrains. Let's wait for it a few seconds and loading python project search everywhere this is just some hints what you can do with it okay now i have project and i have my window and i can start working immediately for example i can create so this is if you come on that first one so this is the window here on the black side this is the main things where the main work will happen this is on the left is just for the files and folders and other things but we don't need it usually i can just click one click to hide it or click open it again i can create a new project right click on python project and it will open a new a new file you can click on new file or python file we need python file you can click file then assign it as python file or simply just python file i click python file give it a name i will call it test to click enter and this is my test two, you see here, test two. I can simply one plus one. Then to run it, I go to this arrow on the top right, right? Run test two. And it gives you here, no Python at C program. Okay, whatever, there is error or whatever it is, but it is working. So I have now my, I have my Python PyCharm and it's a read, it is ready to work. So this is not working because what I can do, I can make it work. For example, if I want to test it, I will remove this one. Print, open, let's say, hello. This is very famous. Hello, world, hello world, and then run it. And what will happen is, it gives some errors we will look at this error later we will learn how to fix it and debug some errors but for now all i need is just to make sure it is working it is working for example if i open another file here i can write one plus one and go ahead press run
okay great so now we installed python files and python charm where we can start writing don't worry about the errors don't worry about anything else just we in this step we learned how to install python and python charm okay if you have any difficulties with this step just leave a comment or message me and we'll be happy to help you to install it and make sure it is working now this is one way another way i recommend and i like it is to go which is the third point work with an online tool without installation without an installation so the first step python and python charm we installed some files now if you don't want to install you just want to work online tools collab by google is a perfect choice so what you do you go and you tap open google and just type collab collab click enter and it will give you collab.research.google.com type this or just click on the first one click enter or click on it and it will open the screen for me because I have it already it will show me if you don't have it I assume you don't have it you will sign up easily by entering your Google account you need Google account Google Gmail you need Gmail and email by Google you need a Gmail to sign up and very easy how to do that i will show you so let me open incognito window don't worry about this one this is just a browser that doesn't store my history so because i have already collapsed so whenever i open from a normal window it will open my previous windows right collapse so i cannot sign up but if i open from incognito it will allow me hopefully to sign up so collab dot research dot google dot com okay collab dot research dot google dot com i need to sign in or sign up for this you will have this window you go to file new notebook and google sign in required so i need to sign in simply your enter your email your password for gmail you need a gmail your email and your password and then you are good to go okay that's it very easy to sign up for collab much easier than the other ones now after you sign up you will have a new window you will have collab.research.google.com and you have a new notebook it's called new notebook notebook because you write on it right you are writing the code it's a language same like writing english or writing anything on your notebook and you will have this window if you notice it's similar to the window where i write your comments i wrote my comments where I write, where I wrote my comments. So work with online tools without installation, co collab by Google. And let's see if I want a new code here, one plus one, and then click on the arrow. It will run this code and the result will be two, right? We can use Python as a calculator, but this is not the main purpose of Python, just for demonstration. So give it a few seconds because the first time to run a code on this notebook, it will take a few seconds to set up. And the answer, as you can see here too. If I want a new code, click new code. And here I'll write, for example, print, open brackets. Don't worry about what is the print, all these. I just want to test hello world make sure it's working then go and press on the arrow and everything will be there hello world so i told python print me this sentence between the brackets right print hello world hello world is between the brackets and i put the double quotation don't worry about this again we are going to learn all these ones now in this first lecture we are learning how to install how to start using python how to start coding so this is the second one so we learned how to install python from python.org and pycharm these two we need them together if you choose the first point installation of python.org and pycharm we need both together to start working using pycharm that's the black screen the first step then i jump to the third one to use the collab which is very easy no installation required now let me show you quickly how to install anaconda anaconda is another environment very famous commonly used and simply you go to google type anaconda download then anaconda.com products distribution just to press or click on anaconda distribution and then you will have the screen you can download from here or you can just go to the bottom of the screen it might change with time so just search for windows or mac os or linux depending on your operating system and choose 64-bit okay 
because the newer ones 64 there might be 32 but you choose 64 now it will start installing on the bottom left corner just give it a few minutes depending on your network and we'll come back after it finished installation okay here we are now we have the installation just to click on it and in a few seconds it will open a new dialog box where it will guide us to install our environment the installation is straightforward you just go to the website of any of the environments PyCharm, Anaconda just follow the instructions and it will take you to the installation and it will prompt you to install correctly okay just it's installing please wait verifying installer 40 percent a few seconds so which one to choose out of these all of them are good if you don't want to install anything call up quick and easy and within one minute you can start coding anaconda is recommended very good one so let's go next i agree no problem just me or all users no just me next don't change the path next directory is not empty please choose different location okay because i had it already let's say browse and i'll change to okay anaconda cancel and i will change for example let me try another one next okay add and advanced option for you let me go back for you you change nothing here anaconda 3 keep it as it is for me because i had it before so that was not empty folder so i just changed it to 2 but for you don't change anything i'll click next here advanced options even if it says add anaconda 3 to my path not recommended no click on it no problem don't worry about it just click it will help you with the documentation with the files and then click install it will take a few seconds or a couple of minutes let's see while installing so what i was saying is any of these tools or any of these environments collab pycharm anaconda i keep repeating this one but it's very important to understand that there is no difference more or less all of them gives you the same options the difference between pycharm anaconda from one side and from the other side collab is collab has no installation immediately you can work on it just sign up with your gmail account pycharm and anaconda you need to install some files into your computer right into your computer so there are some advantages and disadvantages for each one it doesn't matter as a starter which one you will work on let's have, wait a few seconds and we will come back after the installation finishes okay it's still installing almost finished this is the anaconda environment meanwhile let me show you a few things on the collab okay so one thing you can do you can use it as a calculator and this is uh, for python one plus one equals two you just hit the enter the, the arrow here which is control plus enter if you want or print words and the print in python doesn't mean that you're printing a paper it means that type on the screen type on the screen okay if i want a new code either i press control or code sorry press code and here i can for example say a equals two then enter b equals three and then i will say okay python find me a plus b and then i will hit run the code the arrow means run the code okay run the code there are different ways to run the code one is from here the arrow or i can just control in your keyboard control plus enter control enter and what will happen it will give me the answer a plus b 2 plus 3 equals 5 let me see the installation almost finished okay installed all the files everything is okay now finished installation complete setup was complete successfully click next let me show you a few things keep next I don't want the tutorial I don't want the um, help files just finish and click those click finish now it will start it will open just give it a few seconds so remember I keep repeating this one very important we have different options maybe three of the common ones one is anaconda pycharm and also you have the online without installation which is the collab now if i go to my start and search for anaconda let me see anaconda 
sorry anaconda it will have anaconda prompt anaconda i don't want the prompt anaconda still installing anaconda navigator you need to find anaco anaconda navigator anaconda navigator okay let's let me see if i click on it anaconda navigator it will open for you the prompt so yes it's there another thing i want to see it's still installing it takes some time huh? it's uh, because it's big files so it takes some time this is the by charm let me just close it exit okay more a few more seconds for anaconda to install finish installing i need the anaconda navigator but not the app not the app okay and anaconda by the way is not only for is not only for python it's also for other programming languages okay let me let me come back in a few minutes or a few seconds when the installation finishes okay here now perfect anaconda finished installation so i go my startup I search for anaconda navigator click on anaconda navigator then this window will open for you anaconda navigator under anaconda navigator there are many applications i need to go to the home tab and go to Jup jupyter notebook jupyter notebook and click on launch it will take again a few seconds it's a straightforward forward process but the installation takes time so be patient with it and I will wait for Jupyter to uninstall and once you install Jupyter as you can see there are many applications even there's Java, JavaScript, Oracle there are even PyCharm you can install from here there are different things so once Jupyter installed I will not wait for it too long once Jupyter installed then you have your environment ready to start working with Anaconda Navigator or the Python using Anaconda environment okay so this is the third way we are using now for this course i will be using mainly i will be using mainly the collab okay i'll be using mainly the collab because it has everything and it's enough to work with python so that was the first lecture for installation of python and start working with it choose the right one for you choose the anyone you would like the easiest as i said is the collab so thank you very much and i will see you soon in the next video Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to run python codes and how to use the collab. Now here I am on my collab where I can use python and write python codes without installation, okay, without installing any software. So I have this file untitled 10, I can change the name, I can say it for example, running python code and you see the extension, the type is IP, Y and B, okay python and here in this lecture we are going to run python codes so the first thing is to create a new cell or a new code and here is the plus sign click on it and you have a new cell and a new python code so here the first thing simple we saw it for example i want to write one plus one on my keyboard i can run this code i can execute this code by simply pressing the enter or pressing this arrow now it's running it will take a few seconds because it is the first time to run a code in this notebook okay and the answer is two now if i want a new one i can go a new code and here for example i want to print and as we learned the print doesn't mean that you are going to print something it means that you are telling python to type what you want on the screen and whenever you want to print if you want to print a text you need to put it between double quotation double quotation and here we can write hello world hello world then what you can say you can go to this arrow and click on it or another way is control enter in your keyboard you press control and enter at the same time hello world and it will print hello world see here it prints whatever between the double quotation it prints whatever between the double quotation if i change this one you can edit here if i say test for example run it again and it will change to test okay 
whatever between double quotation will be printed in Python as it is as it is if I say plus for example here if I say 1 plus 1 the output here will not be 2 it will be 1 plus 1 between because it is between double quotation and Python will treat it as a string or as it will type it it will print it as it is 1 plus 1 the output will be 1 plus 1 okay if you want the answer you if you want the calculation you say 1 plus 1 just simple as simple as that okay what happens if we remove the double quotation here and run the code the answer will be 2 so we are telling Python here treat this inside I want the answer of 1 plus 1 which is 2 so it's the same as 1 plus 1 or print 1 plus 1 it is the same what happens now if I have a new code double quotation without a print and I write hello world for example and I hit enter and it will print hello world okay with the quotations with the quotations now if I double quotation or one quotation let's go at the end we're going to see everything about this don't worry about it just we are exploring to see what we can enter here Python printed hello world okay see so the difference if you put print it will give you without the quotations or oh, without the quotations hello world okay perfect what else we can do we can for example store data for example I can say Python a equal to B equals 5 now find me a plus B and the answer as we expect should be 7 excellent I can also do another thing I can say Python C equals a plus B and see here what will happen okay I didn't ask Python to print anything I just told Python C is a new variable which equals a plus B now if I come down and say C okay print for me C or what is the result of C C is 7 because C equals a plus B a equal 2 B plus five, plus B which is 5 so 2 plus 5 that's 7 okay so I'm telling Python print me print for me C or type on the screen for me C which is a plus B which equals 2 plus 5 which is 7 now this is the same if I tell Python print C let's see what happens the answer is 7 okay because Python remembers that C equal a plus B which is 7 now what happens if I change one of them imagine a now equals 5 or let's say equals 4 so I just a plus B 9 if I run this one again it's 9 and if I run one this one it's 9 so it changes okay Python remembers and changes automatically okay great these are a few things and how we can run a code in Python a few things here so we learned the code if you want to enter a new code you can do this one also by by, by the way we said control enter it will execute right it will run the code you can also do shift enter shift plus enter and it will run the code at the same time will generate a new cell will open a new cell for you to write a new code here uh, we have the file edit view insert runtime tools help there are many things here we will explore many of them not everything but many of these things we'll see what they include and how can we benefit from them also here you have the storage usually for our exercises we don't need a lot of storage until very advanced level if you are working with big data sets with big programs that's different story but for now we don't need this okay perfect keep going and I will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to learn a little bit more about the data types data types in Python data types in Python so I wrote here I am here now on my collab Google Colab as we learned how to open it we open Colab and then I have one cell I put my comments just what to remember what I'm going to teach in this video and here I want you the first thing to note everything in Python if you start with a hashtag it means this is a comment this is a note so Python once he sees a dash 
he immediately say okay this is not part of the code this is not part of the code I will not execute it see if I do this one if I remove the dash or let me first with the dash let me run the code what will happen nothing code will not be there is nothing to execute because all my lines are notes are comments right there will be no error there will be no results nothing will be out of this cell let's wait a few seconds and the result is there is nothing right which is normal now see what happens if I remove the dash and I tell Python okay let's run this code and there will be an error the error is indicated by a red line and also here uh, there is the error so I will tell Python this is not for execution this is not for running don't run this code so hashtag I will add just a hashtag and everything will be okay so data type this is overview of the data types the first one is called integers and these are whole numbers such as three five hundred seven for example this is an integer okay this is an integer three how do we know the type of of the number or of the data type how do I know the data type simply you can write type sorry I need to change the language type then open brackets then put three for example run this code and the answer is int int is the short for integers okay we're going to learn a little bit more about the types and how to find the type of the data so the first one was integers these are whole numbers like 3 517 and so on floating points these are numbers with decimal point like 3.2 200.0 5.9 and so on strings these are order these are ordered sequence of characters ordered sequence of characters same like hello 200 or this Arabic text marhaba so and all of them are between double bracket double quotation or single quotation double quotation or single quotation so 200 here this is a number but because it's between because it's between the double quotation this is called a string it's not a whole number it's not integer in this case okay and if you want to double check I can create a cell here and I say okay type let's start with 200 first and then run this code run this code it's integer now if I change it by adding double quotation double quotation here and here and run the code the type will be str which is the short for strings okay perfect then I have lists ordered sequence of objects and they are between this square brackets 100 hello 200.3 anything can between in the list it can include anything integers floating points strings anything then I have dictionaries unordered it's unordered sequence and it includes two parts the first part it's the key then the value okay so I have a key then I have a value and here sorry there are colon not comma okay so I have key then value for example name and colon then sum name colon sum then I, we are going to talk a lot more about each and every one of these we are going to see them a lot so don't worry this is just an overview then tuples or tuples ordered immutable sequence of objects immutable means they cannot be changed any item any item in the tuple cannot be changed okay we are going to talk about it more and there is brackets here okay 100 hello 100.5 it can include anything but again they cannot be changed sets an ordered collection of unique objects and they have this what they call this one like um, um, what they call this one is like curly braces curly curved yeah curved curved uh, braces maybe and it can include objects a b we are going to talk about it more then we have booleans and the booleans are logical values indicating either true or false so for example five larger than two this is a true so this is boolean we are going to talk about it more okay so we learned here a few things number one to summary to summarize you have the hashtag at the beginning this makes it a comment or a note and Python will not run this code will not run it as a code number two we learned data 
types one two three four five six seven eight of them then we also learned how to find the type of the data okay and that's simply by adding type then brackets sorry i need to change the language type then open brackets then write whatever you want inside right you can write 5.6 for example run the code and the result is float floating point right float because there is a decimal point perfect thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to learn more about the numbers in python and how can we use python as a calculator so let me open a new code and here the first thing we need to learn about plus minus multiplication and division so we can use it as we saw as a normal simple calculator so one plus one and run this code equals two also if i want to just say five minus two run the code so i have sum i have subtraction then also i can do multiplication six and i use the asterisk sign times it three run the code and i have 18 also i can use it as a division so a nine let's say divide by three divide over three and the answer is a three so i can use it this way also i can use it for something called mod or module as module okay module and what does it mean what does this mean it's useful thing and let me put here a comment a dash just to make it as a comment now for example if i say 10 divide 10 over 2 the answer is 5 right 10 over 2 the answer is 5 so I just need to sorry let me just remove the comments just to be as a normal code 10 over 2 run the code and the answer is 5 right now see what happens if I enter let's say 10 over 3 what is the answer here we know it's 3 point something 3.3 then a few times what about let's say 15 divide by 4 that's a 3.75 3.75 because there are three fourths and the remaining is a three right so now see what happens if I change the normal division let me just put the cursor here and say a new code and I have a new cell here if I say 15 and this time not the forward slash I will say the per percentage sign and this sign is the mod or module sign what does it do let's see the result first then we discover together what does it mean three here so what happens here python will say okay how many fours are there in 15 how many fours are there in 15 there are three fours and there is a remaining the remainder is how much is a three correct is a three okay let me change the number let's see another example and make it clearer let's say 17 over 17 and then percentage sign 4 and here what do we expect how many fours are there in 17 there are four fours because 4 times 4 is 16 and there is a remainder 1 correct so the answer here should be 1 because the percentage sign or the mod calculation tells me what is the remainder after the division operation and the answer is one okay so this is useful because you can check with this one what is your remainder how much is remain reminding how much is the remainder after you finish your division operation also this is useful because you can find it find with it you can find if a number is even or odd if the number is even or odd how can we do that we know if the number is even when you divide it by two the remainder should be how much should be zero for example if i say 10 divide by let's say two correct so this the answer is five right and how much is the remainder the remainder is zero because we can double check here 10 and percentage sign two the answer should be zero here because there are five twos in the 10 and there is nothing remain re, the, nothing nothing left correct nothing left after the division 
so we know that 10 is 10 is what 10 is an even number what about let's say 15 15 mod 2 always divide by 2 because all even numbers are dividing by 2 with a zero remainder let me run this code and the answer is 1 because there are 7 twos and the remainder is 1 so 15 is odd number 15 is odd number let's see okay so 15 is an odd number this is useful because often in your program you need to find if a variable if a number is even or odd and then you can do this you can use the mod okay we are going to see that in a prog in a program in an actual program one more thing we can use also python as equation to to perform calculations and more complex calculations and some equations for example if i want to say and operation orders respecting the operation orders what do i mean if i say for example 2 plus 10 times 5 plus 3 so the answer here should be 55 correct 10 times 5 because the we are respecting the calculations so uh, order 10 times 5 that's 50 plus 2 plus 3 that's 55 55 now if I change this one if I say no I want 2 plus 10 first then 5 times a 3 so I need to put it between brackets 2 plus 10 close the brackets then I will say times 5 plus 3 and now the answer will be different 12 times 8 which is 96 okay so I can also do that with Python so whatever you can do in a calculator Python can do and even more complex things so these are a few things we have seen the operations calculations plus minus multiplication division then we saw the mod or module which is using the percentage sign and this gives you the remainder to check for remainders okay and to check is useful to check for even numbers the power uh, we didn't see the power let's see the power so how do you use the power so if I want 2 to the power of 3 and I enter it by double asterisk enter the answer should be 8 okay another one let's say 3 to the power 4 and the answer is 81 okay so the power by using double asterisk then the order of operations as we have seen in the equation here okay that's it for the numbers we are going to see more numbers and more about the numbers and we are going to use it in programs and larger code and it will be also with more examples so you can have everything clear thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to do some exercises i will present the questions in this video then take your time and the next video we will do the solutions together so let me go over the questions for you and then take your time try them answer the questions then in the next video come back and see the answers so the first question write an ex expression that equals 100 for example 50 plus 50 or 2 times 30 plus 4 times 10 2 times 30 60 plus 4 times 10 that's 40 which is 100 try to use more than one arithmetic operator like this example 2 times 30 this is 1 plus 2 4 times 10 3 make it more complex try to play around it there are infinite number of solutions okay so there is not only one correct answer you can answer this question by using many different combinations question number two what is the result of 1 plus 3 times 2 minus 5 it should be easy question and just make sure to respect the operators order question number three which of the following will give the result of 25 option number one five times five five to the power five five plus five plus five plus five easy question try all of them and see what is the result in Python also question number four which of the following I misspelled following which of the following is a floating point number 500 9645 200.0 hello dot world okay if you want to check 
if you want to check the type of any data simply I will give you a hint it's just type type then between the brackets and write your data for example 500 and if I run the cell it will give me integer right 500 is integer so you can check this one or go back to the definition of floating point number and see what it should have okay perfect see you in the next video where we will go go over the questions and answer them thank you hello everyone again okay in this video we are going to go over the training the practice exercise and see the solutions so question number one says write an expression that equals 100 okay and give some examples and here what we can do there are different answers you can have many answers not only one answer so I can write for example 100 plus 0 and this is accurate right let me run this one control plus enter and the answer is 0 is 100 also I can say 99 plus 1 control enter the answer is 100 also I can make it a little bit longer I can say 1 plus 55 plus this is 56 I can plus 4 this is 60 plus 40 and then control enter that's 100 so there are many ways to make this correct also I can make 10 to the power 2 control enter and the answer again is 100 I can add floats floating points to the power 2 is the same should be right 100 okay perfect so there are many answers for this one whatever you wrote is correct if the answer is 100 question number two says what is the result of 1 plus 3 times 2 minus 5 we can do this manual and then check it with Python so 1 plus 3 times 2 minus 5 remember there is priority the priority the order first to the multiplication so 3 times 2 that's 6 plus 1 that's 7 minus 5 is 2 right the answer is 2 let me check I'll copy this one Control C Control V to paste it Control enter to run and the answer is 2 don't do the mistake which is 1 plus 3 that's 4 times 2 that's 8 minus 5 3 no this is not correct you need to start with the multiplication question number 3 says which of the following will give the result of 25 okay let's check them 5 times 5 that's 25 correct 5 to the power 5 no this is much more than 5 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 that's 20 let's check them one by one here I can say 5 times 5 let me run it the answer is 25 then if I say to the power double asterisk this is the answer 3 1 2 5 and then if I say plus of course this is manually easy but just to demonstrate how it works in Python and the answer here is 20 as we expect and the last question which of the following is a floating point number 500 9645 200 point zero hello dot word so we know the floating point number has a decimal right has a decimal so we know number three is correct number one no number number one is integer number two is integer number three is a floating point number four is a string don't be confused with the dot here this is not a decimal this is just inside a string so what we can do here we can check it how we check the type of a data in python we simply enter type then i put my data which is here 500 control this is integer if i change 9645 9645 this is integer also 200.0 see the difference here this is str a float this is a float right floating point and hello world i can just copy this one all of it Control C, put it inside the type. Control Enter. That's a string, right? A string. Okay, perfect. So these are a few things just to make sure we understand and practice a little bit about the data types in Python. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello, everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the variables assignment. So we have a few points starting variables assignment. We'll see how to do that. How to check the type of the variable using the type function within Python and how to 
also a few things a few rules about the variables variables cannot start with a number there can be no spaces in the name of the variable instead we use the underscore and it's considered the best practice to use lowercase for the variable names it's not a must but it's a good practice and in the future we are going to learn when we can or when it's good practice to use uppercase for variables and the last point avoid using words that have special meaning in python like list or int list this is a special word or a special variable in python already reserved in python for a list and int reserved for integer right okay let's learn more about these points with some examples let me add a new code a new cell variables assignment let me take first variable for example i will say my variable is x and i will say equals 10 x equals 10 now if i type x and run the code it gives me the value 10 gives me the value 10 i also can reassign this let me open a new cell i if i print x again x is 10 but now i will say x equals 5 if okay x equals 5 then i print x again and the answer is 5 so this is i assigned x to 10 but then i changed my mind and said no x is not 10 x is 5 so this is called reassignment of the variables okay reassignment so you can do that in python it's totally okay so now x equals 5 now let me add a new variable called y y equals let's say equals 3 and run the code now if i check x is 5 and y is 3 now if i want to check x plus y see what we can do here x plus y 5 plus 3 equals 8 also i can do variables operations i can do operations on the variables themselves instead of writing 5 plus 3 equals 8 i can give it more meaning right x plus y x can be anything and in this case i assign it to 5 but maybe later it can be something else and y equals a 3 in this case 5 plus 3 equals 8 also if i change i can do all the operators i can perform all the operations x times y should be 15 also i can to the power 5 to power 3 125 and so on okay i also we learned the division 1.6 also we learned the mod the mod what should be the answer here 5 mod 3 control enter and the answer is 2 because this is the remainder right and so on okay excellent now let me remove this now what if i say okay z equals x plus y this is an equation z equals x plus y and now i want z it's 8 okay instead of typing x plus y i can just refer to z z equals 8 okay let's see real life example or more meaningful example now i can say monthly salary monthly salary or let me change it because this is already used before so i can say the salary or salary just salary salary equals let's say seven okay salary equals seven now if i check what is salary control enter it's seven okay seven now what if i say yearly yearly salary or so i used it before so just let me use the fresh things so salary equals seven now imagine the salary changed by 20 percent increased 20 percent so i can say salary equals seven times 1.2 right which is 20 percent extra run this code nothing will be shown always if you want to show something on the screen you want the output you need to type you need to type the name and just control enter now 8.4 because 7 times 1.2 this is 8.4 so this is the assignment and reassignment of the variables point number one number two how to check the type of the variable this is easy we saw it before now if i can if i can if i come here and i say type of x what do you think type of x it is integer right because just a number what about type of z type of z should be also integer right what about type of salary 
control enter sorry i mistype it's a float right because 8.4 that's what that's a float it has a decimal it's a float Montas. this is the type second point variable cannot start with a number let's check that out a new cell if i say 5 test okay equals 10 then control enter run this code or just see there's an error the file line number one there's error and there's a red line below where is the error is five test equals 10 and says invalid syntax invalid syntax it means there is something wrong with your input and because we have five here that's the mistake so test equals 10 now it's okay i can type it on the screen and it gives me 10 so don't start a variable with a number there can be no spaces in the name in the name of the variable use underscore instead so let's see an example a new cell let's say for example um, monthly income equals 100 if I run this there is a syntax error also invalid syntax because there is a space how do we solve it how do we solve this one just remove the space replace it with underscore now run it there is no error everything is okay and then if I want to type it on the screen monthly and you see here all the variables that assigned with starting with monthly it will appear here so you can select and control enter and the answer is 100 monthly income monthly income perfect so don't keep spaces in the variables name it is considered a best practice to use lowercase for the variables names yes better always start with use only lower cases use only lower cases upper cases can be used there there be no error however let's see it for example i can say salary control enter says is not defined because i didn't give any so the salary let's say 1000 now should be okay see there is no error there is no error however it's not good practice it's not a good practice use only small letters lower case okay lower case then avoid using words that have special meaning in python like list or integer for example here the word or is the word or is reserved in python as a special word okay as a special word so you cannot use it as a variable if i use it here what will happen gives me error okay because or python expects me to use the word or in a different way in a different way not as a variable how do we know it's reserved already because the color of the word is a special see the same for and is a special but if i use a word like int int also reserved if i use a word float also reserved if i use test no problem is the black is not reserved so all good okay so make sure you don't use the words that are reserved how do you know the reserved words you don't need to remember you don't need to memorize them python will tell you by having a special color okay perfect this is a lot don't worry about these things much we are going to see them again and again just to play around a little bit do some uh, practice and i will see you in the next video thank you very much hello everyone in this video we are going to learn more about the strings we saw different types of data in python float integer strings list dictionary and so on and now we are going to explore more about the strings so a few things we are going to learn one is how to define how to how to tell python that this input is a string we are using double quote or single quote then we have a sp we are going to see examples of course then we have special case what if what if my string has a quote inside what can we do then what what about this one backward n backward t then the len function and indexing okay let's go ahead and see examples and learn more about the strings so first of all a string can be defined by double quote like hello world okay and it takes a few seconds because this is a new notebook so i put here double quote i can do the same with a single quote let me just wait a few seconds till it work and give me 
that there is no error everything is okay just to finish only the first time you run your notebook it takes a little bit time but then everything okay so here it gave me the output hello world with with the quote right then if I put with a single quote is the same hello world and run the code this is faster and it prints the last one only prints the last one or types the last one which is hello world okay now what if I want both of them hello world the first one and the second one I can just add the print function right print with parentheses and here print print and parentheses again and now if I run the code what will happen both of them will come out okay without the quote without the quotations without the quotation so if you want to run all your input then or type all your inputs then you need to add print add print now what about the special case what if my string already has like uh, a quote I don't like see I start here with a single quote and I don't like this for example and I close it here now I think okay I put a quote at the beginning quote at the at the end this is a string control enter run the code and there is error invalid syntax where is the error because Python thinks okay this is your first quote this is your second quote so Python thinks this is your string however how do how can we tell Python no finish here at the end simply by changing to double quotation okay double quotation if you have if you have if you have the quote or the comma this one single quote in between the string make sure to use double quote quotation at the beginning and at the end so if I run this now it should be okay I don't like this okay see and everything okay of course I can type the function print it will be the same but without the quotations outside perfect this is important thing the same if I say for example I am I am going out I'm going out control enter there is a wrong there is a mistake here there's an error because Python again thinks that this is a beginning of a string so we need to make sure that we add my quotations okay control enter all good now all good perfect so we saw hello world we how to enter it, double quotation single single quotation what happens in the special case if I have a quote inside then control uh, backward sorry backward slash with n what does it do backward slash with n let me take for example this one let me take a new cell and I say here this is my string hello world if I print this one we know the result it's hello world what if I add here backward n what will happen control n there will be an what will happen here if I add print with parentheses and now print and see what happens it gives you a new line gives you a new line backwards sla backwards slash with n gives you a new line so python will say okay i will print hello then a space which is this one there is a space at the end then i will go to the next line space again which is here you see at the space at the beginning then the word world now if i want to remove the space i just simply do this one and python will go to the second line immediately and understands that this n is not a letter this is just to go to the next line the same I can do with print then double quotation hello world and this one will give me hello world but if I put here backwards slash with a T see what will happen the effect of this one it gives you a space let me just change this one to a comment I don't want to print it again so hello world there is like a tab between right tab between okay perfect these are a few things about the strings what else also there is a function a function called len len is a short for length so I can see the length of my string if I say the length of hello world and here we forgot to put what the quotations for my string otherwise there will be an error so the length is 11 how come 11 one each letter each character has 
one index so h is one two three four five the space also is counted six seven eight nine ten eleven let's make a shorter one len of let's say i am how many here should be i have the i then a space then a and m should be four exactly four okay four so the length is four the last thing i want to show you in this video is indexing each character in the string hello for example has has an index and in python the indexing starts with zero not with one so each index is zero okay so starts with zero then the e is one the l is two the second l three the o is four why this is important we are going to see this in the next video when we talk about about the slicing and how to add letters for example or add components to my strings okay for example i want to cut the letter e from the word hello i want to cut the letter e how can i tell python i want to tell python by removing the index removing the component number what number one okay because it's zero one we are going to see this in details in the next video so for now this is the introduction thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video welcome again everyone in this video we are going to learn about slicing and indexing with strings okay let's continue on top of the what we have learned before we learned before what is and what is a string how to enter a string the quotation how to use the backward slash with n and with t also we said each character in the string has an index let's take example for example if i say test string test string equals this this is a variable hello word okay if i run this okay now if i recall it test string and control enter it will give me hello world hello world so it's working everything is okay now a new cell if i say test string and then i want imagine that i want to grab the letter e the letter e from here now remember each letter in the string has an index has a number so and we start from zero so h is zero e is one l is two l is three O is four then the space is five and continue okay the space is five and we continue so if I want to grab the letter E I do an indexing by what by a square by the square square uh, brackets and now I tell Python which which letter I want the letter that has an index number zero one so if I pr type one here I run the code it should retain the letter e perfect it's working imagine that i want the letter o so zero one two three four so if i put four here run the code it should bring back o now what if i want the letter l here not the first two l's the last l here zero one two three four five six seven eight nine if i change this to nine it should give me l so what about d it should be 10 control run and d is 10 excellent now there is another way also to bring the the letters back uh, to to call to recall or to type out the letters so i can either forward indexing or the negative indexing negative indexing counting from the back so d starts with minus one l minus two r minus three and so on so let me say minus one minus one should come back as a d excellent what about minus three should be r control enter r so you have both options either you go forward zero one two three or you ga go backward minus one minus two minus three and so on imagine that we have another string name for example equals a b c d for example ef okay and then control enter name let's call it and gives me a b c d e f excellent now if i want to to call the f simply uh, square brackets 
and minus one instead of counting zero one two three four five um, minus one control enter and gives me the f okay and this is useful if you have a name for example or you have a string that you don't know how long it is but you want to grab the last letter then minus one or the letter before the last minus two and so on okay so this is for indexing okay now take a few seconds and i will give you exercise let's say i have string two this is a variable string two variable equals and my string is this is a test string okay control let me make sure no errors yes then if i string two control enter this is a test string perfect it's working now i would like you take a few seconds and give me this s type an input for python to retain this s in the word test i will give you a few seconds okay let's do it together so we said we need to grab the s so string underscore e a two then square brackets and now let's count zero one two three the space is four five six seven eight nine ten it's the eleventh one right eleventh so i'll write eleven hopefully it's correct and it is correct so 11 is my e now now let's uh, try something new what if i want to slice i don't want to pick one letter i want to retype everything from the letter for example s till the letter t so s till t so how can we do that we can do it like this string then two this is my this is my string name right this is the variable then the square brackets always then i'll start counting zero one two three from three then colon till where so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen till thirteen let me show you what first this thirteen what will happen 3 to 13 s is a test okay it removed the t why because python 13 says okay i'll stop at 13 but i will not include 13 so will not include the t so if you want the t to be included you need to add one more it will stop at the t so 14 and see here it works s is a test let's take other examples just to make the idea clear now let's make it simple test this is a test string and this is a test let's call it let's call it a test okay so test is a string the variable name is test okay now if i recall it control enter it gives me test yes then if i want to grab the letter s here it's zero one two perfect now if i want the letter s and the letter t so i want zero one two three see what will happen it gives me only s who knows why only s because we said start with two zero one two the s then three don't include we are telling python yes stop at three but don't include a three so it stops at s so if i want to include the t i need to increase one four st even if though even though there is no fourth letter zero one two three zero one two three there is no fourth letter but still you need to add one if you want to include the last letter okay okay perfect now another example if i want let's go back to this example string underscore two this is a test string if i want from the letter a till the end how can i do that i can say string let me add it in a new cell just to be clear so i can say string underscore two then square brackets and i want it from the letter where from from this t till all till the end till the end so i'll say zero one two three four space five six seven space eight nine from 10 from 10 now instead of writing till the end which is 11 12 13 and you count and you find the number of the last one i can simply put the colon 
and that's it so this is understood by python that start at 10 till the end Control enter test string okay test string perfect and we can do the opposite imagine that i want string underscore two square brackets i want from the beginning till is okay till is so what can i do from the beginning so this is from the beginning before i didn't write anything so uh, python will understand that this is from the very beginning till zero one two three space four five six is the letter s is the sixth index so i need to add one to include the letter s seven let's see this is perfect okay perfect so play with it very important to understand it let me give you an exercise so let's say my string my string equals hello world okay control enter it's working no errors if i print it if i type here string gives me hello world as output now i would like you to give me the section this one the two l's o till o from l till o take a few seconds and think how can you write your instruction to python to print only these letters i'll give you a few seconds and then continue together okay perfect let's see how we do that my strength square brackets then hello world we said from l till o right l till o so i have zero one two three four five six seven and i add one eight so two to eight two colon eight control enter and gives me ll space w o okay let's see another example or another thing the last thing i would like to show you in this video my string is this let's use this example hello world now if i want my string let me put it here square brackets there is a something like if i want to type everything everything so colon colon so start from the very beginning and end at the very end hello world you don't often see this one because basically this is the same as my string right my string is the string itself hello world right hello world so you don't see this often but why we would use this one because sometimes you don't want you don't want to type all the letters of the string all or all the components of the string sometimes you want to jump what do i mean so let me give this to if now i say okay python print for me my string but jump type one letter then jump skip the next letter then type one letter then skip how do i do that i'm telling python print all the letters from the very beginning till the very end and here i will write two tick a skip so see what happens here hello world h printed yes then e skipped then l printed the second one is skipped and so on i can increase the jump by three or by four so i'm taking the h then skip e l l then the o is okay and so on okay what else another trick you can reverse see minus one what if i type minus one what will give me it's reverse see hello world reversed so minus one tells okay print everything from the very beginning till the very end but reversed order d l o r o and so on d l r o w and so on this is reversed this is a good trick if you want to reverse your string reverse the order of your string what else we can we can do also my string okay square brackets let's try this one okay this will give me everything right but here if i say okay start don't start from the very beginning start from the second index or index number two then finish at index number seven let's say or index number six and take a step two what will happen here see l l and o what happened here i start from the second one zero one l this is number two finish at the sixth one four three four five six okay and 
I ignore the sixth because there's a space only and take two as a skip. So I'm skipping, I'm taking zero, one, two. I'm taking the L, sorry. I'm taking the L, then skip two, L and O, then do the next stop at the six zero one two three four five six don't include the o the last one is the last one is the space so is the last printed is the letter o sorry the last letter printed is o because again zero one two i started at the l typed l here okay zero one two then three four is the o five space six is sixth is the w but it will not be taking the w it will not be taken why because it's not included so the last letter will be printed is the letter o the last letter will be printed is the letter o okay perfect i will see you in the next video and more about slicing and indexing and more practice thank you and see you shortly Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we are going to learn and extend our skills about strings. In the previous videos, we learned about strings, about how to slice them, how, how to index them. And today, in this video, we are going to learn what does it mean that strings are immutable, how to change a letter or item inside a string using concatenation, and we'll explain what does it mean with examples. Then we'll take more examples to make uh, the idea clear. Then we learn about strings multiplication and uh, some errors or mistakes we need to avoid. And then we'll end this lesson by learning about built-in methods regarding strings. So let's start. So let's take a string name equals mark. Name equals mark. In the previous videos, we learned that if I want to grab the letter M from the beginning, simply I can open square brackets and put the index of the letter m which is zero we said always we start from zero and then if i hit control enter it retains m right the letter m the letter m imagine for any reason that i would like to change the letter m with the letter d to make it dark instead of mark dark so how can i do that someone might think that okay m zero let me reassign it to the letter d okay let's see what happens here and Python will retain an error. And the error says here, the type of error string, the str, the string, is an object which doesn't support item assignment. It doesn't support item assignment. It means you cannot assign an item inside the string to something specific, to the letter D in this case, okay? We cannot assign the item zero to letter D because a string is immutable immutable it cannot be changed immutable cannot be changed so how can we do that how can we change the letter m to letter d there is a special technique called concatenation which is adding two strings or adding uh, using the plus sign let's see how it works so first of all what i will do is i will take everything i will remove the letter m by taking everything beside or after the letter m how to do that simply name and previous lesson we learned if i want to take everything after the letter m i will say okay i will take one this is the m is zero index a is one r two k three so i'll take everything everything from one till the end right till three or till four actually but simple way is just to take till the end control enter let's make sure and it re returns arc returns arc now what I will do is simply I will tell Python add to the name from one till the end add to this line the letter D simple like this how do you add using plus sign so D plus name from one till the end should give me dark dark excellent yes now you might ask okay if I put three here zero one two three the K it will not return the same why is that because just to refresh from the previous lesson we said python will take the third one but will not include it so if you want to take the last letter you just go one plus okay or simply just keep it open just if you are wondering why i kept it open or i didn't write three here okay this is clear now let's take one example for you let's take an example for you let me jump 
to let's say the name now or let me write it here I have this exercise for you I will give it a few minutes take your time pause the video try to do it yourself similar to what I did before and then come back we continue and we solve it together the exercise says I have a string name equals joy change the name into Roy from joy to Roy using strings concatenation using strings concatenation okay take a few minutes pause the video make sure you practice it yourself Python is about in practice practice it do it yourself then come back and watch us doing together okay perfect now let's go ahead and do it so I have name equals joy and let me just confirm name it will give me joy if I call it perfect now I want to change it to Roy so I need to change the letter J to letter R correct so I will take everything after the J so from one till the end I don't care how many letters after let me make sure I have it O and Y excellent then before that I need to add the letter R so I will say R as a string make sure as a string plus my name the name one till the end and this is Roy this is Roy right also here you can write a three it will give you the same why three not two again because zero one two the letter Y is two but Python doesn't include the last letter doesn't include the last index okay so always the better safe just keep it open Roy excellent so this is concatenation another example and be careful here see what happens here what do you think will happen here if I add two strings these are strings okay two and five these are two strings because I have the co double quotation right what do you think will happen here what should be the answer is it 20 2 plus 5 zero, 7 or 2 5 what should Python give me back let's try it together and see what happens then we explain it this is 2 plus 5 and the answer is 25 because Python using these or treating these two numbers are as strings as strings 2 5 they just Python will just put them beside each others just put them beside each other if you want to make sure let me put space sorry the space here not in the comment and run and see there's a space here okay perfect make sure you it's a clear for you this one okay because tomorrow you are writing a code you're putting it as a string then you want to make to sum them together and then the answer will be wrong huh? and the problem maybe the Python is not retaining and error because this is a flexible Python is a flexible and give you yes I can do that I can sum I can concatenate two strings but you are expecting different answer maybe someone is ex expecting two plus five seven so make sure this is clear okay one thing also we can do let me add a code here let me add a code here and let's say for example y equals um let's say y equals or let me say name equals um z okay let's say name equals z now i can do my multiplication and the here it's a string of course so just let's make sure and let's say if i want name times 10 and the answer will be 10 z right 10 z don't expect to be 10 then z beside it no this is multiplication right multiplication okay if you are wondering what will happen if name plus 10 and the answer will be error why is that can only concatenate string because 10 is integer right you can multiply multiply name a string by a number by integer but you cannot do a summation you cannot sum a string plus a integer so how can we solve this one for example I can do like this I can change the integer to string let's see now and now z 10 I add z and 10 let's go back just one step let me just read again the error and says can only concatenate str not integer okay you cannot add integer to string very important you cannot add or concatenate integer to a string okay clear make sure it's a clear more examples so here imagine that we have this string y equals hello world 
and then I would like to add two strings for example I can say y plus it is beautiful day and if I hit run hello world it's beautiful day and see here there is no space between word and it so simply I can just add a space here and click enter hello world it's a beautiful day so I can do this one also yes okay now what happens if I do this y equals y plus so let's run the code again and see what happens here y equals I assigned it now let me return y I call y and hello world it's a beautiful day now if I run the cells again run this hello world it's a beautiful day okay it's now the new y it's the sum or the concatenation of the old y plus it is beautiful day not the original one because I reassigned y right so this should be clear for us okay now this is about the strings how we concatenate them together and some errors to avoid now let's move ahead and let's check some strings built in methods there are some methods and functions built into Python later on in a little bit more advanced we are going inshallah to learn about how to create our own functions and methods but for now let's learn some built in methods so for example if I have a string hello world okay now if I return if I call Z it's hello world and now see what happens if I add a dot wait a second and a list will appear a list will appear with all these methods these methods that I can use I can do some operations or methods into my string let's take I will not go all over all of these you can explore some of them alone but we'll see many of these as we go okay so let me take first the upper imagine I want to change all the letters of my string into uppercase see it's here upper and I will run this one it will return and error let's see function str upper okay so this is Python simply didn't return an error but also didn't give me what I'm looking for it didn't give me what I'm looking for because my goal is to change the letters of hello world all to capital letters to uppercase right so why it didn't happen because the methods always need brackets remember this empty brackets enter now it returns hello world hello world okay now the same I can do Z lower as you can expect and the brackets and hello world all are small all are small right hello now if I call it again let's see it gives me the original one hello world okay so this doesn't change these what I did Z dot upper or Z dot lower doesn't change the original string if you want to change it so you can reassign it so now we run it see small letter but we don't want let's keep the original one what else we can do we can do Z dot split if I want to split my string and let's see what does it do it retains a list we didn't learn lists yet we are going to see them soon but it retains a list and separate splits all the items inside my string hello and word hello and word okay so I have hello alone comma then word inside a list okay let's see another example then we finish this lesson let's say x equals a string it is a beautiful day it's a beautiful day let me take back x run it it's a beautiful day now if I say x dot split and split it for me it is a beautiful day now this is clear now what if I want to split based on some conditions for example I would like to split whenever you have a letter I do a split okay and it tells me error from where to where from the beginning till the end and that's error oh no 
Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about print formatting using strings with strings. What we are going to learn is a strings interpolation and this is a fancy way to say adding variable into a string. We are going to talk about it with examples and for that we have two main methods. One is dot format method and the other one is the if strings method. Let's see examples and see what does it mean. So for example, first of all print we learned the print initially in the previous lessons print and print means that return to me on the screen give me the output of whatever inside the print right let's say here the famous example hello world and if i run this code and give me hello world hello world right what if i want to add something after we learned a few things i can say add concatenation right but also let's see other methods and very famous for that so example number one let's say I want print then open the brackets then it's a string so double quotation or a single quotation this is my string then very important curly braces not a bracket curly braces because curly braces tells python there is a variable coming in there is a variable coming in then close your string dot format this is our method dot format then after the dot format this is a brackets because here you will put for python what it requires what to fill in the bracket in the curly braces right in the variable place here so here i will tell python i would say this is number one and if I run this code, this is my string number one. See, I added them together. I added this is my string with the variable here, with number one, with this another string, directly using the dot format method. And here I can change anything. I can just make it a number and control enter. This is my string one. Okay, you can change, you can write anything you want. And later on in the more advanced lessons, we are going to see it can be also a longer code. It can be conditional or it can be depending on the previous output. But for now, we are just introducing the method to understand the syntax, to understand how to use it and how to perform it. So this is dot .format method. Also, what happens now? Let's explore a little bit just to make sure we notice important things. We said here, this is curly braces. What if I do normal brackets this will give python or let me run it and we will see it together but it will give python it python will pro will do just printing the string this is my string okay and ignored everything after it closed the brackets closed the double quotation and everything else is ignored so make sure this is a variable here you are telling python wait for me i'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a informa or information to add it into this curly braces, which is using the dot format method. It's number one. What if I leave nothing here and there will be an error replacement index zero. This is index zero because there is only one thing, one, one br curly braces out of range for positional argument. There is nothing. You return me nothing. So you need to return me thing. What if I add it as a number here? This is my string one. This is my string one. Okay. And this one is integer as you see here. If I want to make it as a string, this is my string one. This is my string number one also. What if I add it like this? What will happen? There will be an error. There will be an error in valid syntax because this need to be, this is number one is a string. So you need to put double quotation double quotation this is number one okay perfect let's see more examples we can also print double quotation again it's a string so the world is beautiful for example right that dot format then open the brackets another example and say just anything xxx now there will be an error why who can tell us why there will be an error and python tells you where is the error right it's under so if I run this code, xxx is not defined because xxx, you didn't tell me x, what is xxx before. Also, you didn't tell me that it's a string. So if I tell Python, it's a string, xxx, run the code, the word is a beautiful, okay? And here, another thing to note, why Python didn't return to me the xxx? I said the word is a beautiful, then dot format xxx, what did I forget? I forgot to tell Python 
wait for me I'm going to enter you I am going to give you a variable where is this variable it's coming after the format so the curly braces here tells Python the word is beautiful and there's something coming where is this thing it's after the dot format method if I run the code now the word is beautiful XXX okay so if you don't add this if you don't add the curly braces Python will just take the first string and ignore after okay now curly braces perfect now what if I want to do this does it work so if I write the then curly braces another one and another one and inside the format I will tell Python the first string the first one add for me the word world the second one add for me is all as strings okay make sure you remember this and the third one will be beauty beautiful beautiful and if I run this the word is a beautiful also we can do that right we can keep three variables and where are these variables after the dot format after the dot format method perfect now also another thing I can call the index so word is beautiful I have three items this is index 0 index 1 index 2 right we learned this before I start from 0 1 2 so I can tell Python return for me 0 1 2 and the answer will be the word is beautiful can I change that also I can make it 1 1 1 the word what's the answer here should be is 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 right the is 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 can I shuffle them yes I can put 2 1 0 for example run the code the beautiful is word right you can do that now what happens if I give one of the index as out of the range right I have 0 1 2 if I give it 3 control enter an error and the error makes sense replacement index 3 you are giving me index 3 it's out of range I don't have this I don't have range 3 there is only 0 1 2 3 there is nothing 3 so make sure also this is within the range so I'll keep it empty Python when you keep it empty understands the first one is the first one second second and third is third okay now run the code again and all good no errors and the last thing we can call the keyword what does it mean I can say print open in brackets this is my string I can say the then curly braces another one another one then after my double quotation dot format open brackets and in the brackets I will tell Python what to enter for me I want word I want is I always get this is and the last one is beautiful right beauty I miss this beautiful beautiful excellent now if I run this code the word is beautiful okay perfect what can I do also I can say okay Python W equals word I equals is and B equals beautiful if I run this code there will be an error replacement index z zero out of range now see what happens here if I add W I and B the word is a beautiful I can also call the code by giving keywords by identifying word is W is is I beautiful is B okay and then enter this short or keywords or letter I can say anything here I can say one equals word now there will be an error because this is an integer so what we can do is either we keep this one yes and double equals but also what I can do give any letter can be today but in this case you need to change the W right so today you can what my point is you can write anything you want you can write anything you want the word is beautiful even I wrote today but today equals word here so let's make it now it makes sense the point to have something to indicate for you W equals word now today there is no today key error today Python tells you today means nothing so this is my W the word is beautiful the word is beautiful perfect of course I can also do this I can call whatever I want the word 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 right 
so you can play around it you can change it you can use it the way you like it and this is maybe better than the first one because i mean the first one is with index with 0 1 2 because 0 1 2 are abstract doesn't relate to anything here w okay makes yeah and it gives you an indication w is word i is be beautiful and so on so perfect i'll stop here with the first method and in the next video we are going to explore the second method f strings method thank you very much and see you shortly welcome everyone in this lesson we are going to continue on our discussion how to print formatting with the strings so the first video part one we discussed the dot format method for example if i have name equals a string moson and i can say print then my brackets my string i say my name my name is then i put my curly bra curly braces dot format right and then i put what is my input which is name in this case right and here don't forget let's say okay my name is Mozon my name is Mozon you can change name of course with Mozon directly but then you need to put the string because Mozon is not identified is not identified unlike name name is identified name means Mozon but Mozon is not defined okay Mozon is not a variable it's a string so I need to put a string we saw this in the previous video now there is another way I can say instead of typing the dot format I can remove all that dot format now and I put here at the beginning F that's it F my name is and put my variable directly into the curly braces which is name in this case right my name is my name is Mozn name Mozn my name is Mozn correct straightforward easy you just have F at the beginning then whatever your variable is put it in the in the curly braces also let's see a little bit more complex I can say name equals Mozon age equals let's say 5 and then I can say print string my name is then here I put name and my age is and i put what i put age and of course i need to use one of the methods either i put dot format and then i put my variables here or since i put name and age in the variables it directly in the curly bra uh, braces directly so it's easy just put f at the beginning and see what happens once we add f so everything is in red now i add f the f itself has a special color and also the variables change the colors so this is also good to give you that yes this what you are doing is in the right direction let's say if i run this code my name is Moz and my age is five is five if i i had years for example it will add it here okay everything is simple straightforward you can straightforward enter what you like okay perfect so we saw two methods and the if you want to compare just let me put the two methods together print under each other's I can say my name is and here I will keep it empty and my age is and again and here dot format and here I will put my input I can put for the first one is name and the second one is age let's see if there is any error my name is Mosin and my age is five and here my name is and what happened here why we didn't have the input first of all let me make this one as a comma comment what happened here in the second one who can tell us why it didn't input the name and the age and the reason is clear kind of because python here copied everything typed everything and put it here down because look at my quotations at the beginning and at the end which is not correct it need to be just before the dot and here should work seek the colors change and the error line disappeared and now 
my name is Mozen and my age is 5 if I remove this comment and let's see print both of them they will be exactly the same so this the first one is exactly equivalent to the second one it's up to you which one you would like to use the first one seems to be shorter straightforward but it's up to you the 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 first one the if strings method this one this is a newly added to python and a newly i mean after the dot format method okay after and it was required because it came also it's similar to other programming languages so also it's obvious why people wanted it because it's straightforward you have the if at the beginning then you put your variables exactly inside the inside your curly braces it's up to you which one you would like both will give you the same results here okay perfect by this we finish introducing the print formatting methods with the strings next videos we are going to learn a new topic just one last comment here or one last note what whatever we are doing here is just introducing the concepts introducing the codes breaking the ice with the with python with the programming language so we know the concepts the basics later on we will introduce more projects more applications and see real life examples so everything will fall together will be will come together and make sense okay and we'll see real life examples practical examples where we will use all these techniques print formatting with the strings dot format if strings variables slicing indexing and so on so keep going and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about lists lists in python and this is another data type so we learned about variables strings and now let's talk about lists so a list is an ordered sequence that can hold different object types what does it mean this is an example of a list it starts with a bracket and then it close the bracket square bracket okay there are square brackets at the beginning and at the end not round one not circle one then you have object types it can be anything it can be integer it can be string it can be float and separated by a comma we are going to see many examples then we are going also to see the length of a list how to find that then we'll see some examples of indexing and slicing as we did to the strings and then concatenation and similar way to strings and very important thing lists are immutable unlike the strings which are immutable lists are mutable we are going to see that also and then we'll learn about the append method append method and a few other things so there is a lot to cover let's jump in and start so examples of lists we have let's start a new code here for example i can say list one equals then we said square brackets sorry square brackets and then one two three four five as many as you want then run the code and this is list one if list one i want to call it i want to type it on the screen the output is one two three four five so this is list one i can define list two for example is square brackets and then i would say six seven eight nine and ten and this is list oh I made the mistake here list two not with without the k then i will go let me call it again list two and now i have six seven eight nine ten and if you are wondering why list one didn't appear in the output because only the last thing will appear if you want everything to appear if you want list one also to appear then you need to add the print right print and let's close it and now if we run the code you will have both of them you have print because the print always will show on the output and also the last thing will show okay which is list two okay perfect now we have list one and list two now does the list include other type of objects besides integers these are integers one two three four five till ten these are integers what if i say list three equals square brackets 
then I have a string let's say a string let me just make it a string string with the double quotation or single quotation then I have an integer then also I can have a float float remember with a decimal 4.6 does it work if I run the code yes no errors then if I call list 3 and the output will be string 1 4.6 so it works it works there is no problem at all now if I want to retain the length of the list the length means how many items inside my list how many items so I can say length of list 1 and if I run the code it's 5 because I have 1 2 3 4 5 what about list 2 there are also five what about list three there are three items excellent this is the length so you can check how many items inside your list then slicing and indexing we can do that by simply similar way to the string I can say list one then which item do you want from item one I want number one then it's what is the index of number one it's index zero because we start with zero if I run the code it will retain one what about four item four is zero one two three four which is five what if I retain out of range there should be what exactly there will be error because list index out of range there is no item with the index number five right one two three zero one two three four so the last one is four perfect what if I change just for more examples and here I say give me from list number two the item with index three which is nine zero one two three right I can also do the opposite give me minus two so minus one minus two also nine minus one should be ten perfect so also indexing this is called indexing right can I slice yes we can this is slicing yeah slicing based on the index of the item inside the list this is a slicing but can I slice a range yes so if I take slice or list three list three then from list three give me all the items or three is short let's make it two huh? let's make it two for example list two. Oh, sorry so list two give me all the items from the beginning so this is from the beginning I put nothing then I put the colon then till item let's say with the index 3 and if I run the code it will give me 678 let's confirm I have from the beginning this is beginning 0 1 2 3 so from 6 to 9 but as we agreed before 9 will not be included because Python says I'll give you everything from the beginning till index 3 not including it without including 3 without including the index 3 right so 9 will be excluded if you want to include 9 then increase the range to 4 and now 9 will be included 9 will be included perfect this is slicing and indexing concatenation also we know what is that we saw it in strings so what I can do list 1 plus list 2 does it work let's confirm with Python and now we have error why is that because list 1 and list 2 are we need to just change list 1 and list 2 I did a mistake because list 1 and list 2 are not defined are not defined right I put numbers here it should be 1 and 2 just to be sure our input is correct now if I run the code everything is perfect so I have list 1 from 1 2 3 till 5 1 2 3 4 5 till here then list 2 from 6 to 10 6 to 10 perfect what if I add another one list 3 will it be included perfect I have string 1 4.6 everything is there everything is there this is concatenation we did the same with the strings we can do the same with lists there is no problem okay can I do this trick for example what if I say times 2 here what will happen see list 1 multiplied by 2 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 it doesn't mean don't make mistake that 
one will be multiplied by two that's two then two by two four three by two six four by two eight no it will just repeat list number one list one will be repeated how many times two times if i put three it will be repeated three times okay if i remove from here and say list two times three also yes so you have it here because so long but it's the same it's the same okay if i make two also here yeah six seven eight nine ten six seven eight nine ten and list three let's say by two and it's so long so it will put it this way if i remove the two from here now it's in one line it's the same string one four point six string one four point six so you can also do these things what else okay what if i do this plus two can you uh, can you guess what will be the output can you guess what will be the output okay did you guess that there will be an error because two is integer you remember in the in the strings when we tried to add a string to an integer it didn't work there was an error the same with the list you cannot add you cannot add a list to an integer correct we can add a list to a list but list to integer it doesn't work what about list to string let's try again the same not string here you can only concatenate lists to a list not to a string so this need to be a list can i do it this way for example two let's see and now it's okay so we have list one one two three four five then two then six seven eight nine ten list two then list three string one four point six i'm trying to show you as many examples as possible the best way to learn is to do these things to try can i do this one what if i change what there will be there an error or it will work and you learn from the errors you learn from the errors what does it mean if i add two here and run the code now there is an error what is the error you read especially the last line can only concatenate list to list list to a list not integer you put an integer you cannot do that okay perfect let me remove these things and now what another type of error if i have list one list list two you forget the plus sign invalid syntax because list one list two they are defined but what are you trying to do there is nothing between them so this is the right way okay perfect this is done the lists are mutable what does it mean now if i have list one let me print it let me type it on the screen one two three four five now if i say list one item number one and let's say item number one which is index zero i want it i want to change it not one i want it to be for example 10. will it work let's see yes there is no error if i call list underscore one and now i call list one ten very good i changed the item one to ten from one to ten perfect so you can change you can change for example it works let's say this is my list equals and let's put names for example sam mark then roy let's say these are students then i won't say okay sam is no longer with us i want to sense uh, i want to change sam so i will say my list okay and then item number zero index zero equals now let's say john okay john and there is an error if i click enter here because i need to make a string and double quotation here and now should be okay now if i recall if i call my list john mark roy so you can change because lists are mutable lists are mutable perfect this is done then append method there are many methods in the list so i can say for example imagine that i have my list so my list let's print it john mark roy john mark roy right now if i say my list and dot and of course just 
right let's type the name correct my list dot and now here my list dot now there will be different options methods will appear huh? there are many let's try append for example append and remember from the previous videos you need always brackets and if i append append does what it adds it adds some items to the list now let's see before i continue let me see if i run the code append takes exactly one argument you give nothing so you want to append you are telling python add or append to my list some items python is saying where are the items you added nothing here i can say for example muson and if i click enter now run the code okay no errors perfect let me call my list now my list and now see john mark roy muson perfect so it's added it is added this is very important okay we'd like to try more i can say my list then dot then wait a second for the list to appear then you have different options you can reverse you can sort let's try reverse and don't forget the brackets i will not go over all of them i would like you to practice you you can play around them there is no way any lesson any course that covers everything in python or in any other subject so the best way is to practice to see what options are there the best way also is to implement and do projects which we are going to do together inshallah in later later lessons so my list dot reverse there is no error and if i call my list now it's the opposite it's reversed now it was john mark roy muzon now it's muzon roy mark john okay so what i told python is take my list and reverse it okay take my list and reverse it i didn't have to add anything in between because it's enough take my list and reverse it that's it while in the previous one my list take my list and add to it python will ask add what okay so that's why we need to put something in between perfect let me stop this video here practice do some exercises open your python and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lesson i would like to add a few things to the list before we close it and we move to dictionaries close it for now of course we are going to see it later but as introductory so i would like to introduce the pop and pop and sort methods and let me make these comments and let's see examples let me define let's say my list equals one five eight three zero twelve and random numbers okay these random numbers now if i say my list run the code to return it takes just a few seconds because it's a new notebook and see this is a list includes integers includes integers right and return it as it is as it is now if i say my list dot pop pop will do what is the opposite of append the opposite of append so append adds item item or items pop removes item and here i don't have to tell python which item to remove because by default by default python will add will remove sorry will remove or will pop the last item the 45 let's see my list dot pop and it retains the popped item and if i return now if i call my list again i will see the list without the 45 okay one five eight three zero twelve sixty seven thirty four and it removed both because remote 45 and seven eight nine because i run i run this code twice i run this code twice first time i run it then when i added my list it was run again so that's why two items if i run it again it will remove also the 34 and i will end up with 67 run it again it's 12 more and so on okay now if i say here my list and let's call it it's updated with the last with the last entry if i say pop again just to make sure everything is okay it removed zero now if i 
now if I run the code if I say my okay call my list it will run both the first code and the second code okay to run the code my pop again because because what happened here I run this code and it removed zero now my list include these items one five eight three now if I say okay Python type for me my list if I run the code what will happen the first code will be implemented will be applied so it will remove the three in this case and then my list will be printed which is one five eight let's see it one five eight okay to avoid that you can either make it as a comment sorry you can just make it as a comment which is adding a hashtag at the big okay in this case it will not be executed so this is pop someone might ask okay let me see let me introduce a new list let's say list one okay and say this is one five seven nine two random numbers okay executed all good list one run the code and this is my list now someone says okay I would like to list one I would like to dot pop I don't want to remove the last item five six seven I want to remove item the first item for example item number item which is one which has the index of what of zero so simply you can add zero and if I run the code it will retain the removed item and if I go ahead and say list one if I will run the code now it will execute the first row again so I don't want to do that I will just type I would like just to type the up updated list which is everything except number one except number one okay now this is for the pop there is another method I would like to introduce which is let's say list one dot sort sort by the name obviously it does what it sort the items in your list sort the items in your list so if I run the code done now if I call it list one let's see the sorted list two five seven two five seven nine two three four from the smallest to the largest okay this will sort the items and the list will be updated as well okay so list number list one now is starting from two and ends with five six seven so these are additional two methods they are helpful we learned how many methods so far with the list we learned reverse which does what the reverse reverses the reverses the list obviously then we append and this add items and you need to specify what is the item you want to add it to the list then we saw pop which is the opposite of append and then lastly we saw the sort which sorts the items inside the list so perfect I think that's good for the list take your time practice create some lists play around with them and try to do some intentional errors let me call them intentional mistakes for example if we forget here in list one we removed we removed the comma what will happen there will be an error invalid syntax because there is a space here should not space either you put a comma or no space and now everything is okay but the number is different huh? so you need a comma for example if I changed I made this one is normally bracket closing parentheses doesn't match opening parentheses so it's a square you started with a square and with a square okay if I change it to circle it's okay then but because it's a list we need to as square what else we can do what about here if I add text one for example there will be an error also because one is not defined you want a string then make it string how do you make it string by simply adding quotations adding quotations so now everything is okay can we work on this with sort let's see add sort and not supported between instances of string and integer so the sort doesn't work so Python will say okay you want me to sort it how I can sort the numbers or I can sort the string the text but both together what is the rule to sort 
so it's not defined it's not supported okay perfect i think these are good examples take your time practice and keep going i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about dictionaries about dictionaries in python very interesting lesson let's go ahead and start about dictionaries dictionaries are unordered mapping for sorting objects so unlike the lists lists can have mapped or ordered sequence of objects in the dictionary is different we have unordered mapping for objects and we are going to see that in examples also dictionaries include a key and a value pair key and value pair key and value and they are separated by a colon and they are separated by colon also dictionaries use curly braces okay unlike the list lists use what they use square brackets dictionaries use curly braces examples this is one example d equals and you can hear d for dictionary equals curly braces then you have a string as a key colon then a value key then a value okay let's remove the comments here and see for example if i want to call the dictionary now run the code there is error because indentation see there is indentation unnecessary so we remove it and now indentation means this space python is asking why did you add this space before because it's important when we come to the for and while loop and other things but for now just keep it without any space any tabs so here if i call my dictionary it's key one colon value one key two colon value two now what if i want to find the value for key one simply i just add key one key one and if i run the code it returns the value it returns the value that is associated with key one and this is good for example a practical example when you have a store for us st you have a store and you have items with their prices like the example here we have prices as a dictionary and here if i remove the comments prices is a dictionary which equals orange as a key then the value is a three let's say the price of orange is a three dollars or whatever then apple the price is two banana the price is five now i don't care about the index about the position of each item i care about the price now if i want to retain first of all before we return anything let's print let's type this dictionary orange three apple two banana five everything is okay now if i want to know the price of orange i want to know the price of orange i don't care where orange is stored which index at the beginning at the middle at the end i don't care i care about the price of orange so how can i return it i just simply type orange orange oops perfect and now if i run the code it will return number three it will return three as the price now i know the price of orange is it three dollars for example without knowing where is orange exactly the same i can do for apple i can know the price of apple is two and the same for banana okay and the same for banana so this is good example how to know associated value for a certain key the key in this case is orange the the vegetables or the fruit and the value is the price now another thing we need to see that here we saw is this the inputs are strings and also integers can, I, can can the dictionary include a float yes it can now if i run the code before that let me call prices and remove everything else run the code prices returns it can include float floating numbers can include strings can include numbers anything okay here for example i can change the price of banana and it will return let's say not available not available and if i return prices everything okay and if someone is asking about the price of banana what will happen banana it will return the value which is not available so we see it's a string apple it has a value of integer and orange has a value of floating point number 
okay another thing we need to see is let me remove the comments from this code and now now we have this a little bit complex looks complex right a little confusing dictionary so i have my dictionary my d equals i have a key key one and the value 10 integer key two and the value here is a list is a list which includes some strings so also the dictionary can include values as lists or as dictionaries which we don't see often but also it's correct so now if i call my dictionary my d let me call it it will return everything okay there is no error so i see there is integer list there is a dictionary also as a value and inside the dictionary i can have even more complex other dictionaries or other lists and so on but let's not make it complex now if i want to grab for example nice i want to return nice how can i do that i can say my dictionary my d then i want which item I want this is 0 index 0 k2 is index 1 k3 is index 2 so I will return 2 and what we will return here sorry we uh, I'm sorry we we don't this is very good this is very good because now unlike the lists we don't return the index right what we do we need to return we don't input the index we input the key and he it, here it's key k3 i want first to return everything associated with k3 which is everything here so key underscore inside colon nice everything this dictionary this sub dictionary will be returned if i click enter key inside and nice now inside this sub dictionary which is key inside and nice I want to return which item nice so simply I will enter key inside key underscore inside did I type it correct yes and now it will return for me nice it will return nice can I do methods on this if I put upper and open in brackets and it paid it capital letters uppercase okay so a very important distinction here I will write it as a comment dictionaries use key value pairs not index okay not index so this is we saw it when I tried to do my dictionary and then I said okay I want everything associated with k3 which I was thinking okay this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 so let me put 2 here and it should return to me this but this is wrong because dictionaries they don't work work with indexing if I run this code there will be a mistake an error okay and the error simply because this is not a list this is a dictionary so here I need I need to use the correct format which is k3 and then I will give the key the key is key inside key inside associated with key and the associated value is nice if I run this one now and of course we need to remove my dictionary nice and as any as any list or any dictionary you can use the methods upper for example you can use other methods wherever applicable so let's take one more example just because it's a little bit confusing especially at the beginning now here let me remove the comment I have test is a dictionary let's break it down it's it has one value which is 1 2 and M it has one key key and associated value and the value is a list the value is a list let me print test key 1 2 M so one key one value the value is a list now if I want to return M the letter M if I want to return the letter M what I do I need from my test return for me the whole 
value here which is 1 to m and how do I retain this list or this value by inputting the key associated with it what which is key the word key and if I run this code I will have as output a list now from this list I need to return the letter M which has which index because this is a list so I need an index here 0 1 2 index 2 I run this code it returns the letter M if I want to make the letter M uppercase for example simply write upper and don't forget the brackets and now I have letter M so these are a few things about dictionaries very useful especially when you don't care about the position or the indexing of the item inside your dictionary and if you have pair of values a key and a value like price list of items very good job keep going and I will see you in the next video we'll come again in this video we are going to continue a few things about the dictionaries so I have a dictionary D equals key 1 10 key 2 20 k2 20 k3 30 okay this is a dictionary let me call my dictionary d k110 k220 k330 k440 this is a dictionary now i can add items to the dictionary for example i can say k dictionary and in my dictionary the d i want k5 okay k5 and k5 equals 50 now if I call D print it it added k5 so like this I can add items to my dictionary perfect now I don't need this D perfect now also I can replace items I can say in my dictionary D the item with or associated with k1 make it instead of 10 it was 10 now i want to make it let's say 100 run the code all good now if i say run d see k1 is 100 now k1 is 100 perfect this is how to add items or reassign items now also i can find all the keys in my dictionary d dot keys using d dot keys and if you run this code it will retain all the keys in your dictionary k1 k2 k3 k4 k5 inside a list this is for example here if you want to see all the vegetables or all the items in your in your prices list you can say prices dot keys correct prices dot keys prices dot keys and because i forgot the brackets it python is telling me this is a function dictionary keys huh? and i just put the brackets and then it will return me all the items orange apple and banana and if i need the values i will say prices dot values and don't forget the brackets and that will bring me back 3.232 and not available these are the prices or the values for the items in my dictionary okay these are the keys the values if I want to see all if I want to see all my items simply I will say dictionary or D dot items and then brackets and if you press enter it brings back everything k100 everything okay and they are inside the brackets so it means they are tuples don't worry about it we'll talk about it in the next lessons these are the values keys items how to assign how to replace how to add items and so on so let's quickly summarize what we studied about dictionaries we said dictionaries are unordered mapping okay they include a key and a value as a pair and they start and end with curly braces every time you need to include a key and a value the items inside a dictionary they can be strings can be floating numbers float numbers can be integers can be dictionary can be list can be anything almost also 
we saw how to index or slice items inside a dictionary how to change and use some special methods like upper built-in methods how to return all the keys all the values all the items in my dictionary how to assign or reassign to reassign where is d1 dk1 equal 100 how to reassign values for my keys and how to add values and keys inside my dictionary so that's about it for dictionaries thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this video we are going to have an explanation overview for an assignment about dictionaries so in this video i will go through the assignment and explain it and in the next video we are going through the solution for the assignment so make sure that after we after you watch this video take your time do the exercises finish the assignment yourself try to learn the things that you are not feeling strong with or you are facing errors and you are not sure how to do it then come back and watch the next video for the solutions so the assignment on dictionaries number one part one is creating and modifying dictionaries first question create a dictionary called student that contains the following key value pairs name john smith age 25 courses math and physics and here not note that courses is a list second question add a new key value pair to the dictionary called phone with the value five 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 one two one two okay this is just a random number or any random number question number three update the value for the key age to 26 so change it it was 25 change it to 26 question number four remove the key value pair for courses remove the key value pair for courses if you are not sure how to do this one question number four do some research search on google how to remove a key value pair in dictionaries in python the point is i put this question even though we didn't go through it exactly but we need to develop the skills that in programming in general tasks and problems and projects will not come as a standard so you need to do some search some exploration some research on google on some documentation from python how to perform a certain task so it's good to start as early as possible to develop this skill part two accessing dic dictionary values question number one access the value for the key name and assign it to a variable called name and question number two access the value for the key phone and assign it to a variable called phone if the key doesn't exist print a message saying phone number not found and this is optional because it's a little bit more advanced than this level okay perfect take your time and i'll see you in the next vid video with the solutions hello everyone let's continue in this video and see and look at the solution for the assignment for the assignment on the dictionaries so the first question was create a dictionary called the student that contains the following key value pairs and we have a name age courses and a value for each key so i created here what we do we have a student this is the name of the dictionary equals then the dictionary always start with curly braces right then inside the key must be a string so name is a string and colon the name of the student or the value here for the key which is name john smith the value is john smith then i have another key age and the value is 25 then another key which is courses and a value which is a list math and physics now if i run this code student i have the output my dictionary name john smith age courses and so on okay second question add a new value add a new key value pair to the dictionary called phone with the value such and such so that's easy how do we add 
remember how do we add an element or an item or a key value pair to a dictionary you write the name of the dictionary student then between square brackets you put your key which is phone in this case equals then the value which is the phone number if you want to make sure just run the code call student and you have it here name john smith if you are wondering why it's not on one line just because of the space huh? just because of the space but everything is fine third one update the value for the key age to 26 i have it here 25 we need to change it 26 very easy same way student is the dictionary name put the key value age in this case and make it 26 run and the answer is 26 age here very good then remove the key value pair for courses and this we didn't study it but one way to remove is to use del del for delete 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 from where delete from dictionary student delete what delete the courses the courses once you delete the key the value will be deleted as well okay let's run the code and see the output now name age and phone and the courses disappeared the courses disappeared okay now see if i run the code again there will be an error who knows why we are receiving an error if we run the code second time simply because python will come to this code and say okay you are asking me to delete a key called courses but i don't have a key called courses anymore how is that because you deleted it before so we deleted the key courses it's not there anymore in the dictionary so if you are asking again running again the cell or the code it's not there so python will say courses is an error i don't have in my dictionary a key which is called courses so be careful with this if you want it again what you do you go back and you run the codes again so running this code i have it here courses the phone we added the phone we changed the age to 26 from 25 now do it again and you have everything okay and we deleted courses this is important let me show you another thing an error might happen run the cells again and this cell change the age perfect now if i remove student see now i want to delete see i have the courses here math and physics now i want to remove the courses perfect removed no errors everything is okay now if i call student and you keep it as it is you have python will will run the two lines the first line and the second line and once he reached to the first line what will happen it will give you an error because it's not there anymore so be careful write the code then call also call at the same time before running the code so write your line your code line call your dictionary then hit the run okay then hit the run otherwise it will not show and error will be there so i need to run the code again just to refresh of course i can put them all in one line but just to break down the assignment okay and then we have where are we part two accessing dictionary values access the value for the key name and assign it to a variable called name easy we say name this is a variable name equals student name right how do we access the key name simple student and between square brackets i put name right this is how we access any key in my dictionary then assign it to a variable called name this is name that's it if i run the code i have everything okay and the same for the phone access the value for the key phone and assign it to a variable called phone this is the first part perfect everything is okay if i call phone it will give me the phone and the same if i call name here it will give me the name which is john smith perfect the second part don't worry about it it's advanced we don't need it now we'll come back to it or similar to it when we study the if loop conditional formatting okay conditional loops okay if phone is there in the dictionary then return a certain value if it's not there then return another value if else or if l we are going to look at that in next section 
So this is the assignment. Make sure if you have any question, please post it and I will be more than happy to answer it. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about tuples or tuples as some people say. So what is a tuple? Tuples are similar to lists, except they are immutable, immutable. And by now you are familiar with this term immutable. Immutable means they cannot be changed. The items inside the tuple can't be changed unlike the list right we are going to explore a few things indexing slicing link type count index and immutability for the tuples let's start with creating a tuple with a t and let's say and the tuple very important it's square brackets uh, sorry it's not square it's circular brackets okay normal ones and here i will add one two three four five for example this is tuple and I can create a list which is square and this is one two three four five same items and if I want let me call it my list because the color is different means it's reserved word for Python now if I say type the type of my T what is the type of T it takes a few seconds the first time for this notebook What's the type of t then i will check the type of my list it's tuple see type of t is tuple what about the type of my list it's a list okay then also i can use len the same for t what's the length of t five one two three four five the same the length for my list we saw it before we don't need again also i can do indexing for example i can say t give me the item with index 0 which is 1 also index 4 which is 5 now if it's out of range there will be an error which says tuple index out of range and we have seen this before with dictionaries or also not with dictionaries with the lists right so because 5 I don't have index 5 I have 0 1 2 3 4 now the number 5 index is 0 is 4 is 4 so the last one is 4 so here should be maximum 4 now if I run it everything okay also I can do for example from the beginning till second one I can do slicing it gives me 1 and 2 it's a tuple right and so on this is indexing and slicing also I can do some special methods I can say t dot if you want to see the methods inside dot write the name of the tuple then dot and here we have much less methods for tuples than or compared to lists right I have count and index let's see count and always as we know we need the brackets count now python says you want you ask me to count in your tuple t but you didn't tell me to count what what do you want me to count okay i would like to count how many times number one appears and I know it's one right one time now what if I change here one and one run the code again and three times here right what about number zero it's zero times okay so count counts how many times a certain item appeared okay and I have t dot index and if I put brackets let's see the error is index expected at least one argument get zero I want the index so let's see how it works I will go first change this one yes it's one and two and three and for example I want number three it's index two so zero one two number three so here I'm asking Python inside tuple t what is the item that has index what is the index sorry what is the index of number three it's zero one two two now i can check for five what is the index of number five it's four zero one two three four what is the index of number ten it's not there let's see the error tuple index x x is not in tuple so it says whatever you entered here and this tuple is not in the tuple okay is not there whatever you are asking for is not in your tuple 
I always like to play around and create intentionally mistakes and errors to know and to see how Python will respond to that. Okay, how Python will respond to that. So when we have a bigger program, more complex, if I receive a certain error, I know, okay, I saw this before. I know it's coming from where. Okay, by practice, time over time, you'll get familiar with these things. Now, I change this to two and everything is perfect. Now, let me take T again. What is T? T is one, two, three, four, five. And my list is one, two, three, five. Now, in my list, I can reassign, right? We know the lists are mutable. I can reassign my list, for example, item index zero equals, let's say, I want to change from one to 10. And if I run that, all good. Now, if I say my list, what is my list? My new updated list, yes, instead of one is 10. So lists are mutable. I can change the items inside the list, I can. What about tuples? I can say t zero equals 10. Let's see, what does Python say? It says error, tuple object doesn't support item assignment. You cannot do this in tuples because they are immutable. They are immutable. Okay, perfect. So this one, it's not possible. So let's remove it, make it a comment. Okay, so these are quick summary about the tuples, simple. So tuple has circular parentheses. You can check their type, you can check their length, similar to lists. You can count how many times an item appeared. You can check what is the index of any item and you cannot assign the items. You cannot change the items inside the tuple. They are immutable. They are immutable. Now someone might ask, okay, why do we need the tuples if we have lists? Lists are more flexible and they have everything that tuples has. So why do we need tuples? That's a good question, but for at the beginning, you will not see the benefits when you're starting with Python, but for more complex programs and projects, you will see sometimes you need some certain data sets. You don't want anyone to be able to change them by mistake or intentionally. You want them always to be the same. So that's great to use tuples at that time because tuples, once they are there, they cannot be changed. Okay, perfect. We'll see more in tup for tuples and other data structures and different assignments and projects. For now, try to practice and I will see you in the next video. Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about lists, lists in Python. And this is another data type. So we learned about variables, strings, and now let's talk about lists. So a list is an ordered sequence that can hold different object types. What does it mean? This is an example of a list. It starts with a bracket and then a closed bracket, square bracket. Okay, there are square brackets at the beginning and at the end, not round one, not circle one. Then you have object types. It can be anything, it can be integer, it can be string, it can be float and separated by a comma. We are going to see many examples. Then we are going also to see the length of a list, how to find that. Then we'll see some examples of indexing and slicing as we did to the strings. And then concatenation and similar way to strings. And very important thing, lists are immutable. Unlike the strings, which are immutable, lists are mutable. We are going to see that also and then we'll learn about the append method append method and a few other things so there is a lot to cover let's jump in and start so examples of lists we have let's start a new code here for example i can say list one equals then we said square brackets sorry square brackets and then one two three four five as many as you want then run the code and this is list one if list one i want to call it i want to type it on the screen the output is one two three four five so this is list one i can define list two for example is square brackets and then i will say six seven eight nine and ten 
and this is list oh I made the mistake here list two not with without the K then I will go let me call it again list two and now I have six seven eight nine ten and if you are wondering why list one didn't appear in the output because only the last thing will appear if you want everything to appear if you want list one also to appear then you need to add a print right print and let's close it and now if we run the code you will have both of them you have print because the print always will show on the output and also the last thing will show okay which is list two okay perfect now we have list one and list two now does the list include other type of objects beside integers these are integers one two three four five till ten these are integers what if i say list three equals square brackets then i have a string let's say a string let me just make it a string string with the double quotation or single quotation then i have an integer then also i can have a float float remember with a decimal 4.6 does it work if i run the code yes no errors then if i call list three and the output will be string one four point six so it works it works there is no problem at all now if i want to retain the length of the list the length means how many items inside my list how many items so i can say length of list one and if i run the code it's five because i have one two three four five what about list two there are also five what about list three there are three items excellent this is the length so you can check how many items inside your list then slicing and indexing we can do that by simply similar way to the string i can say list one then which item do you want from item one i want number one then it's what is the index of number one it's index zero because we start with zero if i run the code it will retain one what about four item four is zero one two three four which is five what if i retain out of range there should be what exactly there will be error because list index out of range there is no item with the index number five right one two three zero one two three four so the last one is four perfect what if i change just for more examples and here i say give me from list number two the item with index three which is nine zero one two three right i can also do the opposite give me minus two so minus one minus two also nine minus one should be ten perfect so also indexing this is called indexing right can i slice yes we can this is slicing yeah slicing based on the index of the item inside the list this is a slicing but can i slice a range yes so if i take slice or list three list three then from list three give me all the items or three is short let's make it two huh? let's make it two for example list two oh sorry so list two give me all the items from the beginning so this is from the beginning i put nothing then i put the colon then till item let's say with the index three and if i run the code it will give me six seven eight let's confirm i have from the beginning this is beginning zero one two three so from six to nine but as we agreed before nine will not be included because python says i will give you everything from the beginning till index three not including it without including three without including the index three right so nine will be excluded if you want to include nine then increase the range to four and now nine will be included nine will be included perfect this is slicing and indexing concatenation also we know what is that we saw it in strings so what i can do list one plus list two does it work let's confirm with python 
and now we have error why is that because list one and list two are we need to just change list one and list two i did a mistake because list one and list two are not defined are not defined right i put numbers here it should be one and two just to be sure our input is correct now if i run the code everything is perfect so i have list one from one two three till five one two three four five till here then list two from six to ten six to ten perfect what if i add another one list three will it be included perfect i have string one four point six everything is there everything is there this is concatenation we did the same with the strings we can do the same with lists there is no problem okay can i do this trick for example what if i say times two here what will happen see list one multiplied by two one two three four five one two three four five it doesn't mean don't make mistake that one will be multiplied by two that's two then two by two four three by two six four by two eight no it will just repeat list number one list one will be repeated how many times two times if i put three it will be repeated three times okay if i remove from here and say list two times three also yes so you have it here because so long but it's the same it's the same okay if i make two also here yeah six seven eight nine ten six seven eight nine ten and list three let's say by two and it's so long so it will put it this way if i remove the two from here now it's in one line it's the same string one four point six string one four point six so you can also do these things what else okay what if i do this plus two can you uh, can you guess what will be the output can you guess what will be the output okay did you guess that there will be an error because two is integer you remember in the in the strings when we tried to add a string to an integer it didn't work there was an error the same with the list you cannot add you cannot add a list to an integer correct we can add the list to a list but list to integer it doesn't work what about list to string let's try again the same not string here you can only concatenate lists to a list not to a string so this need to be a list can i do it this way for example two let's see and now it's okay so we have list one one two three four five then two then six seven eight nine ten list two then list three string one four point six i'm trying to show you as many examples as possible the best way to learn is to do these things to try can i do this one what if i change what there will be there an error or it will work and you learn from the errors you learn from the errors what does it mean if i add two here and run the code now there is an error what is the error you read especially the last line can only concatenate list to list list to a list not integer you put an integer you cannot do that okay perfect let me remove these things and now what another type of error if i have list one list list two you forget the plus sign invalid syntax because list one list two they are defined but what are you trying to do there is nothing between them so this is the right way okay perfect this is done the lists are mutable what does it mean now if i have list one let me print it let me type it on the screen one two three four five now if i say list one item number one and let's say item number one which is index zero i want it i want to change it not one i want it to be for example 10 will it work let's see yes there is no error if i call list underscore one and now i call list one ten very good i changed the item one to ten from one to ten perfect so you can change you can change for example it works let's say this is my list equals and let's put names for example sam mark then 
Roy. Let's say these are students. Then I want to say, okay, Sam is no longer with us. I want to send. Uh, I want to change Sam. So I will say my list. Okay, and then item number zero, index zero, equals now. Let's say John. Okay, John. And there is an error if I click enter here because it need to make a string. And double quotation here, and now should be okay. Now if I recall, if I call my list. John Mark Roy so you can change because lists are mutable lists are mutable perfect this is done then append method there are many methods in the list so I can say for example imagine that I have my list so my list let's print it John Mark Roy John Mark Roy right now if I say my list and dot and of course just right let's type the name correct my list dot and now here my list dot now there will be different options methods will appear huh? there are many let's try append for example append and remember from the previous videos you need always brackets and if i append append does what it adds it adds some items to the list now let's see before i continue let me see if i run the code append takes exactly one argument you give nothing so you want to append you are telling python add or append to my list some items python saying where are the items you added nothing here i can say for example muson and if i click enter now run the code okay no errors perfect let me call my list now my list and now see John Mark Roy Muzon perfect so it's added it is added this is very important okay we'd like to try more I can say my list then dot then wait a second for the list to appear then you have different options you can reverse you can sort let's try reverse and don't forget the brackets I will not go over all of them I would like you to practice you you can play around them there is no way any lesson any course that covers everything in python or in any other subject so the best way is to practice to see what options are there the best way also is to implement and do projects which we are going to do together inshallah in later in later lessons so my list dot reverse there is no error and if i call my list now it's the opposite it's reversed now it was john mark roy muzon now it's muzon roy mark john okay so what i told python is take my list and reverse it okay take my list and reverse it i didn't have to add anything in between because it's enough take my list and reverse it that's it while in the previous one my list take my list and add to it python will ask add what okay so that's why we need to put something in between perfect let me stop this video here practice do some exercises open your python and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lesson we are going to learn about the sets in python sets in python so in python a set is an unordered collection of unique elements we are going to see what does it mean and important about this it doesn't allow duplicate values doesn't allow duplicate values we'll see examples the order in which the elements are added to the set is not preserved let's see some examples and we start with how to create a set so let's define a list first let me call it my list my list equals square brackets one two three four five for example then out of this list I will create my set how do you create it by using the set function there is a function in Python called set so let me define my set my set equals I will use the set function and what do I need to include in the set function I will include my list my list let's see now if I run the code everything is okay no, no errors now if I call my set it will give me 
one, two, three, four, five. The same elements of the list, but with curly braces to indicate that this is a set. If you want to make sure the type, type of my set, run the code, and it is a set. It is a set. Perfect. This is one way to include your elements, your list, to include a list inside the set function. Another way or by enclosing a list of values in a curly braces. How to do that? So let's say sample set equals, and here I will put curly braces, then I will say 1, 10, 100, 1000. And if I run the code, all good. I call my sample set and it gives me 1, 10, 100, and 1000. So either you enter the elements inside a curly braces or you create a list and out of your list you just put the set function. Use the set function. Now let's see another example. If I see here type sample set and it is a set. Okay. Also I can say length of sample set and you remember what does it do the length function gives me the length correct of the set one two three four i have four elements four elements perfect you can add elements to a set using the add dot the add method how do you use that let me take sample set if i call it one ten hundred and one thousand and if i want to add i will just simply add brackets and what do you want to add i want to add let's say 500 enter run the code everything is okay and now i have 500 already in my i have 500 already added so i'll make this as a comment and now i will call my sample set and let's see the result is 1 10 100 500 and 1000 okay i have five elements now if I want to add more, you can add the same way, the add method. If you want to remove, you can also remove. I can say sample underscore set. This is my set. And let me just first call it to see the elements. One, ten, hundred, five hundred thousand. And then dot remove, the remove function. What do you want to remove? I want to remove the one thousand. Run. It has been removed. Now I will make it as a comment and recall my set sample set 1 10 100 and 500 if you are wondering why I make it a comment because if I don't it will let's see run the code and there is an error because it has been removed already so if you run the code again it will give you an error so let me just put it as a comment and run the code again everything is okay now if I say here give me my set one thing I would like to show you my set my set is one two three four five now if I say okay my set I want to add my set dot add I would like to add five again I would add five again okay then I will call my set to see the result and see what will happen on the code my set sorry I made a mistake here I made it capital it should be exactly the same as the name so my set one two three four five it did already my set has one two three four five my set already has one two three four five right my set one two three four five so when I add five again it didn't add it why because as we said initially here will not have any duplicate values will not have any duplicate values. Let me make it more clear. Let's say set A, this is an, a set, equals, let's say, curly braces, one, 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 sorry, one, 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 five, 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 ten, ten, ten. Now, if I call set A, see what happens? It returns only the unique values. It doesn't allow duplication. It doesn't allow duplication. Why is that? 
it's important so what's the difference between a set and list it's just the curly braces and the set doesn't allow the application it's important in the future when you have a more advanced or complex project that you want some data to be fixed and don't allow the users to change it so this is a good way to use it okay let's stop here for the sets and i will see you in the next video with some exercises and other topics thank you and see you soon hello everyone in this video we are going to learn about booleans in python a boolean is a data type that represents one of two values either true or false true or false so we use booleans to check if a condition is met or no let's start introducing this by saying by seeing the reserved words in python for the booleans which is true and make sure that t is capital and you see the color is different because if you put true with a small and you run the code there will be an error it will say true is not defined either you define it as a variable or make sure to make the t capital then if you run this code it says yes true so this is a boolean how do you make sure or check the type of this true you right check with the function type and you see b double o l and this is boolean okay so we have true then we have false again capital letter and it is a false and here if I check type of false that's boolean okay so true or false these are booleans and now where do we use it for example I say one is larger than two now if I run this code and this sign means larger or bigger one bigger than two now we know this is not correct and if I run the code Python will return to us or the output will be false will be false right now if you check the type of this it will be boolean now similarly I can say two is larger than zero if I run this code it will be true it will be true so it's simple we are going to talk about it more when we come to use it when we need it in more complex codes and programs but for now it's important for you to know that a boolean has two values either true or false depending on the conditions you have and often we use it in conditions in conditional for in conditional programs or functions same like uh, if if something is larger than something then return a true otherwise false and so on okay that's it for the booleans we are going to talk about it more in next programs for now try to type couple of operations you can for example say one equals one and double equal means check is it equal yes true if i change it to five for example it says false okay try to play a little bit with some operators we are going to talk about operators later on but bigger larger than smaller than equals and so on and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to have some questions to test our knowledge on objects and data structures in python so this will cover almost everything we have studied so far just to test our knowledge and if you have any difficulties any questions feel free to reconsult the videos or just leave a question in the chat so let me in this video go over the questions and in the next video i will go over the solutions first a question what is a list in python and this should be easy you check one of these options if you have any doubts go back to the video of list what is a dictionary in python the same way we have four options check them how do you add a key value pair to a dictionary x the name of the dictionary is x in python how do you add a key value pair you have four options what is a tuple in python you have four options again choose one of them and for all these questions the first four questions go back to the videos of that specific topic list dictionary and tuple to find the answers if you have any doubts the next question has several codes and the requested is the required is to find the output of these codes so the first one x equal 5 
y equal equals 3.14 if we want to add x to y what will be the output second one x equals 5 y equals 3 what is the output of x over y x equal 5 y equals 3 what is the output of this operation and you remember this is the mod then the next one x equals 5 y equals 3 x to the power y next one 5 plus 2 times 3 minus 2 what is the output and be careful you need to mind to be mindful of the order of the operators x equals hello y equals word what is the output for all these questions and the next questions please just make sure i forgot to tell you that try to do it manually to think about the output before you run the code right because it can be easy you just run the code and you find the output but the point is you try it yourself and then and then we can see you can check your answer by running the code next one is x equals hello y equals word x times three what is the output x equals hello then x of two what is the output x equals hello x two to four the output then x plus y if x is five y equals hello and be mindful here in these questions we have a uh, in this question specifically we have a number plus string right number and string x equals one two three y equals x y of one the index one the answer should be y of one equals four so print x print x in this case this is a dictionary here x equals a and the value is one b and the value is two x of a will be should be easy x equals this is a set then uh, sorry this is a dictionary then x of c equals a three print x what will be the output and the next two questions straightforward how do you access the third element of a list in python and the last question how do you modify the second element of a tuple in python okay good luck take your time and when you finish come back to the next video for the solutions hello everyone okay let's go ahead and do the solutions for the test make sure before you watch this video to do it yourself please because very important to practice even if you find it easy just do it yourself try to type on your on your python environment and see the answers okay now what is a list in python we have four options an ordered collection of objects that can be of different types an unordered collection of objects that can only be of the same type a dictionary with integer keys and values of any type so c is wrong because this is a dictionary obviously a set of values of any type and this is wrong as you know it's a the correct answer is a an ordered collection of objects that can be of different types easy what is a dictionary in python and the answer is a collection of key value pairs right collection of key and value pairs question number three how do you add a key value pair to a dictionary x in python the name of the dictionary is x how do you add a key value pair we have the first one x equals x plus key value x of key equals value and this is the correct answer b right this is how we add a key value pair into a dictionary what is a tuple in python a collection of key value pairs no this is dictionary an ordered collection of objects that can be of different types an immutable sequence of objects that can be of different types a mutable sequence of objects that can be only of the same type and the answer is c right immutable sequence of objects that can be of different types it can be integer float string anything and it's immutable what does it mean to be immutable it means you cannot assign or reassign elements inside the tuple what is the output of the following codes x equals 5 y equals 3.14 this should be easy x plus y 8.14 we run the code and 81.4 so when you add integer to a float you will get a float 
x equals 5, y equals 3. If we do the division, it will be 1.6666, then till the end, 7. x equals 5, y equals 3. If we take the mod, so 5 divided by 3, there is only one 3 in the 5, right? And the remaining is 2. So the answer should be 2, because we are looking at the remainder. x equals 5, y equals 3 x to the power of y so 5 to the power of 3 5 times 5 25 and 25 times 5 is 125 next one 5 plus 2 times 3 minus 2 so 5 plus 2 is 7 times 3 21 minus 2 is 19 no that's wrong so be careful you need to start with the multiplication the operators order 2 times 3 6 6 plus 5, 11, minus 2, and the answer should be 9. So the priority or the first multiplication and division, then sum and minus, or addition and subtraction. Then x equals hello, y equals word, print x plus y, and the answer, as you may guess, hello world. There is no space, right? There is no space between them. Hello world. And the W is small here, hello world. If you want to make space, you can just add here a space. Sorry. Hello world. Or alternatively, you can alternatively you can add it before the word world. So either is correct. Let me send it back to its origin. And that's it. Yep. Hello world. If I want hello times the three, what will be? It will be hello, hello, hello right perfect if you want a space again the same way you can just add space hello 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 next one x equals hello print x of 2 the second or the index the element what does it mean i want the element that has index 2 so h is 0 we start with 0 then 1 for e and 2 for l so it's supposed to be l perfect x equals hello i want the elements of from 2 to 4 so 0 1 2 so I have L 3 and 4 but in Python remember we don't include 4 so only 2 and 3 and that will be LL X equals 5 Y equals hello X plus Y I hope you got this right because there will be an error we cannot separate we cannot add or do operations between integer and a string and the error here unsupported operation integer plus string doesn't work so there will be an error x equals the list 1 2 3 y equals x so it's the same y of 1 0 1 so it was 2 now i reassigned it to 4 so the answer should be 1 4 3 correct x equals the dictionary a1 b2 x of a should be 1 straightforward this is the key a and the value is 1 x a1 b2 a dictionary now i added this is how we add a key value pair x c equals 3 so it should be now a1 b2 c3 a dictionary with additional element c3 perfect how do you access a third element of a list x in python x2 0 1 2 mm -hmm. x3 x minus 3 x 0 2 what do you think should be x2 right the because the third element has index 2 I start with 0 for first element 1 for second element and 3 2 for the third element 0 1 2 how do you modify the second element of a tuple X in Python how do you modify second element of a tuple in Python X of 1 yes this is the second element equals 4 can we do this no because tuples are immutable so it's not possible to modify them not possible to modify them perfect if you get the answers most of them correct that's perfect if you had any mistakes any errors please go back to the videos the specific video for that error and let's try to study it again if you still have any challenges feel free to write in the Q&A I will be more than happy to help you with any questions thank you very much keep going and I will see you in the next lecture hello everyone in this video we are just going to summarize before we end this section I would like to summarize the data structures and the objects types that we have studied so far 
So we have at the beginning integer object, which is a whole number with no decimal points, no decimal points in between, no decimal point in between, similar as the example x equals 10. Float object, a number with a decimal point, y equals 10.5, we have decimal point. String object, a sequence of characters enclosed in, quote, in quotes, like z equals hello, and you see the double quotation or single quotation. Boolean Boolean object, a value that can be either true or false. A equals true, B equals false. These are booleans. List object, an ordered collection of objects that can be of any data type and can be modified. List one equals, and you can see it's a square brackets. One, two, three, four, separated by a comma. Tuple object, an ordered collection of objects that can be of any type and cannot be modified. This is the most important. Cannot be modified. Tuple 1 equals 5, 6, 7, 8 and you can see it's a parenthesis. Set object, an unordered collection of unique objects that cannot be modified. Set 1 equals 19, 11, 12 and you have the curly braces around. Dictionary object, a collection of key value pairs where the keys must be unique at and the values can be of any data type. Dictionary 1 equals key 1, key 2, key 3, key 4, and the values 13, 14, 15, 16. Between the key and the value, there is a column, and it, everything is enclosed in curly braces. So this is a quick summary. I hope it's clear. Thank you very much for joining for the first section, and now we are going to move to section number 2 and learn more about Python. Thank you very much, and see you soon. Welcome everyone. In this lecture, we are going to learn about comparison operators in Python. Comparison operators in Python. In Python, comparison operators are used to compare the values of two objects and return a boolean. Boolean, remember, it's true or false value, indicating whether the comparison is true or false. Here are the comparison operators in Python along with some examples. So the first one is the equal, equal to, and here note that we have double equal signs, double equal signs, not one. And we'll talk about it, why that, why is that? Equal to, this operator returns a true if the values on either side of it are equal, and false if they are not. For example, see, we have here in x equals 10, y equals 20, and z equals 10. Now if I say x equal equal y, x equals y, is 10 equals 20? No, that's false. So the output will be false. And if we want to check x equals z, 10 equals 10, and the value will be true. So if I run this code, I will have false and true as output. Now I told you we need double equal signs because if I say here, if I copy this, print x equal equal y if i say x equal y we'll run this code and there will be an error here python will think that x equal y that there is a variable called x and a variable called y and you are trying to assign x to equal y now if i remove print just to now if i say x equals y i run this code and okay now Python say okay you assigned x equals y you assigned x equal y but you did not check for anything now let me just make these as comments I run the code again and if I return x I call for x run the code and x equals 20 now why because I said I told Python now x equals y and y equals 20 so x has been changed now, which we don't want. We don't want, right? Now let me remove these things and remove the comments from here. Just be careful when you want to check double equal sign. The second operator sign is not equal to, not equal to. And we use it with one equal sign and before it exclamation mark. This operator returns a true if the values on either side of it are not equal, not equal, and false if they are equal. So basically it's opposite of the equal. x equals 10, y equals 20, and z equals 10. Print x doesn't equal y, x doesn't equal y, that's correct, so it will be true. 
and x doesn't equal z x and z they are equal so they if you are saying x doesn't equal z that's false statement run the code and you have true and false next sign is greater than greater than and this is the sign greater than this operator retains true if the value on the left side is greater than the value on the right side if you have basic mathematics this should be straightforward for example i have x y z values if i say okay x greater than y x greater than y that's false because it's smaller y greater than x that's true x greater than z that's false because they are equal okay then if i go to the next one the opposite of a greater than is less than and obviously this operator retains the true if the value on the left side is less than the value on the right side and false if it's not for example i have these values for x y z x is less than y x less than y yes that's true 10 is less than 20 so it will return true y less than x that's false x less than z that's false as well next we have a combination greater than or equal greater than or equal to this operator retains the true if the value on the left side is greater than or equal to the value on the right side and false if it's not example x equals 10 y equals 20 z equals 10 print now x greater than or equal than y is 10 greater than or equal 20 that's false y greater than x 20 greater than or equal to 10 yes that's true it's a greater than or or so it's a greater 20 is a greater than 10 so that's a true statement and x greater than or equal z 10 greater than or equal to 10 yes 10 equals 10 so that's also true statement so false true true next one is less than or equal which is the opposite of a greater than or equal this operator returns true if the value on the left side is less than or equal to the value on the right side and false if it's not for example x equals 10 y equals 20 z equals z equals 10 now is x less than or equal y 10 less than or equal to 20 that's true it's less than y less than or equal to x 20 is not less than 10 and it's not equal to 10 so it's false x less than or equal to z so 10 is it less than 10 no but x which is 10 is equal to z which is 10 as well so this is a true statement so it's a true statement now one thing here i would like to show you let me make these comments and now if i say it's not only numbers i can say for example strings i can say let's say hello is hello equals to hi if i run the code it's false statement because hello doesn't doesn't equal hi it equals hello and if i say run now hello equals hello it's exactly the same and be careful because python takes into consideration the upper or lower cases hello doesn't equal hello because the h here is capital also python considers the type of the data of the object so this is a string two does it equal two as integer and the answer is false because they are not the same type even the value is the same but the type is different this is a string and this is integer so this is a comparison these are the comparison operators so far in the next lecture we are going to see a combination combination more logical operators more logic operations using the operators and combination of them greater than and equal for example greater than and not equal and so on so we'll see this in more details in the next video thank you very much and keep going very good job welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn a little bit more about logical operators about operators in python and now combining the operators larger than smaller than equal signs and other operators combine them chain them together to make more logical operators let's see what does it mean in python logical operators 
are used to perform logical operations on the values of two objects and retain a boolean value indicating the result of the operation and here are the logical operators in python along with some examples okay now this is a th theory let's see practically with examples what does it mean we have three logical operators mainly one is and the other one is or and the last is not and as the name suggests this operator returns the true if both of the values on either side of it true and false otherwise what does it mean so first of all one equals one this is true value right and then i have two equals two if i run this code this is also true now for let's imagine that for any reason i want to combine these two together so if i say one equals one and two equals two so what does it mean here first of all note that and this is a reserved board in python and you can check this by the color the color of the word changed automatically right so and so what does it mean the values on the left must be true and the values on the right must be true in order to give me a true result so both values need to be true to give me true value otherwise if either of the values on the left or the right is false then it will be false so because one equals one and two equals two then it returns true value if i change this one to two equals three now if i run this code it should give me false yes and if i return it to and change something here let's say this is five also this will be false and finally if i change both sides this is nine both of them false then also it will give false so remember both sides must be true the next one is or this operator returns true if at least one of the values on either side of it is it true one of the values on either side is it true and false otherwise so let's see examples one equals one and two equals two one equals one and two equals two now this is a true statement so it will be true now i want to check for or one equals one or two equals two so this is true true now what happens if i make like this one equals nine python will check say no this is false statement or two equals two so one at least is a true either side of it at least one of the values at least one of the values on either side this side or this side is a true so because two equals two this is one value true i don't care about the left even if the left is false it will give me true okay what happens if both of them are false now in this case and only in this case it will be false because because both sides are false and the last one is not not this operator retains the opposite of the value on the right side of it the opposite of the value let's see how it works so we know one equals one if i run this code it's a true now if i say here not see it says this operator retains the opposite of the value on the right the value on the right is it true correct is true now the opposite is false so now it give me false so what does it do only it gives you the opposite of whatever is the original result if i say for example string a and here equals string g now this is and let me make this as a comment so we don't confuse ourselves now if i run this one it will give me false now if i add not at the beginning what happens it will give me true because it's the opposite okay it just gives you the opposite of whatever the result now you can add parentheses if you want doesn't change anything it's just to make it more if you want organized or more visible it's up to you it doesn't make any difference it will be the same so to summarize we have three logical operators and or and not and both sides must be true to give you true or either or at least one should be true 
and not gives you the opposite of the value okay great keep going and i'll see you in the next video for some exercises and quizzes thank you very much welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about the control flow and mainly the f lf and else statements in python this is very important lecture and we are going to see many examples so let's start the journey in python if statements are used if statements are used to perform different actions based on whether a certain condition is true or false if statement must always be followed by a condition this is the first thing we need to know if statements must always be followed by a condition which is a boolean this condition is a boolean what does boolean may mean it means either true or false true or false the condition is followed by a colon this is the syntax we'll talk about it and the code block that will be executed if the condition is true must be indented indented we are going to talk about it but it means spaced given a space we'll talk about it the general syntax for an if statement is now this is the this is the translation of the above three lines if followed by a condition now this condition is a boolean either true or false now what will what will happen if this condition is a true a code will be executed a code will be executed if the condition is true okay you can also use lf so this is about f if there's if a condition is true a code will be executed for example if the weather is hot print it's too hot outside for example of or if temperature greater than 40 print it's too hot outside we'll see it this is number one f number two lf you can also use lf which stands for else f to include additional conditions lf blocks are optional and can be added after an if statement like this if condition one code to be executed if condition one is true so if this condition number one is true there will be a code to be executed now else if what happen if this code if this condition number one if condition number one is not true it's false what happens now here comes lf else if condition two this there will be a code to be executed if condition one is false and conditional two is true again so we have if condition one if condition one is true code here below the if statement will be executed if condition one is false then we need to look at condition two is condition two true then the code will be executed is below the elif you can have as many elif blocks as you like but they must come after the initial if statement and before the optional else block so this is f this is elif and don't worry we are going to see many examples the else block is also optional and comes at the end of an if statement it's used it's used to specify a block of code to be executed if all the conditions above above it are false so how does it look if a condition condition number one if it's a true then there will be a code executed here if it's not true it's false then elif condition two and if condition two is a true there will be a code executed here then what happens if the condition two is false as well then we go to else so if condition one elif condition two then else code to be executed if condition one and condition two are both false okay now let's see some examples here is an example of an if statement with an elif and else block for example this i did identified x equals 10 y equals 5 if x is greater than y then print x is greater than y elif x is smaller than y then print x is less than y else print x is equal to y now let's break it down x equals 10 y equals 5 first if statement if x is larger than y is this true or false is 10 larger than 5 yes it's greater than 5 so 
this is the code will be executed print x is greater than y so this code print x is greater than y this will be executed this will be executed why is that because the condition above it x larger or greater than y is true 10 is greater than 5 this is print and the output should be x is greater than y now what happens once any condition is met x is greater than y this is met python will not run the remaining of the code let's see the output and x is greater than y which is the first one x is greater than y what happens here this line elif x is less than y and else was not executed okay now let me change let me say for example x equal 2 now x take a few seconds and guess what will be the output x equals 2 y equals 5 so python will run the code from the top if x is greater than y so 2 greater than 5 this is how python will think is 2 greater than y than 5 that it's false no it's not so f this is false don't then what will happen this line will not be executed and python will jump to elif elif else if x is less than y is 2 less than 5 yes it's a true so this code will be executed and the output will be x is less than y and then the last line will be skipped let's run the code now and the answer x is less than y now let me make them equal 5 5 and run the code and as you can expect the output will be print or x is equal to y x is equal to y on the code x is equal to y okay perfect so let's look at it again i have x equal 5 x y equal 5 i have first condition is it met then run run this code execute this code not not true it's false then jump to lf true run this code the code below it false jump to else and execute the code under else a few notes here you have f then condition the condition here is x greater than y then colon very important very important see what happens if i remove the colon there will be an error and the error is invalid syntax because python say this doesn't look right so we need the columns okay print x is greater than y this is the first thing so i have f condition then a code condition and code condition and code after elif else else has no condition because else means if everything all the conditions above else are false then execute this code there there is no need for a code there is no need for a condition after else because it means else means all the conditions above me are false so that's why i will print this code x x x is equal to y okay this is very important so again colons are important f has colon after the condition elif has a colon after the condition else has a colon after it there is no condition this is number one number two you need to pay attention for this space see this is called indentation this is what we explained at the beginning here will be executed if the condition is true must be indented indented means there must be space so after each f after f when you go to the next line there must be indentation a space and usually the space is four spaces four spaces see this is one two three four it's not a must there is no problem you can make them three no problem but consistent after elif also need to be the same one two three four after else one two three four you can make them all three all one or two doesn't matter five ten but usually they are four okay the same indentation after f indentation after elif and indentation after else why is that because now this is how python will understand that this print statement this code belongs to the f and this code belongs to the elif and this code belongs to else okay because it comes under it then we go to the line here see f and elif and else they are on the same line 
and the print 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 they are on the same line very important also so here if i remove this indentation see what happens expected an indented block this is a block the elif is called a block so python says i expect a block here what happens i expect indentation what happened okay so we need to keep the indentation what else what other errors we mi might face so the colons very important the indentation very important okay another example just to make the idea clear let's take this code temperature equals 30 now if temperature the code says if temperature is greater than 40 print it's hot outside lf temperature greater than 30 print it's warm outside else print it's cool outside okay now what do you think the output of this one i'll give you a minute think about it and tell me what you think the code output will be you can pause the video i will run the code and the output is it's cool outside because is the temperature greater than 40 no is the temperature greater than 30 no it's it equals 30 so what happens here the else statement will be executed it's cool outside let me change this temperature to let's say 50 and what do you think now will happen which statement will be executed it's hot outside yes because 50 greater than 40 what if i make it 31 it's warm outside it's greater than 30 right because it's greater than 30. now you might ask okay when you made it 50 here you made it 50 yes it's greater than 40 but also it's greater than 30 so why python executed the first line not the second line because both statements are true and this is a good question the reason is python goes from the top to the bottom if the first condition is met he skips the rest of the statements he will skip the rest of the statements so python will not execute this will not run will not run, will not run the elif and will not run the else so the first condition met that will be executed and that's it okay perfect let's move to the next part it's important to note that the elif and else blocks are optional optional you can use just an if statement if you only need to check for one condition like this example temperature equals 25 if temperature is greater than 40 print it's hot outside so 25 is not greater than 40 so there should be nothing no output because there is no condition that have been met if i change it to 55 now the output will be it's hot outside okay but the point is it's enough to have only one f without elif without else no problem okay more in python indentation is used to indicate which lines of code belong to the same block so this is called a block f and the print these two lines are one block one block they belong to each other's okay blocks of code are used to group related statements and define the scope of variables define the scope of variables okay indentation is done using white spaces characters usually spaces or tabs the number of white space characters used for indentation is not important not important however it, was, it must con be consistent within a block of code must be consistent it's common to use four spaces for each level of indentation okay now see the example x equal 10 y equal 5 if x is larger or greater than y print x is greater than y and print this line is also part of the code block so this is one code block so the indentation see under the f there is indentation for the first line and the second line run the code and everything is okay if i remove the indentation from here there will be a wrong an indent doesn't match any outer indentation level it doesn't match anything it should be matching this one so what if we remove also this is okay why because python here is okay he says this is important because if x is greater than y print x okay it's printed then this print doesn't belong to this block okay 
this is independent now this print is independent it doesn't belong to the if x greater than y so we have these two lines belong to each other because there is indentation under the f see there is indentation for the print the first print which means it belongs to the f then there is no indentation for the print so it means it doesn't belong to the f it's equal to the f okay it's equal to the f it doesn't belong to it and if you want to make sure i can just make these comments these as comments see and i can run the code only by having the print and the answer will be this line is also part of the code block it's part of it when it was like this huh? when it was indented but now it's not indented it's just separate independent okay let me remove the comments this is important what i advise you is to take the code and add indentation remove indentation to understand so now these are the same the same indentation for the two prints and they belong to the f okay once you remove the indentation it doesn't belong to the f anymore so a lot of information here take your time practice it try to write a code from your side you can find this notebook in the github let me know if you have any question in the q and a and i'll see you in the next video with more exercises thank you hello everyone in this lecture we are going to learn about the for loops in python this is very important lecture and here things will get more technical and more makes sense let's say and you will see and let's say you will have more skills more ability to write more complex programs so let's jump in and start learning about the for loops in python in python for loop allows you to iterate over a sequence of elements such as a list or a string let's look at the below example and note the code inside the loop is how it's executed once for each element in the sequence okay let's see what does it mean numbers this is a list called numbers and it has one two three four five inside it now i'm saying for num in numbers so for each number in this list print num so i give it a variable here for this variable num inside my list go one by one and print that number let's see what the output will be printed all the numbers inside my list one two three four five so this num where did i get it from it doesn't matter you can write anything you want i can make it x as long it is the same here x x the same output see i have a list i say for each item inside my list which which is called numbers print that item i can call it whatever i want i can make it gh 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 doesn't matter as long it is the same the output will be the same so every time for every item inside my list numbers print that item okay but since you have this flexibility in the naming give it a name that indicates the type of elements inside your list so it makes more sense when you read your code in the future or someone reads this okay perfect this is the first example we need to look at the syntax you have a list then for the for loop this is our lesson today you have four num in this is also built in word in python numbers numbers is my list print num and look at the indentation it means this print line uh, belongs to the for loop okay belongs to the for loop okay another example numbers this one two three four five for example in numbers print example this is the same idea i said the name or the variable here doesn't matter what is it example num item anything and here you'll see the output is the same numbers one two three four five again you can you have a flexibility you are here what what are you saying here for item for each item in my list here for each item in my list which is called numbers print hello don't print the same number don't print the item no print hello see the outcome what do you expect the outcome will be it will be hello five times because i have five times of num i 
hello for one hello for two hello for three four and five hello 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 five times right because I have five num if I add one element doesn't matter what is it eight it will add one more hello because I'm printing hello every time okay I'm printing hello every time look at the indentation look at the colon after the four very important okay example of using a for loop with an if statement let's make it a little bit more complex if I'm going fast pause the video re-listen to the first two examples and then come back so now let's see let's ma uh, let's mix things up let's have the if statement with the for loop the, the example says iterate over a list and printing only even numbers I want to print only the even numbers I have a list called numbers and it's 1 2 3 till 10 and I want to create a for loop with if statement that prints only the even numbers so I want to go over each element each number inside my list and check if this number is even I will print it otherwise I will not print so my for loop says for num or item inside my list which is called numbers now check if this number mod 2 equals 0 print that number what does it mean this is very famous condition num mod 2 equals 0 to check if the number is even it says if the number mod 2 the remaining after this division is 0 because when you divide any even number over 2 the remaining is 0 4 over 2 2 and the remaining is 0 10 over 2 5 and the remain remaining is 0 so this is how we check for even numbers this is very important you need to remember it and understand it so if the number mod 2 equals 0 then print the number so let's print the output and the output is 2 4 6 8 10 let me put here elif let's make it simple else and print what can we print we can print odd number and let's run this code and see what happens what, how does it work the for loop will start with number one we'll check is it even no so I will go to the else print odd number printed odd number number two 2 mod 2 equals 0 so this is a true then I will print the number the number is 2 and the same will iterate over each element of this list I can add numbers here let's say 6 7 this number I don't know odd or even print and it's odd number okay odd number so this is how you check and how we mix if with for loop a little bit more complex and this this is this is how we build programs right we mix different elements of Python together for loops if statements later on when we learn the while loop and other functions classes and other parts of Python this is how we can build more complex programs and practical applications so for now let's stick to these relatively basic examples we'll move to the next one now we learned how to iterate over over what over a list now let's go and iterate over a string a string is sequence of characters right so iterating over a string and printing each character a string equals hello simple the same for character in a string print character the same concept and all the characters will be printed again this can be anything for item and string bring what print item always need to be the same right hello hello anything now if you want to print I don't want to print item I want to print let's say nice you don't have to print the items or the letters I can print anything I'm telling Python go over each letter and whenever you go over a letter print nice so let's see what happens here nice 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 and there is something you will see it often instead of writing a variable just write this underscore and this is common in Python especially when you go more advanced this is very important as well 
iterating over a list so we iterated over a list uh, over a string over a list so here we saw this is over a list right let's see another example iterating over a list and printing each element one two three four five if i print it we know this is simple make sure you understand it look at the indentation look at the columns after the for loop all good then iterating over a tuple iterating over a tuple and printing each element my tuple one two three four five if you remember with parentheses parentheses for element in my tuple print element the syntax always the same the syntax always the same okay one two three four five one two three four five now iterating over a list of tuples and unpacking the values into separate variables why i'm putting this one because it's important and you will see it often in more complex programs so i have points this is the name of a list see it's a list with square brackets and then you have tuples inside you have tuples one two three four tuples inside what i'm saying here for item in points for each item in my list called points print the item and it will be a, a one two three four tuples one two three four five six seven eight all these tuples right for these tuples now let me jump here i'll come back to the dictionary but i want to see i want to see if i can unpack can i take only one two one three five seven for example i don't want one two together three four together five six together seven eight together i want to unpack the one alone three alone five alone we can do that let me copy this code i will add it i will add a code here this is my code now of course the output of this one is the same now i want to unpack between the brackets so what i will say instead of item i will mimic the, st the structure of the tuple so i have two items inside the tuple so i'll say x and y and then i will tell python print me x and y okay it makes sense think about it logically so you have x y one two without the brackets now imagine i want only the x's only the first numbers then i can remove the y like this and that's wrong because this tells so what i need to do x y print x i need to keep y sorry and now this is correct now this is correct because if i keep i remove x okay python will say for each item inside my list print that item the item is the tuple itself so here i don't need to print the item i need to print first i need to tell python that for each pair x and y one and two x and y three and four x and y five and six x and y seven and eight print only the x so i need to tell python first my x and y are the tuple one and two okay then print only x if i want to to print two four six and eight what i will do i will print the y's correct and again the names here doesn't matter as long there is a consi consistency z z okay perfect so this is the best way to learn play with the variables change the names and see what you will get okay the last part is iteration or iterating over a dictionary by default this is important when you iterate over a dictionary using a for loop you are only looping over the keys of the dictionary you remember the dictionaries are consisting of keys and values pair of keys and values so here is an example my dictionary a1 b2 c3 for key in my dictionary print key and this key is just the name it can be item okay it's better to write it here and see the output item let's run the code it will give me only the keys a b c and if i keep it key also it will be the same key okay this is only a variable name now if you want to access both the keys and the values of a dictionary while iterating you can use the items method if you remember when we studied dictionaries we introduced the items method to print the key and the values and how does it work i have the same dictionary for key and value in my dictionary dot items 
print key and value okay so i'm telling python i have key and value a and one b and two c and three then i will introduce in my dictionary dot items because i want the items print the key and the value let's see the output of this a1 b2 c3 okay all of them now you can change this key and value to x and y key and value x and y must be the same okay very important you want to print only the value remove the key is it true shall i remove the key or no shall i remove the key on both or keep key here and print only the value what do you think i think like this it will give me the same a1 b2 let's see exactly a1 b2 c3 because now i am telling it is it's just a variable name item value key x y number anything but i need to tell python that my this is a dictionary and has two items key and value what shall you print is only the values okay so one two three okay i can change this one and print the key a b c what if what if i reverse this one value and key what do you think will happen and print the key then it will print the one two three which is the value okay one two three because for python value and key these are not the built-in names these are not the built-in names these are variables you are identifying them very important to understand this very important to understand this so let me keep them key and value so i will not confuse you print key and it's a b c okay there is a lot let's summarize because this is kind of intense lesson i have first of all the for loop we identified it the syntax for then item in my list print that item which we called it here num okay and make sure the indentation the print belongs to the four so there is indentation and then i have i have colon after the four the four numbers for example in numbers print example so here doesn't matter what you call it example num item anything but the best something relates to the content the items inside your list then i can also print anything i don't have to print the items so we learn that then we introduce if statement inside the for loop we mix then iterating over a string iterating over a list iterating over a tuple and how to unpack the tuple then iterating over a dictionary okay very important lesson please take your time study it and we will see more examples and the practice very good thank you very much keep going and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to do some practice for the for loops in python it's important to practice the more you practice the better you will become and the more sense it will make for your programming and for your skills so we have one two three four five codes and what is the output of the following codes what is the output for every code of these five codes some of them are easy basics and some a little bit more difficult the first one numbers this is a list equals one two three four then we have for loop num and numbers print number print the num and this is easy because we have seen the similar so what it does it say for each number in the list numbers print number so the output should be one two three four run the code one two three four straightforward numbers one two three four for num and numbers print this time not num num times two right so what should be the output for this one pause the video think about it so what will happen for each number it will be printed times two so the first one i have one times two the output will be two two times two four three times two six and four times two that's eight so the output should be two four six eight third one i have the same list and for each item in this list if the number mod 2 equals 0 and this is famous you know it this is the even checking if the number is even then print the number and we have seen similar case so we'll print only the even numbers 2 and 4 the next one numbers equal 1 2 3 4 a list so for each number in this list if the number is even print the number times 2 else print the number times 3 
so what do you think the output will be the first number one this is e this is odd so it will be multiplied by three so the output will be three two is even so multiplied by two three is odd multiplied by three then four is even multiplied by two so the output will be three four nine eight let's check it three four nine eight the last one a little bit tricky numbers this is a list one two three four total i added i identify or define another variable variable total equals to zero total equals to zero so i am starting from zero and now my for loop says and for each number each item in my list numbers one two three four do the following take the total the old total which is zero at the starting point and add the number to it so the first case zero total means zero plus number which is one for the first case and the new total then take the sum and assign it to the new total which will be zero plus one one so the new total will be one then do the same for the second number two this is the number plus the total which is one in this case the total the new total will be three so what is happening actually we are finding the sum of all the elements inside all the items all the numbers inside the list first time this is one then i'm adding two to it then i'm adding a three i'm adding four and so on so the output here should be one plus two three plus three six plus four ten the output is 10 now if you want to see what is happening see one thing here important see the print there is no indentation it means this print is out of the for loop it doesn't belong to the for loop so do the whole calculation i'm telling python do all the sum calculate 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 then print me the total if you want to see each time the output for each after each iteration then this print we need to make it belonging to the for loop and how do we do that by doing the indentation the same as total so now python understands okay this print is belonging to the for loop what will happen now python will calculate the new total zero plus one this is one then we'll print it then we'll go again and so on so you will see one the first output then one plus two that's a three then 3 plus 3 that's 6 then 6 plus 4 is 10 if you want to see only the grand total the final total the 10 then put the print outside of the for loop 10 another thing important to note is let me put the indentation so without indentation this is outside with indentation under the same consistent with the total this is under the for loop what if in between there will be an error so python now says okay there is no match for this indentation this print belongs to what doesn't bring to four it's not independent and just in the middle so this is not accepted by python be careful with these things but luckily python gives us this automatic see if i press enter it will put it under the for loop now if you want it under the for loop okay otherwise you put it outside print run the code and the output is 10 so these are just some examples to practice more on the for loop keep going and i'll see you next video to explore more about the control flow and this time with the while loop thank you and see you soon welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about the while loops in python while loops in python in python a while loop is a control flow statement control flow statement this is the other type of control flow statement similar to the for loop that allows you to repeat a block of code as long as a given condition is true let's see the syntax of the while loop i have while the word while and you can see the color is different because it's a built-in word in python and then you have a certain condition then if this condition is it true there will be a code to be executed the code in the while loop will be executed repeatedly as long the condition is true once the condition becomes false the loop will stop executing let's see an example i have here a variable defined as 10 y equals to 10 then i have while then my condition y is greater than zero colon do what as long y is greater than zero print y then after you print y redefine y the new y as the old y or the current y minus one 
So what will happen here? Let's break it down. I have 10. Is 10 greater than 0? Yes. Then print 10. 10 will be printed. Then the new y will be 10 minus 1, which is 9. Then 9 greater than 0, 9 will be printed. Then the new y will be 8. And so on until you reach 1. 1 is greater than 0. Yes. Print 1. The new y will be 1 minus 1, 0. Is 0 greater than 0? No. Then this while loop will stop executing. Let me run the code and we'll see the output 10 till 1 till till 1 another example imagine uh, let's define y equals to 10 this is a variable called y equals 10 while y is greater than 0 same example as long this condition equals or greater than 0 print now don't print just y I want to mix the if you remember the f string if the current value of y is y is y so, and then redefine the new y as y minus one as y minus one let me just ignore the else for now i will make it comment this is just focus one step at a time so i just added this string the current value of y is compared to the previous example i just want to show you that we are mixing now what we learned before with the new information we are learning let's see what's the output here Instead of only just the numbers 10, 9, 8, till 1, I have the string, the current value of y is so on till the current value of y is 1. Okay, this is what is happening. And how did I do that? By using the f string, if you remember from the previous sections, the current value of y is, then I put my variable here y, which will be printed every time. And this f, different color because this is the string. Of course, you know there is another way of writing this one removing the f then put a dot here format dot format then you put your variables okay now what happens after the loop or the condition is once the condition reaches to a false when y equals 0 0 is not greater than 0 so the while loop will stop I can introduce else here let me remove the, com remove the comments else if this condition is false do what print y is not greater than zero let me print it and y is not greater than zero okay so also you can add else to while while a condition is a true do something if the condition is false else do something else another example another example i equals 10 while i is while i less than 10 print i then define the new i as the current i plus one so this is the opposite we are counting up okay so take a second and think about what will the output be so i have zero zero less than 10 yes then print zero then the new i is zero plus one one why one is less than 10 yes then print one so zero one two three till till 10 or till nine Till 9 right because 9 less than 10 print 9 the new i is 9 plus 1 10 is 10 less than 10 no then the while loop will stop executing so this is in a quick overview about the while loops take your time practice it do some examples and then i will see you in the next video we'll explain some built-in words or keywords that are often used with the while loop and the for loop break continue break continue and pass thank you very much keep going and i'll see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to continue with the control flow statements lessons we have started with for loops while loops and now we will introduce some built-in keywords pass continue and break that you will see used with the while loop and for loop so in python pass continue and the break are keywords that can be used inside loops for loops and while loops to control the flow of the execution let's start with the first one pass pass is a null statement that does nothing so when that statement pass whenever python sees the word pass it will do nothing if a condition is a true then it will pass it will not do any execution for any code it's used as a placeholder in situations where statement is required but no action need to be taken okay no action need to be taken so i know for example if a number is even okay i will know i want to do something but i don't know what is this thing so i'll just retain i'll just put a pass 
for Python to know that this is a placeholder in the future I will add a certain code to be executed so let's see an example i equals 0 while i is less than 10 i equals the current i plus 1 if i is even then do nothing just pass in the future i will put a code here so python don't return me uh, an error because there will be an a code here how do we tell python that there will be a code in the future by putting pass okay so the number is even pass don't do anything else if the number is not even then print i so what will happen here zero zero less than ten the new i is zero plus one 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 is not even then i will go to else print one then one plus one that's two two is even yes then pass don't do anything don't print the two don't do anything then we go two plus one three three is not even then print to three so here what will happen the output will be only the odd numbers only the odd numbers one three five seven nine yes because whenever the number is even we will pass we will not do anything now if we remove pass okay and we run the code there will be an error okay there will be an error because python says okay you put if statement but there is there is a condition for the if statement but you didn't get tell me what to do you didn't tell me what to do if the condition in the if statement is true so that's why we put pass okay we put pass one three five seven nine the next keyword is continue continue is used to skip the rest of the current iteration of a loop and move on to the next iteration for example i have a string named john okay name equals john this is a string for any letter for the letter in name if the letter equals h then then continue okay don't do anything don't print the h just go back to the next iteration so skip h and go to the next iteration so it will start with the j j equals h no then print j we go to the next letter next iteration o equals h no then print o h equals h yes then continue go back to the next iteration don't print don't do anything n equals h no then print the n so here the output will be j o and n okay continue means to to skip the condition and go continue break is used to immediately exit a loop and move on to the next line of code after the loop for example i equals zero this is famous we have seen it many times while i is less than 10 the new i equals zero plus one which is one if one equals five is i f one equals five no then print i print one then we go back to the next iteration one is less than ten yes the new i will be one plus one two two equals five no then continue then here until four four less than ten yes the new i equals four plus one five is five equals five yes then break stop don't do anything and just exit the exit the loop exit the loop okay immediately exit a loop and move on to the next line of code next line of code not like the previous break or continue not, not like continue or pass it will go back to the previous loop no it will go to the next line of code once i equals five it will break the loop and will exit let's run this code the output will be one two three four and five will not be printed because i'm telling python whenever my number equals five just to break exit the loop and go to the next line one two three four here i can put for example anything print this is not part of the while loop not else nothing it's just we want, we want to check because it says go to the next line of code this is next line of code hello just to do, demonstrate the outcome hello print hello this is a new line and because i broke the loop once my number became five then i will execute the next line of code which is hello out of the loop out of the loop so perfect we have seen continue pass and the break you will not see them often especially at the beginning but it's good to be familiar with them if you need them or if you saw them as part of any code you know what they are doing okay perfect thank you very much and i will see you in the next video
Welcome everyone. In this lecture, we are going to learn about some useful operators in Python. They don't belong exactly to a specific topic, but because we are going to see them in while loops and for loops, so it, I put it in this section. There are a few of them. In this video, we are going to learn about two at the beginning, which are the range function and the n operator. So let's start with the range. In Python, the range function returns a sequence of numbers starting from zero by default and increments by one as a default. And, and, and it ends at a specified number, specified number which is in the function. So this is what we are going to see. Let's see some examples. I have this for loop for i in range five, print i. So what will happen here? The for loop will be executed and because I have the range function and the specified number is 5, my output will start from 0 by default, then increment by 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It will stop at 4 because the range is till 5 and 5 is not included. So if I run this code, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I want 5 to be included, I increase the range to 6. 0 to 5 okay this is the first example so two things here range is a function you need to specify what number you want to stop at and note it's it will not be included then the increment is by one and starts from zero another example and in this example we'll start and stop the argument but also will increment by default one and we'll see if i want to change the starting point what can i do so for i in range 0 to 5 this is the default here correct this is the same as if i say from 0 if i remove the 0 it will be the same output because the default is from 0 right this is the starting point now i can say okay what if i want to start from 2 not from 0 so i put 2 as the beginning 2 3 4 the first input will be my starting point then the second one will be my last point and this is how i can change the starting point two three four if i want to start for example i want from zero or from one let's say to ten to ten ten is not included i will say one two three four five nine okay one start from one i want numbers from one to ten this is how i do it i want to include the ten Again, I just increase 1 and it will be 1 to 10. Now, here we'll add a step. I don't want here the increment to be 1 each time. I want it, for example, to be 2. So let's see this example. For i in range, I start from 3, end at 10. 10 is not included and increment is 2. Let's see the output. It will be 3, 5, 7, and 9. Let's see it. 3, 5, 7, and 9. Now, if I increase this one by 1, what will happen? Nothing, right? 3, 5, 7, 9, because it stops at 11. 11 is not included. If I want to include 11, I will put 12 here. Okay. And, of course, you can play with the range. I can put it 5, the steps, and to be 3 and 8, and it will stop. Also, this step can be negative. I'm increasing here, but I can also make it the opposite so let me make it just two and here my range starts from five ends at ten and it's minus sorry it ends at zero and it's minus one so it'll start five four three two let's see and one five four three two and one zero is not included because it's the end of the range so also the step can be negative okay so we have seen a few examples for the range as a default start from zero and the increment is one then we said we can change the starting point we can change the steps and the steps also can be negative now let's jump into the n keyword in python the n keyword is used to check if an element is present in a sequence such as a list tuple string dictionary it returns true if the element is present and it returns false if it is not present here are a few examples I have this list fruits apple banana and orange apple in fruits I'm asking is apple in fruits now yes apple in fruit so the output will be a boolean true what if I change it I say grapes is grapes in fruits 
it's false is not there and what happens if I add a capital is it it's false is not there no? so it's sensitive it's case sensitive if you want to check if a value is present in, the, in a dictionary you can use the values method and the in operator for example this is start from the beginning fruit this is a dictionary apple key and red is a value banana key yellow is a value orange key and the color is orange now I'm asking red in fruit and let me start from the beginning I'm asking is red in fruit and here because red is the value I would like to actually start with the keys so apple in fruit and should be true because I have apple and by default in dictionaries if you are using the n keyword it will look in the keys it will look in the keys so it's true now see if I say red is red in fruit it will be false because I'm looking at the keys apple banana and orange not at the values okay at the keys shortly we'll learn how to look in the values for example here I can add fruit red fruit dot and you remember this values open brackets and now if I run it it will give me true because now I'm asking to check is red in the values of the dictionary not in the keys of course I can do the keys but no need because it's by default looking in the keys now this will be false because red is not in any of the keys I can say banana and it should be true in this case yes now you can also check the operator whether in the value present in a dictionary another example prices apple 0.5 banana 0.25 orange 0.75 apple in prices yes it is what if take a few seconds and tell me if if strawberry is in prices strawberry and prices and the answer should be false right what if I want to check 0.5 is there any item in my dictionary that cost let's say two dollars two dollars so two in the prices and now what happens here Python is looking in the keys so I need to add values because the prices are in my values so I need to add dot, dot values and there is no item that cost two dollars so this is good when you want to check if an item is present in a dictionary or if a price a value is a present in the dictionary now also the final example example also you can use the in operator to test whether a value is a present in a string we saw it in a list in a tube in dictionary in a string we can also demonstrate in tuples in this case it will return a true if the value is found in the substring and false otherwise so I have a string name equal Alice a in name let's check is it true because a is there what if I make it B is B there it's false because it's not there what if I make it small letter a and run it's false because it is case sensitive it is case sensitive okay this is a quick view in the next video we are going to explore more operators including zip okay thank you and I'll see you in the next video welcome everyone again in this video we are going to learn two more operators in Python enumerate and zip so let's start with enumerate and it is a built-in Python function that allows you to loop over a list of items while keeping track of the index position of each item so we'll take the item and we'll take its index and we'll return them in a tuple it takes an iterable object such as a list and returns an iterator that produces don't worry about this produces tuple containing the index and the value from the object at that index so the index and its value let's see example to make it clear I have this list fruits apple banana and mango now if I say enumerate fruits and I will iterate over the list for item in enumerate fruits not only uh, fruits I'll take the function and en en enumerate fruits so for each item in the fruits I will enumerate it what does it mean 
to take the index of the item and the item itself so if I run the code the output will be zero and apple because apple is in the index zero then one and banana two and mango and they are retained in a tuple right retained or produced a tuple zero apple one banana two mango I can unpack them we learned before unpacking we can unpack them by giving the for example here I can say index and fruit actually let me do it in another code just to keep this source code this original code for you if you want to review it so let me just run it make sure everything okay I will copy this and have a new code so we can compare as well so fruit apple is the same here I can change this instead of item I can say index so because the first one is my index it doesn't matter what you call it if you remember but it's better to give something related index and the second one is a fruit and here in enumerate fruits yes and the items will be changed to index and fruit right just make sure the spelling everything is correct if I run this code see what happened it's unpacked now I can change it even more and say print for me the index alone then print for me the fruit alone okay and if I run this code it will be zero apple one banana two mango okay so this is unpacking as well so now we can have the item and its index at the same time this is called or can be done or can be achieved by the enumerate function the second one is the zip function and this is almost the opposite of enumerate it takes in one or more iter more iterable object and retains an iterator of tuples again tuples the iterators tuple contain the corresponding elements from each of the input iterables not very clear let's see examples to make it clear here are some examples so the first example we need to zip two lists together I have list one list two and I want to put, put them together I identified I defined a variable called zipped and this is my function zip and between inside my function I'll put list one and list two and see the output before I will remove this comment and the output will be tuple one and a two and b three and c let's see the output 1a 2b 3c and I just put them inside the list I can remove this okay before let me actually do one thing here just to compare I will make this as a comment and now I will run run so everything is okay there is no error now if you want to show the zip see what will happen it will not retain the values I'll show you it will retain it will retain just the location so Python is telling you that there is yes this function and the type or this variable and the type of this variable is a zip and this is the location if you want to return it you want to say print print and print it as a list print it as a list that's why we put here the print okay so let's run it and I have one two three and because zip is also there it returns for me the location but I don't need it I just need a list that include as the zipped two lists okay list one and list two okay perfect another example now we can even zip more than two lists now let's try with three lists list one two three and now I have 10 20 30 the zipped the same way equal zip list one list two list three and inside I will print the the list of zipped okay we are making it as a list just to put the tuples inside a list so I have now three elements three items inside each tuple 1a and 10 because I have three lists so what happens it takes one item from each list one from list one then a from list two then 10 from list three then 2 B 20 3 C 30 okay mixing them or zipping them together I can do the same with the strings a b c one two three zip two strings zip the function string one and string two then the output will be a one b two c three right a one b two and c three and remember as we said here at the beginning it will be retained as tuples retains 
as tuples an iterator of tuples it will retain as tuples so a1 b2 c3 all are inside the tuple zip a list and a string now we can mix and just let's quickly see the output i have by list one two three and string a b c so one a two b three c okay it can also it's possible then zip two tuples together i have tuple one one two three a b c and the same way i can zip them together one a two b and three c okay so you can zip two strings two tuples list and string three strings or more it's flexible this is useful if you want to zip things together you want to merge together and more or less is the opposite of enumerate okay very good this is good introduction in the next video we'll see more of these operators keep going and i'll see you shortly in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to learn how to accept input or how to request input from a from the users so in Python, the input function allows us to accept input from the users. It reads input from the user as a string. This is very important. Always the input will be read as a string. So you may need to cast the string to a different data type to use it in your program if necessary. Here is a few examples how to use the input function in our codes. So the first one, the function is input. Input and what do you want the user to input your name for example so if I run this code there will be a request from the user to input their name user so your name I will say Muzn Muzn your name Muzn and it returned as a string you see it's a string if you want to make sure we can say here I can define this as a result let's say this is a variable called result I run the code okay it's Muzn and now if I want to see the type of result just to make sure and to show you that it is a string and I run the code it will be your name Mozon and the type is string your name Mozon and string I can here put a welcome message as the next example for example name equals input enter your name so here I'm asking the user to enter their name then once they input their name i'll say hello and the name okay run the code it will ask me for my name i'll say muzen then hello muzen hello muzen i'm using the f string formatting print formatting you remember this from the first section if you have any doubts go back to the first section it will be clear so i'm asking input from the user then i return it as a string it's returned as a string let's see how the numbers will work because I'm expecting or I am asking the user to enter a number but the output will be a number as a string is a string right so let me run this code it's asking for a number let's say five I say enter the number is five let me but just put colon here just for decoration so five the number five and it's returned as a string now here if I want to check let's say result equals and run the code sorry run the code result five or six any number and now if I want to check the type of the result my variable it will be a string and that's a problem right that's if I want to use it in a calculation in a calculation that will be creating issues why issues because I can say result plus 4 and I expect here let's run the code the user entered number 6 then the result plus 4 that should be 6 plus 4 which is 10 right but see what happens when I there will be an error because my result is a string and we cannot do a string plus a number or an integer string plus integer doesn't work so how do we solve this one how do we solve this one we can do here in the input I can make it as int just cast it with int as simple as that and run the code now asking 6 6 plus the result is the result the type of result is integer now because I said it's integer and now 
if I want to do an operation I can do it yes because the output of or the when the user enters anything in the input function that will be read as a string it will be read as a string and I cannot do a string plus integer or plus a float now let's see if I want to do operations here is an example number one is the integer of the number this input from the user and number two will be another input from the user then my result equals number one plus number two and here I can do the addition because I converted them to integers let's run the code and see how it works so enter a number I say five then enter another number I will say seven enter the result is 12 okay my result is 12 my result is 12 and this is possible if because I am converting them to integers let's see if I remove the int from here enter number six let's say and four enter the result is 64 now what happened both of them are is are strings so if you remember the errors or the string plus string we learned when we learned the strings at the very beginning of the course we have a string is six another string is four when we add them there will be no error but they will be merged in an unexpected way we thought okay six plus four that's ten but here will be 64 which is a string and if you want to check the type of string we can do that or the type of result sorry type result it will be a string six let's say four the result is 64 and it's a string not integer to, to solve this one we need to cast both in integer okay and to convert the way from whatever output change it to integer okay then you can do your calculations and operation the result is 10 and it is an integer perfect this is about the input for now we'll see it in more complex programs make sure the very important message is the output of the input function is a string thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone welcome again in this video we are going to learn about list comprehension in python list comprehension and python list comprehension is a concise way to create a list it reads like a sentence for example create a list for x for each y and z okay it's not very clear let's see some examples i have word as a string hello okay hello now i can say return for me create a list for each letter in the word hello in the word hello for create form create a list for each letter that includes each letter in the word hello create a list that includes each letter of the word hello let's see the output it will be a list and the items inside this list are the letters of the word hello look at the syntax it's x for x in word okay this x similar to the for loop can be anything it can be item and if i run the code it will give the same result doesn't ma doesn't matter doesn't matter usually the best is to be to be something related to my list so let's it includes letters so let's make it letter also there is an ex uh, we can see another example where I have a list that includes three strings and we need to create let's say the length I need to find the length of each string my list called strings it includes three strings cat window and different straight and I want to find the length of each string and return these lengths in a list so I have lengths it's a list and the list inside the list I have length of X this is the function for this function return the length in each string okay return the length 
of each string again how it works I have item and for each item return the length return what always what will be returned the output is the initial input here it's length of X okay if I run this it will be 3 6 and 12 right I can change this length okay let's try with just keeping it as X let's see what happens okay let's see what happens X for X and strings and it will return as we expect the items inside the string similar to the first example it returns the ex the 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 items inside my list right cat window different street which is the same now if I want to see for example I want to double each one I can say times two so it can be here a function it can be an operation cat cat window window and double the last word also also what I can do is find the length and then say X so this is my output remember your output at the beginning for each item inside your list now I run it it gives me the length you can do any operation including function including just simple operations calculations on the first part okay also you can add if you can add a condition for example let's see it here you can also use list comprehension to create a list of the lengths of a list of strings that meet a certain condition so I want to find the length and if the length meets certain condition for example less than six letters here then I will print that string so I'll print only the strings that meet the condition length is less than six so I have the list then short strings another another list but shortened based on the condition and it says okay print for me return for me the strings who meet the condition length of X is less than six and I have cat and window less than six letters so they will be returned okay cat and window one two three four five six sorry window will not be retained is how many one two three six so i did a mistake here so only cat will be retained if i say less than seven then that will be retained cat at window okay so it's not only cat so i think i changed the six so now everything is okay so what does it do here I will check first of all is the length is less than seven letters then do the beginning do the the first part return for me the strings in my list based on their length if their length is less than seven letters then return them otherwise don't return them okay perfect also I can use the same for numbers I can use the same for numbers I have a list number called numbers one two three four I want to find their squares I just say X squared for X and numbers this is straightforward easy if I want to retain the numbers themselves it's just remove the squares but there is no point because I already have the list itself right so I will just keep it X square and here you can do any operation you can do any operation on the left now I can retain the numbers based on a condition by adding if statement and here an example numbers equal one two three four even squares I want to find the squares only for the numbers that are even only for the even numbers so I will say my if statement is on the right if x mod 2 equals 0 this is famous for the checking even numbers then what will happen square these numbers square the numbers and if I print I have 2 with square 4 and 4 square 16 so it should be 4 and 16 okay so again you start with X for X or item for item in my list and then if you two things you need to pay attention for if you want to do any operation any function on you do it on the left side and if you want to add if statement you add it on the right side okay this is readable one line you can do the same you can achieve the same as we have seen before using the for loop but if you want that's why they call it comprehension it's one line quick and readable and easy to understand okay perfect it's enough for 
this video we are going to see more complex examples if necessary later on in the practice and the quizzes for now thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lesson we are going to introduce some questions to test our knowledge on python statements comprehension lists and some operators whatever we study in this section we are going just to put some questions some of these questions are straightforward easy some of them more challenging the best way to practice and improve your skills in python or any programming language is to challenge yourself and try to solve questions that you did not encounter before <clears throat> so let me introduce the questions in this video and in the next video we are going together inshallah to write and check the solutions first question says write a program that reads a list of words from a variable this is the variable words equals and the list and then prints out all of the words that have more than four letters so we need a program that check that checks each of these words in this variable this is a list of words and print out the words that are more than four letters second question write a program that re that treats a list of words from a variable same one and then prints out the number of words that contain the letter e contains the letter e okay third question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then prints out the words that are palindromes and it, what it means words that are the same forward and backward like race car level wow these three words are same if you read them forward or backward we need a program that iterates over this list and print the words if it's meeting this condition next question write a program that uses range to print all of the odd numbers from 1 to 10 and this should be straightforward write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all the even numbers between 1 and 50 even numbers between 1 and 50 also should be straightforward we have seen similar questions in the lessons the next question go through the string below and if the length of a word is even print even if the length of a word is even print even next question write a program that prints the integers from 1 to 100 but for multiples of 3 print fizz instead of the number and for the multiples of 5 print buzz for the numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5 print fizz buzz so there are three conditions or three cases multiple of 3 multiples of 5 multiples of both 3 and 5 and here you need to use f elf else correct and the last question write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all the words in the string that have more than three letters i forgot to add the string i will add the string for you shortly and here is the string this is a string with some words okay try to solve it with list comprehension then try solving it with for loop okay good luck and try your best don't watch the solutions before you try once twice three times even if you receive errors try to fix them and then compare your answers your solutions to the next video and see where did you miss or where it was difficult for you to figure out okay good luck for now and see you in the next video hello everyone and we'll come back i hope you spent enough time to solve the questions and here are the answers so the first question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then prints out all of the words that have more than four letters so looking at this question that there is a condition we need if statement right and because we have a list a string yeah and variable words is a variable include which is a list including some strings so also that gives us a hint that we need a for loop so what can what we can do we can say for word in words and doesn't matter this this item doesn't matter as long as it's consistent so for word in words if the length because here we are saying print out all of the words that have more than four letters so how can we check if it has more than four letters by using the function length right len len of the word is more than four letters correct so if this condition is true what should we do print out the word so print word 
and we need to iterate we need to iterate over since we need to check each and every element inside the list we need for loop so we need to iterate on each item in each item inside this list so for item or for a word inside the words inside this list which is called words please go ahead and check is this word more than four letters if yes print the word else do nothing okay else do nothing so from quick look we know from a quick look that we know that only the last word which is words has more more than four letters so the output should be words okay let me explain it again so now how can i approach this one i'm looking at this one print out all of the words that have more than four letters so more than four letters then i know i need if statement if the since i'm talking about the length of the word more than four letters then i need to use the function length right of the word or call it whatever you want is more than four then colon what should i do print that word right Pr print that word now i'm checking here word by word i'm checking word by word how can i iterate and check word by word i need for loop for word in words words must be words similar spelling as this one and colon and then don't forget the indentation don't forget the indentation f belongs to four and the print belongs to f so see the indentation very important so now makes it's clear words okay so you can say since i want to iterate over a list of items i need a for loop okay then since i want to check if a condition is met or no i need f f statement and because i want to check the number of letters then i need a len length function okay perfect second question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then it prints out all the number out the number of words that contain the letter e again we need to we need to use similar approach similar approach since i want to check all the items inside inside a list i need to use for loop so for word in words if what is the condition print out the number of words that contain the letter e number of words so if e in word if e in the word that we are checking if the word that we are checking has the letter e if this condition is true do what we need to count it we need to count it how do we count it we define the variable count and we set it to zero as initial as initial state status or state it has zero elements or zero items inside it i will go then i will go and check the first item does it have the letter e if yes i will add one i will add one so the new count the new count for my variable becomes one then the second second one third one and so on so let me run this code and the answer is zero there are none of the words has the letter e so how it works count zero initial value for word in words for each word in this list does it check for this condition does it have the letter e no then update the count update the count if it's a true if it's false then go back this does it has the letter e no then go back and go to the next one is no doesn't have e imagine that i have let me introduce here a word that is this for example english and let's see what happens now the code is working so i have one so make sure you understand how it works whenever you want the the, the number of okay count out the number of words then you need count equals count plus one we have seen this many times if you want to here for example see the indentation impact nothing because i have only one word but if i add another word here let's say um, beautiful that has the letter e and then comma and now i run the code i have it's running okay beautiful this is one then it counts counts it comes to english this is two if i want only the final count then 
the output will be two without one so that's why the indentation is important again since i want to check all the items inside a list then i need a for loop since i want to check a statement true or false i need f and since i want the number of words sum of the number of words for example sum between 1 and 50 then i need count equals count plus one again don't worry about the count it can be anything item 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 as long it is consistent okay let's go to the third question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then it prints out the words that are palindromes or palindromes depends how you pronounce it words that, and this the definition of this words that are same forward and backward so we have our list here race car level hello wow it's obvious that race car hello and wow these are meeting the condition and since i want to check again since i want to check items in a list i need for 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 loop and since i want to check for a condition i need f statement so for word in words for any word in these words check does this word equals the reverse of it and how do we do the reverse of a word is by using this expression colon colon minus one let me just give an example for example i can say my list or let's say yes my list whenever you want to give a reverse of a word or a list you can do the following let me define my list equals one two three four and five now i can say my list okay then i'll say reverse it for me go over all the items from the beginning till the end but do what do minus one do the reverse okay and if i run the, this code no, it will be reversed it will be reversed five four three two one so we use the same technique here go through each word and check is the word equals its reverse if yes if this condition is met print that word else do nothing so let's see the result race car level wow and i can say here if you want to expand it else print print what print let's say nice just to demonstrate the idea nice okay so the third word became nice so i know here that hello is not meeting the condition or i can just make it anything i want okay perfect next question write a program that used range we know range yes it's a function to print all of the odd numbers from 1 to 10 and this is easy for i in range we have seen similar question from 1 to 11 and the step is 2 right i start start at 1 to make 1 3 5 7 only the odd numbers and the step is 2 so i skip the even numbers and from 1 to 10 because if i put to here 10 10 will not be counted and that's why i will take 11 to count 10 as well and here one three five seven nine okay you can play with this question also and if you want the even numbers for example then i will start from zero and then two four six um, and if i don't if i want for example the step three i can take step three for example one odd one even one odd one even you can play with this question as you want huh? so just my idea is the last input here this is the step this is the end point and zero is the beginning point which is by default okay by the way zero is not considered i believe it's considered even still there is a debate i believe on this but anyway python wise programming wise our program is okay then next question write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all the even numbers between 1 and 50 and this is easy we have seen similar even numbers equal a list includes i for i in range 2 51 2 okay this is exactly the same like the one before okay but this is for even numbers 2 51 and 2 and if we print it will give you all the numbers then go through the string below and if the length of a word is even print even i have the string and again i need to go through it then i need 
for loop check for whenever you want to check for a condition then you need if statement so it says word and string dot split why I'm splitting because I it's a string here is not a list if it was a list like the examples here they are separated already then okay but now first I need to split them right if you remember the function is split let me just demonstrate this one here let me say print words this is the name of my list dot split okay and if I run this code sorry this one should be oops split or before that I can remove the print and let me make it just simple without the printing then I have all my attributes I will use a split and then give it a function and then if I run the code then I need to bring it back without split why is not giving split sorry something is yes I need just to put it on top and let me comment everything here and then run the code and no attribute split list object has no attribute split hello everyone let's continue we stopped the last time in the first part of the solution at this question we finished this question let me go through it again quickly write a program that uses a list list comprehension to create a list of all even numbers between 1 and 50 this is easy question even numbers this is my variable equals list and inside the list I will say the comprehension list the list comprehension uh, method let's say I for I in range 251 2 and the 2 starting point 51 the end point and the 2 is the step why I start from 2 because 2 is the first even number if we don't consider the zero and then my end point 51 why 51 because the last the 51 will not be taken and the last number will be taken is 50 and 2 is the step 2 is the step so I will skip the odd numbers 3 5 7 and so on and I will type or print or give the output only for the even numbers next, qu next question go through the string below and if the length of a word is even print even so since I want to go through each word of this string I need for loop and since I want to check for a condition then I need if statement and then since I want to check for the length of the word then I need the len function right so we saw this kind of similar before so how do I start I need my for loop starting with word in string dot split why I didn't say word in string word in string that's it without the split because it will not work I need to split this string I need each item of this string to be treated alone so let me give just an example about dot split if you forget it so here if I say for example my st my string equals and I say my string number one okay then I go down and I say my string dot and then I will have a list and if I say split s p l i t then always I need the brackets and then <coughs> if I run this code it will be split it the string will be split it into a list and each word will be in separated in a co be, uh, between each two words there will be a comma my string number one okay so we are using the same here I am converting this string into a list and separating each word inside the string okay each word of the string so kind of I sent back that string into a list format a list format by using the split okay so I change it to a split using the split function and for each word in this string after I split it I want you Python to check for me is the length of this word is even how do I do the even we saw it many times using the mod 2 equals 0 if this is a true then print even else print the word 
okay and if i run this code even even this because it has four letters is has two letters a is one letter so it's a printed string with three six letters four letters four letters so they will be printed as even and words is five letters will be printed as it is next question write a program that prints the integers from one to hundred however for multiples of three print fizz instead of the number and for multiples of five print buzz for numbers which are both multiples of three and five print fizz buzz fizz buzz okay so we have three conditions so from this i know i need f l f l f correct and because i want to go for all the numbers for a range between one and hundred i need to use for loop and range for loop and range right we have seen the first line we saw the first line before in many examples so i will say for i in range one to hundred one why hundred one because my last number is 100 and 101 will not be taken 100 will be the last number so in this range between 1 and 100 check for me if the number the first condition i will go from the most strict one the most strict one is the number multiple of 3 and 5 so how do i do that i say if i mod 3 equals 0 because the same way we, we, we checked before to for even numbers i can check also for if the number is multiple of three by dividing the number over three for example nine mo nine mod three equals zero because nine divided by three that's a three and the remainder is zero and at the same time i mod five equals zero that's the multiple of five if both conditions i used here and right i used and if both conditions are met what should i do print fizz buzz print fizz buzz else f which is the short lf if it's only multiple of three i mod three equals zero then print fizz lf i multiple of five print zero uh, print buzz i mod five equals zero print buzz if none of the above conditions are met then print the number itself print the number itself right print the number itself because none of the conditions are met let me see i will run the code and here you have all the numbers starting from one one two three three is not printed because it's multiple of three and this is fuzz fizz then four is printed doesn't meet any condition it's not multiple of three not multiple of five then buzz because multiple of five fizz of three then i have nine no let me see i need the first number that meets the first condition which is multiple of three and multiple of five which is 3 times 5 15 so it's correct fizz buzz fizz buzz because it meets both conditions until you reach to 100 which is multiple of 5 okay perfect now this is the last number this is the question this is nice question because it has three conditions and else and also it has for loop also it has the operators here the logical operators right it's a nice question okay let's go to the next question here alternative solution is the same question but alternative solution using list comprehension list comprehension it's a little bit less readable so i don't recommend to use this one for such a question it's better to use the for loop for loop because it's more it's more uh, let's say organized more readable however we can do it also using the list comprehension i can say and there's a trick here since i have else in my program i put the f at the beginning and i start with the most strict let's say condition fizz buzz f it's multiple of three and five the same else then fizz f i is multiple of three else buzz if it's multiple of five else i for i in range one to one hundred if you remember when we had only f alone then we put the f after we put the f after but since we have f else and more than one else then we put it before so it's a little bit tricky so i recommend to use the for loop for this specific question or similar type of questions next question write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all words in the string that have more than three letters i have a string i want to print all the words that have more than three letters and we said let's use 
list comprehension and then we'll introduce it with for loop again just think about this in logical way since i want to go through all the words then i need for loop and then since i want to check for a condition i need if statement and since i want to number of letters in a word then i need a length because that's length of the word so how do we do that i introduce a variable called long words and it's a list it starts with word for word and string to split why did i split the string to convert it to a list right and split each word then i will check and iterate inside each word inside each word so word for word and string dot split if len of the word is bigger than three okay what should i do print long words at the end okay so this conditional format if this condition is met if length of the word is greater than three give me word of word for word and string dot split again string dot split this is to change this string into a list and then i will iterate over each word inside that list after i split it then i will check for the condition on each word if the number of letters more than three or not if the number of letters more than three or not then i will print that list let me run this code and it should give me this string with some words this string with some words okay so perfect so whatever you want you the, the answer of this statement the if condition is at the beginning so what should i do if the length is more than three then give me the word okay the word now i can say word times two and if you remember word times two it will be doubled this 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 string string and so on just to show you that whatever if the condition here if the if statement is true then this is what will happen at the beginning here another point i would like to highlight for you see the if statement is after the for loop however in the previous example it's before because i have else just keep note of this also i can do it for with the for loop alternative solution using for loop and if statement my string is the same long words i defined an empty list and then i will add to it to it so i my for loop is the same exactly here for word word for word and string dot split for word and string dot split if the length is greater than three the same then what should i do long words this empty list now i will use the function append and append what i append the word here okay if so if this condition is met do changes to my list which is defined as long words by adding that word which met the condition so this let's take one example link words empty cell empty list for words and string dot split so for each word of these words is the length of the word greater than three for the word this yes it's true then what should i do long words add to long words this empty list add to it the word that you have just checked which is this so now i will have this and so on so it's the same exact answer here of course because i put multiple by two now you can see exactly the same answer okay these are nice questions even if you get a little of correct answers the point is to do them again try to do them yourself now you have seen the answers switch off the video close the video pause the video and try to do the questions again by yourself until you have zero errors then you will practice more and more programming is matter of experience matter of a practice the more you do the more errors you will encounter the more cases scenarios use cases you will see and the better you will become okay great you have done very good job we have finished a long section another long sec section and now things will get also nicer will have more skills more ability to perform more complex programs and have more practical examples very good job i will see you in the next video welcome everyone again in this lecture we are going to talk about methods in python so this is the first lecture in the methods and functions section where we are going to learn about methods about functions how to define functions and how to get 
the advantage or advantage of the flexibility of Python and create our own functions. So let's start with the first lecture and, and let's learn about methods in Python. In Python, a method is a function that is associated with an object. You can define your own methods in Python classes or you can use methods that are already provided by Python. Let's see some examples about some methods in Python. We have seen many of them. We'll see some examples here and we'll learn also how to get some help and some documentation about the methods in Python. So let's start with some simple examples. The first method, and we saw this before, lower. And this is a method of the string class that returns a new string with all uppercase letters converted to lowercase. For example, I defined here my string equals hello world. And then if I say my string dot, dot lower, it will give me all the letters lowercase, right? The H and the H in this case. Now, one thing I would like to show you, if I say here my underscore string, and then if I just type the dot and wait for a second, you will have this list of some methods, okay, some methods. And for example, you have capitalize, case fold, center, many of them. We are not going to go through all the methods. We are just seeing some examples. And many of these you will see while we are programming or learning a new, a new, a new things in Python. So the first thing I would like you to know that you have a list of the methods associated with the string you have. And how do you have that? You just type a dot and then you will have the list. Then you select the method that you are looking for. For example, I want lower. Then if you start writing the first letter, it will filter and I have three. I will take the lower, then always don't forget the parentheses and then run the code. So this is the third method, lower. Second one I would like to show you is sort. And these are only examples, only examples of methods. Sort, this is a method of the list class that sorts the elements of a list in ascending order. In ascending order. For example, my list equals 3142. If I want to list to make this list in ascending order, I can just simply type my list, which is my string name, dot sort, my list dot sort. Then if I run this code, it will, it will give me the output one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, from the smallest to the largest number. And this is associated with a list. And the first method, lower, this is associated with a string. For example, if I say here, or let me take the string here, my underscore string and I say dot and now I want to sort this string does it work let's see I start s o r t and nothing appears because the sort method is associated with lists only it works with lists only okay the next one is pop and we saw this method as well this is a method of the list class that removes and retains the last element of a list removes and retains the last element of a list so the output will be the removed element so let's see examples my list equals one two three four my list dot pop and if i run this code what do you expect the output will be for because this list or this method will remove the last element which is 4 and return it return 4 not return the new list if you want the new list to be printed on the screen then you need to call it my list and one two three see you don't have you don't have the four in this case okay what if you want both then as we saw before you just type print right and now if i run the code print the removed number or element will be printed then the last call will be my list and i am calling my list if the list is empty it raises an index exception or error now for example let me show you let me define or let me just work on the same my list if i say and it is empty now now if i run the code there will be an error index error and says pop from empty list you are trying to remove an element from empty list what can i remove nothing so 
there is index error the next one is get this is a method of the dictionary class and as we know dictionaries are data structures that map keys to values that retrieves the value for a given key so if you want to know what is the value of any key you use the get method if the key is not found in the dictionary it returns a default value let's see examples so i defined my dictionary equals a1 b2 c3 then if i ask python to return for me b let me just comment these ones now if i run the code so i'm asking python get me the value for the key b my key b what is the value associated with this key the answer is two right now if i want for d the answer should be error right let me just remove the indentation just we are on the same line and the answer here nothing right why because there is no d a b c and there is no d there is no d now what if so we said if we have a key then it will return its value if the key is not there there is no key that is called d then there will be no return nothing and the third case i would like to show you if i have the this case where i want to return from d and 4 i have now d and 4 yes it will work because i defined d in this case okay so now let me check one thing what is the type of this line what is the output of this line is it none let's see so first of all i will make this as a comment and this if i say here type and open brackets parentheses and run the code and none type none type because here it doesn't give error but it returns nothing it tells me that for the key d which is not existing in your dictionary i'm returning nothing so that's why the type is none type okay keep note of these things the next one is init and this is advanced i don't want you to worry at all about this one for now i just introduce it we are going to see it when we talk about classes and object oriented programming but just for introduction this is a special method in python classes that is used to initialize an instance instance of the class it's called when an instance of the class is created don't worry about all these terms and it can be used to set up attributes and perform other tasks for example i have a class i i, I defined a class called my class then there is a function def, define the function and i use this method in it okay and don't worry at all later on we are having long lectures about the init about the classes about defining functions and so on for now i just want you to know that there is an init method in python now let me give you we saw we saw all these methods and there are many methods in python the best way is to explore a little bit from your side you will learn while you are programming also more of them but we cannot go over each and every method because it will take hours and hours and it doesn't make any sense learn them by doing by encountering them and exploring and one way to explore about methods about functions about anything in python you want help about it is to call the help function to call the help function how do we do that you can ask for help for let me put it here for example you have let's say the function we have seen let's take simple one print we know what does print do imagine that you are new or someone is a new to python and would like to know more about this word python so simply you can call the help function and for the word print and gives you details here help on built in function print in module print and gives you the syntax of it then tells you more details about this word print what does it do okay what does it do it's built in function called the print okay and you need to enter a value if you want to separate and so on many things so if you want to see for example another one we have seen range 
click enter or run the code and gives you also more help and there are many methods associated with the range and gives you a list of each method and also gives you example and what it will return we can use it also with lists for example I defined here list underscore one and here if I say list underscore one and let me call a method let's say append I don't know what append does so I go and say help and then between parentheses and I call run the code and help on built-in function append append is a built-in function and what does it do it gives you the details here it gives you the details append object to the end of the list so brief help or tells you more details about this method okay perfect now we have seen quick summary some methods we know what is a method and we have seen how to call for help or check for more details about different let's say object types about lists about strings also we can do about methods about functions and so on so this is a quick overview a start for this section in the next sections we are going to learn more about functions and how to define them keep going and I will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to start learning more about functions in Python functions in Python and we are going to divide the lectures into two parts first part we are going to discuss the built-in functions in Python and we have seen many of them and in the next lecture we are going to learn how to define and create our own functions if a function that doesn't appear or is not existing in Python I can define it and we need to learn how to define it to take advantage of the power advantages of functions okay let's start step step built-in functions are used to perform a wide variety of tasks such as manipulating strings converting data types we are going to see examples and working with data structures like lists and dictionaries for example Python has a built-in function for finding the length of a string converting a string to all lowercase or uppercase and sorting a list and so on let's see some examples first example we are going to learn about the upper function and we have seen this one I'm just showing you again as a start to learn the basics of functions so next time next lecture we are going to learn how to create our own functions so s equals hello world this is function this is my string then if I say s dot upper this will give me the capital for all the letters hello world and this is a function in Python another one is len and this function as we know already it retains the length of a strength or list or tuple or other sequences for example s equals hello world now the length will print or will retain the number of items inside this string including the spaces including comma everything and the total is 13 if I run the code I have 13 for the s and I have 4 for the list l the next function is range and this function retains or generates a sequence of numbers starting from a start value and ending at an end value and we have seen this one as well and if I have my range 1 10 2 1 is the starting point 10 is the end point and 2 is the steps and if I want to print this function it will give me 1 3 5 7 and 9 right because the step is 2 this is another function then I have this sum function and by the name as the name suggests it gives you the sum of a list or sequence and here is 10 and there are many functions we are not going to go over them all of them because you can find them different places in the documentation as I will show you now or within the next programs we are going to create so let me open this documentation within Python website python.org website and this documentation includes help and documents and tutorials about different topics in Python so this is the website python.org and in this documentation it shows all the functions the Python interpreter has a number of functions and types built into it that are always available always available because it's built in function they are listed here in alphabetical order and you can see there are many of 
these functions let's take one len for example and it gives you the explanation what does it do some syntax then it moves other functions there are many so i suggest you also to go around this and play around it learn a little bit we have the range also we learned about the range so there are many things here in this documentation can be helpful but also as we learned before you can just use the help from here if you want a brief range a brief help and this shows you here what is the details of this function which is called range okay it's range and module built ends and range start point end point and the step start stop and the step so this is a quick introduction into functions built in functions in python part one in the next lecture i'm going to introduce how do we build how do we build our own functions so the main advantage of a function is to reduce the time of of execution or building a code so instead of here instead of saying if i want where is the sum let's say sum sum i have one two three four imagine that i want to sum these four numbers and i don't have the function sum so what i will need to do i'll say one plus two plus i need to do it manual right three plus four and then do this operation and imagine if you have larger list or many items then it will be very difficult imagine that you need to write a code for changing the changing from lowercase to uppercase in this case you need to write a for loop long code that iterates over each letter and changing from lower to upper and so on so functions make it short make it short and quick so this is what we are going to learn in the next lecture how to build our own functions thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this lecture we are going to dive deeper into functions in python in the first part we learned about built-in functions like sum like range like len and so on now we said the second part we can build our own functions we can define our own functions so in python a function is a block of code we agreed on that that performs a specific task now you can define your own functions to, re to reuse code and make your programs more organized and easier to read and maintain these are the benefits of the function because instead of writing long code i can with one word like range to perform a certain task which is creating a list of numbers from 1 to 100 instead of writing these numbers by my hand right for example simple example to use a function you first need to define it let's see example so this is the syntax of a function always start with the word diff for definition okay for definition or define diff then the name of your function greet then an argument between the parentheses what do you want to retain this is the parameter okay your parameter name then colon then a block of code tells what to do with this function which is here print hello and I can say print hello for example and I need to return a name I can say here let's try name okay like this this is name it need to match the parameter here the parameter now to, de to define a function let me first run this code just to make sure everything is okay no errors now to define a function you need to specify the name of the function and here in this case is greet the argument it takes which is the parameter name the function definition should also include a colon at the end here and then a block of indented code that specifies what the function does this code is indented you see these spaces and this tells us what does the code do hello name it prints hello plus name so now running the code everything is okay no errors now i didn't call the function to call the function you need just to type the name of the function specific to call the function you simply use the function name greet right greet followed by a set of parentheses and inside you need to tell me what is your parameter you said i will give you a parameter name so now you need to tell me what is the name so if i add parentheses now python says okay i'm expecting you to give me a name example annie i will give mozon for example 
and see what do you expect the output here will be it will be this code print hello plus name so it will be hello and the name is Muzun if I run this code hello Muzun and this can be anything now this can be any for example hello any okay it can be anything here you can enter any name you can enter any name let's see another example and I know it might be confusing a little bit at the beginning that's why we are going to see many examples different scenarios and then play around the code to make some errors intentionally to understand how it works so don't worry at the beginning if you feel confused that's totally normal functions can also return a value for example I am defining a new function called add and what are my parameters a and b two numbers I want to add two numbers a and b for example then colon then what do you want this function to do it need to print a plus b a plus b okay to whatever two numbers you will give me I will add them together through the word return huh? and this word return can be print also they are giving the same result however there is a difference and I'm going to talk about the difference later on return a and b so if I run this code there will be no errors and now if I want to call it I need to go the same level as def because now I'm calling it is not part of the code is not part of the function now it is separate okay so here I will say what I'll say add this is the name of the function see to call the function you simply use the function name so add then Python is expecting two two values a and B so I'll give him numbers I'll give Python numbers 2 and 5 and I expect the outcome to be a plus B now if I run the output will be 7 the output will be 7 okay and this is here I can take advantage I can take change the numbers anytime in my program after 100 lines of code I can just go and say add two numbers because I define this function add okay these are just simple examples here is another example of simple function that takes a single argument and returns the square of that argument so I'm defining a function called the square and I will give the, a number to Python to the code to the function and I expect it to return the square of that number so everything is okay I go down and how do we call the function by the name of the function so square then open brackets parentheses and here Python expecting one parameter one argument to be entered and it will be a number five let's say and the output we expect to be five times five twenty five okay 25 you can change whatever you want the function to do it can be adding them together adding the number to itself or it can be dividing the number by itself or it can be mod of the number I'm just giving different examples this is not a practical maybe and the mod is zero because the remainder is zero just you can do whatever you want in the after the return or the print this is what you want the function to do so basically it's simple you define you say I want a function what do you want the function to do I wanted to multiply it by itself to have the square of that number okay to do that define for me a function called the square because the square has something to do with what the function does right you can call it whatever you want you can change it you can say anything you can say I want to call it for example fun as long you are consistent there is no problem however it's better to have a name that is related to what you want the function to do okay another function or another thing about functions they can have multiple arguments so far we are having one or two parameters two arguments now I can add three numbers for example I don't have to add only two numbers so I come here and I say add to call the function add then what are your numbers one let's say five and eight so these are numbers and the total is 14 one more last example in this video functions can have default argument so far we are entering telling the code or the program what do I want 
after here when I call the function but it can have also default arguments this means that if you don't provide a value for the argument when calling the function it will use the default value for example I defined a function called greet and inside it I have two parameters one is name and the other one called greeting and greeting is by default defined to hello so retain I want this function to do what to do greeting to type greeting plus concatenate the name then if I print a greet alone I just greet Python expect me how many arguments here two no expects only one or two optional if you give only one you need to give the name because greeting is already defined to hello so name is Alice now if you override the default value hello you can say hi for example also this is acceptable so whatever you like run the code and you have to to compare the two cases if I give only one argument it will consider to name so hello Alice if I give two arguments it will be hi Bob okay because in the first case hello already defined that's why it is retained okay I know this is a lot of information take your time digest it and in the next videos we'll practice more thank you and see you soon hello everyone in this video we are going to continue our journey with the functions in Python and this time we are going to see some examples about the functions with some logic some logic and some logical statements so I have here three statements or three examples one two and three and in each example we have the solution we'll go over the question then over the solution and then the explanation okay explanation and sometime in the third question I put the explanation before each step just to make sure also a different way to make things easy for us to read so let's go ahead and read the first question write a function that checks if a number is even or odd we need to check if a number is even or odd and if you remember before if you want to check a number for example let's say 34 is this number even or odd what we do there is famous way we saw it before which is dividing the number dividing the number or using the mod of the number right say num mod 2 num mod 2 and this if the result comes as 0 then the number is even right because mod means the remainder the remainder after the division so the number divided by 2 if the remainder is 0 it means the number is even so for example if I put here 30 23 and I run this code sorry this is a comment here there's no error okay let me just take it out I'll create a new code here and I will just put it up okay let me rearrange so here for example if I say this number 23 mod 2 equals 0 if I run the code false it tell me false why because 23 divided by 2 how many twos in the 23 there are 11 and the remainder is 1 the remainder is 1 and we can check that by saying 23 mod 2 run the code and the remainder is 1 so this is not even however if we say 24 now now the answer let me just remove this and I run the code now it's a true because 24 divided by 2 that's 12 and the remainder is 0 so this is important to understand we have seen it before just a quick refresh now our question write a function that checks if a number is even or odd now to write a function we know how to start right we always start with diff as definition or define and you call the function whatever you want even or odd because this is what I am checking if a number is even or odd then what parameters you will pass to this function the number right you need to pass a number to check if it's even or odd then inside the function see the indentation very important I have my if statement because I want to check if the number mod 2 equals 0 it means if the number is even then colon return even as a string return even else return odd straightforward right so here number one we know that we can use logical statements we can use if statements inside the function inside the function pay attention to the pay attention to the indentation the if belongs the whole if statement 
belongs to the function so it need to be inside the function okay now let's call how do we call the function how do we call the function simply by typing the name of the function even or odd brackets and here you need to pass the number and python tells you number i expect you to give me a number here right let's say 24 i will run the code and it will tell me it's even the answer right if i change it let's say 13 make sure it's working and it's odd it returns odd perfect so it is working so a few things quickly start the function with a diff keyword then name of the function you can name it whatever you want then and ideally something relates to what the function will do then the parameter or the argument inside the parentheses then colon then whatever you want your code to do whatever you want your code to do and my code i want it to do to check if a number is even or odd and then return even if the number is even and returns odd if the number is odd that's why we made it as if statement okay here is the explanation again in this example we have defined a function called even or odd even or odd that takes a single parameter num okay inside the function inside the function that's why we have the indentation we use an if statement to check if the number is even or odd if the number is even the function returns even if the number is odd we put it under else then the function returns odd okay and we can call the even or odd function with different arguments and see the output so here is how we call it by even or odd you always call the function by typing its name similar to the built-in functions similar to the built-in functions okay great this is the first example and here we can see that we have different things in python we are using different techniques in python we having the function definition we have logical statements if statements in this case we have num mod 2 equals 0 to check for even or odd numbers we have strings right we have many things yeah yeah whatever we are learning since the beginning these are components they are blocks we are learning to put them together to create fun to create codes programs and this is short one small one but you will see it more and more when the programs and we learn new things and our skills become helpful to do more complex programs okay the second example write a function that takes a list of a list as an argument so in the first question it takes single element a number as argument now we want a list as an argument and returns a new list containing only the even elements of the input list so we will input a list and i want the function to return shorter list or updated list that contains only the even numbers and remove the other odd numbers so again i start with diff then the name of my function you can say whatever you want even list in this case makes sense then the parameter i will i will input is input list this is my parameter or argument input list now i will come back to the second line i will say i need for loop to iterate through the list because here will be a list inside the input list it will be a list and inside the list there are elements numbers so for each number inside the input list i would like you to check if the number is even or no how is that through the even statement if statement and i know num mod 2 equals 0 this is how we check for even then even list then what i will do i will do to my empty list here i defined an empty list called even list and this is famous technique remember it whenever you want to come back with a list with to add elements similar to our case here start by a variable call it even list and define it give it initial status with empty list empty list then you start adding how do we add to a list by using the function append or the method append right we learned this before so go to my even list which is empty today or now and append add to it a number this number must be even how do we make sure it is even by this if statement if the number is even then add it to the list and very important here you see the 
this line even list dot append number this is indented and it is below the if statement so implement this line which is even underscore list dot append only if the if statement is a true only if the if statement is a true after you finish all the numbers in our initial list in our input list after you check for all the numbers if they are even or no and add only the even numbers to our list then go out of the if list of the if statement and return the even list give me the even list let's see an example if i say now i want to call i want to call my function and i will say even list this is the name of the function and it is expecting me to give it a list input list here so this is my list one two three four five six if i run the code it will give me two four six it returns only two two four six so let's break it down i will start from the top this is my function i give it a list one two three two six then i started with empty list called even list and for each number in this list I'm checking it's even or no. So I will start with one. Is it even? No. Then I will go back to the for loop. I'll go to the no second number two. Is it even? Yes. Then execute this line and add it to the list. So it's added here as four. Then go back to number three, four, five, six, and do the same till you finish. We finish all the numbers. We added only the even numbers to the even list, which was empty as initial status. And then we exit it because we finished all the numbers and returned the even list, which includes only the even numbers. The indentation is very important. Let me go through the explanation one more time, reading these comments. Then we will do some intentional mistakes and see what errors will come back. So in this example, we have defined a function called even elements, even elements or even list. I think I changed the name later, even list that takes a single parameter input list. This one inside the function, we have an empty list called even list. This one, right? even list list that will be used to store the even elements of input list input list even elements then we then use a for loop to iterate over the elements of the input list for each element we check if it's even or odd using the module operator the mod if the element is even we append it we add it to the even list finally we retain the even list at the end of the function now we can call the even element or the even here list function with a list of integers as an argument list of integers one two three four five six and it will retain a new list containing only the even elements of the input list okay clear now let me make a few things now we said this even list dot append this should be or must be under it belongs to the f statement what if i put it out i put it similar indentation there will be an error here let me run the code and see what happens what type of error it will be expected an indented block so python tells you it must belong to the f statement what about the return what if i put the return similar as the f and run the code there will be no mistakes huh? but it will be empty list it will be empty list what else let me go back two four six now what if i forget the colons and the definition function invalid syntax because this is syntax error so the same for the for loop the same for the for loop the same for the if statements remember all definition the function definition the for loop the else statement the if statement all these need columns at the end okay what if i forget to enter here my list also closing parentheses sorry i forget one parent yes let me close it now if i run it there will be empty list right because you entered nothing so python is going to through empty list and will return empty list there is nothing what else i can do so let me go back now if i run it everything is okay number so i think it's a clear now let me go to the next example 
make sure the best way to study these examples is to look at the answers what I did then close the close the video or pause the video and try to do it yourself try to do it write it down it's something to understand how I did it and another thing to do it yourself it's very important to do it yourself and see where did you mistakes third example here is an example of a function in Python that takes a single argument which is a list of integers and returns a new list containing only the numbers that are multiples of three more or less like the second one but has a trick so I define a function get multiples of three and I will enter some numbers here my argument or my parameter create an empty list I created an empty list because I want to return a list so I need to create an empty list as initial similar to this case even list equal empty list and here multiples of three is empty list then I will iterate through my list initial list which are the numbers here and I will say for number in numbers check if the current number is multiple of three and the similar way checking of e for even numbers I will say if the number mod or module three equals zero it means it is a multiple of three right then if it's multiple of three I will add it to the list I will append it to the list by using the dot append method and we'll add what add the number which I checked here and here if number equals or module three equals zero then return the list of the multiple of three return multiple of three multiples of three okay this empty list I would like to return it at the end now if I run the code just initially to make sure no errors now example to use so always remember if you want to use a function just call the name and the name of my function get mult and python will tell you give you the options and then i will enter now see here what python is expecting numbers okay a list of numbers function in python that takes a single argument which is a list of integers so here i need to enter list one six nine let's start with a simple one to make sure the code is working six and nine because they are multiple of three and what if I put here four it should return six only yes it's working what if I put random numbers now and it will return these numbers okay all these numbers hmm. what a lucky okay what if I change this one to one let's see it's removed so it makes sense okay perfect now now let's see um i would like to explore a little bit if i do some mistakes so for example here i expecting me a list what if i put only one number what will happen let's say six first of all it will return six the same if i return one it will should be empty list excellent what if i enter nothing empty list it should be because there is nothing to check but i will return the initial value the initial value it's empty list so always it will be empty list what if i enter not as a list as integer only one number will it work it will be an error here what does it say integer object is not iterable aha uh -huh, this is very interesting it says you are telling me to iterate to iterate through the numbers but there is only one number here integer and the integer object is not iterable in python i cannot iterate over one integer it must be a list even it is an empty list no problem i will iterate through it so lists are iterable it how do you say that iterable integers are not this is very important very good okay now everything is okay perfect so this is a lot i know the best way is go ahead and there are many things here we learned we learned how to check again the even numbers we learned about if statement inside the function again we solidified how to define a function and how to call it how to do multiples of three here and how to again to say we have seen for loops so mix of things for loop with if statement with the function definition different things i advise you strongly to go and play around it try to make some mistakes in uh, intentionally to see the difference between the correct code and if you do any mistake so in the future if you receive similar mistake or error you know okay this is because something i did before perfect thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone let's continue with one more lesson about the functions and this time we will do unpacking of tuples with functions so what does it mean the unpacking of tuples 
let's take an example here we have this list students and the elements inside the list are tuples we have alice 90 bob 60 and these are grades names and grades so the first element is a name and the second one is the grade average grade so charlie 75 dave 85 eve 95 random names random numbers okay so now if i want to do if i want to do for example i want the elements inside as tuples i want to take each tuple alone i want to extract unpack this list unpack this tu these tuples how can i do that there are different ways one way is to say okay for of course since i have a list and i want to iterate over each element i need for loop right for loop so i can start with this thing let me remove here let me say for item in students correct for item students for each item inside my list okay do what print item let me see what is the output here it will retain the tuples so i unpacked i removed the tuples from the list itself so i have each tuple alone alice and 90. so i am unpacking i am removing each tuple and it's alone in one line now and this is using for the for loop right we saw this before briefly for loop to iterate over each element each item inside the list then just to print the item and item you can call it whatever you want as long as it's consistent so i can add t here for example and sorry by mistake and here the item can be t must be t because it need to be consistent huh? and the same answer but t has no name it's no meaning so let me just make it item better okay now what if i want them separate alice alone 90 alone bob alone 60 alone and so on i can I can tell Python see the items inside my list are tuples have and these tuples of course having two elements inside name and grid so what can I say instead of giving one input or one item I can say name and grid right or average the name for name and grade so python understand now okay you have two inputs you have two elements name and the grade in students do what print now i need to change item what do you want to print do you want to print the names alone then i can do that by printing the names and i have only the names you want the grades alone then we can do that also by printing the grid do you want both of them does it work let's say let's see name and the grade and it also unpack the tuple now see there see it's different here because i don't have the tuple right i have each one alone so this is unpacking unpacking the tuples now how can we do similar thing more complex things with with functions with functions imagine that i want to retain the highest grade i want to retain the name of the student or the best student based on the grades available and the best student is the student with the highest grade okay how can i return this is a small list so it's obvious here it's eve however if it was a huge list thousands and thousands of tuples inside it will be almost impossible or very difficult time consuming to check it manually so we need a function to do that one way to have a function to do that how to do it this is what we will do in this example now you can pause the video try yourself it's a little bit challenging which is good because it expand your knowledge and at the same time challenge you make you think more about it but pause the video try at least to start at least to start with the with the question okay at least to start with it and see what you can do can you write for example can you define the function write it correct definition can you check what do i need to use do i need to use for loop if statements both together where do i put the return and so on okay pause the video once you are ready come back and let's do it together so here what i will do i have my list the same names same grades i will define a function the name of the function tells me the best student obviously i need is better to have always eyes as we said before that the name of the function relates to what you want the function to do and the argument will be students i want you to input for me names of students which is already here 
I can put it here, I can put it down, it doesn't matter. It's better just on the top. I have my list. I can enter the list again somewhere else in different scenarios, but okay for now. Then I have these two lines. I defined best student and I kept it empty here for you. Okay. What should I put here in the place of the question marks? What should I put here? in the place of the question marks I must enter something here let's finish the code then you think about it now what I will do normal for as we did before here I have I need to unpack the tuples right I want to for student and average I give two arguments student and average or student here we call them name and grade doesn't matter so here is called student and average student and average in students in this list do what if the average is higher or is larger than the highest average is if the first average 90 is larger than highest average which I defined here then do what the new highest average equals your average let's take example if your average 90 is highest than the initial value here then do what the new highest average will be 90 okay will be 90 take your time try to digest it very important and if this is a true if the average is larger than the highest average then also the best student will be equal the student will equal the student so also here the best student equals the student if you understand the highest average equals average you will understand the second one is the same so what I'm doing here I'm checking each element if the grade is higher than the initial value then I will reassign the highest average to this to the grade to 90 then I'll go to the next 60 is it larger than highest average which is now 90 no then I will go back to the third one 75 no 85 no 95 yes it's higher then what I will do I will reassign the highest average to 95 to 95 and then after I finish all my items after I iterate using the for loop over all the items here I will exit the if statement and the last part of the for loop I will retain the best student I will retain the best student okay because what I want is the name of the best student of course you can return the grade as well so if I run this code of course there will be an error because I kept this empty so see invalid syntax and there is red lines there are red lines here for us to understand so what do you think what do you think should I put here if you see the previous if you go back to the previous uh, examples in the previous video we put it was empty list right empty list so can we do empty list best student we can if you want we can so there is no error here in this line what about highest average what about the highest average now I said we can here but there is a better option because I don't want to retain a list I want to retain just one name so what can I retain here what can I type here initial initially empty list or none right I can write none so the initial value is none this is the base value so I will compare now what about the highest average what should I put initially yes zero my initial is zero because I want just to a starting point a placeholder for now so I want to compare 90 high larger than the zero highest average which is zero initially yes then the highest uh, the highest average a new value is 90 which is the average okay 90 then I will go on and till I finish all of them if I entered here for example 100 let's say if I run the code there will be no error of course but when I call the function it will come back 100 and there is no student with the 100 we'll see it in a minute so let me start with 0 just run the code no errors now if I want to call the function I will say what's the name of your function best student best underscore student and then function open parenthesis and what is exp what is the function expecting me to enter students and where is your list you can enter it manually or you can just return or enter the name of the variable which is a students 
and now if I enter run the code the answer is Eve is if the highest yes 95 and the name is Eve because I asked to retain best student what if I put here 100 what will happen let's see nothing right because you are retaining the best student who's the best student best student is the one with the the best student as per this code is the one whose grade is 100 and there is no one with the grade 100 right you have just identity you just defined highest average so python will go 90 higher than 100 no any of these higher than 100 no so no name of any student will retain because you don't have any right you don't have any the same if you put 96 is the same case because the highest average is 95 any number you enter here higher than 95 will retain none will retain nothing okay that's why we always so what should what number should i enter should i enter number 50 for example you can and it will give you correct answer now if but it's dangerous if the set is large unless you are sure that the highest average is more than 50 then it will be riskier yeah? because if all of them less than 50 then no one of them will be retained that's why the safest is to enter zero to enter just zero because the lowest possible average grade the lowest possible grade is zero all of them must be higher than zero or at least zero right then you compare everything to zero you compare the first one to zero higher خلاص. then you go to the next one perfect play around it see what can you do with again you saw the answers now pause it open your python and try to solve it again with without without looking without looking at the solution because this will help you to practice to solidify your skills to explore to see where mistakes you will do what mistakes you will do okay perfect thank you very much for joining this lesson and i will see you in the next lecture hello everyone and welcome again in this video we are going to learn something in you about the functions something very interesting because it will give us more flexibility and have more power when we come and code using functions so the lesson called interaction between functions interaction between functions and so far when we used to create functions for example if i create a function let me call it add and i want to add three numbers together x y and z so these three numbers colon and I want this function to do the sum of the three numbers so return and I will say x plus y plus z so far we are seeing here the parameters here and the arguments and the code itself all these are either numbers or a list or sequence of numbers but not functions right these are integers or float these are just numbers then if I want to call the function I simply type the name then I will enter three numbers as param as argument, right? So th two, five, and seven. Run the code, and the answer is fourteen. We know this one. We have seen many examples similar to this one. The point is, these are not functions, right? Can I make them function? Can I use a function here in the return in the code itself? For example, the minimum or the maximum or range and so on. We learned many functions, built-in functions or another defined defined functions. The answer yes, we can do that. Let's see how it works. And this is our lesson today. So interactions between functions is a key concept in programming, and it's essential for writing modular and efficient codes okay there are several ways in which functions can interact in python let's see some examples first of all functions can retain multiple values using tuple unpacking or packing in this example we will see let's see the example first then we go to the explanation so i defined a function called it min max what does it do from the name it will give me the minimum and the maximum of a number of a list of numbers let's say and the argument here is numbers or the parameters numbers and what I want this function to do to return the minimum number and the maximum from where from the list of numbers here let me call this function then we comment on it so how to call the function by typing the name of the function min max then what does Python expect me to enter numbers okay numbers so if I enter one number only see there will be an error right because python int object is not iterable you are asking me to go 
through numbers different numbers you want minimum and maximum so there is more there must be more than one entry and how do we enter more than one integer we put it in a list so one three seven eight and nine for example let's see if the function is working it retains one and nine one and nine because this is the minimum and maximum let me change this for example just make it four to make sure it's working yes one and eight minimum and maximum so my function is working and here as we note as we notice i have in the return two functions one is called min which retains the minimum of list of numbers and max which retains the max and you can you can see they are functions because their color is different as well right min and max similar to the min max the min max function color and this tells us these are built-in functions built-in already defined functions within python so this is one way to use the functions within other functions or one way to to call functions within a function also this is simple quick if i want to build one layer also what i can do i can here i can define min and max if you remember how we packed and unpacked tuples we can define two parameters or two items here minimum and maximum equals min max my function and i will enter the c the the, the list of numbers then i will say print minimum equals min minimum which is the first one will be the min of the numbers and maximum which is the maximum number on in the list if i run this code i will have minimum equals one or minimum is one you remember this f string very important from the previous lessons then i have one then maximum is five from where i will get minimum and maximum from the previous line min and max calls through the function min max okay and it will iterate over this list and it will find the minimum number and the maximum maximum number so in this example we have seen two functions inside one function in this example the min max function returns a tuple containing the minimum and maximum values from a list of numbers the tuple is then unpacked into separate variables minimum and maximum through these two lines through these two lines okay perfect this is one example another example functions can call other functions and in this example we are going to see two functions greet and greet everyone so define greet a function called the greet and there will be a name inside it this is the parameter then what does this function do it prints hello and the name which i will return will i i will input then i define another function called greet everyone and it will take list of names okay not one name more than one name names see this is a plural here and different from name doesn't matter what you call it huh? remember doesn't matter what you call this one names but it makes sense to call it names because my input will be names list of names and then i will iterate through these names for each name in the names for each item in this list which includes include names i would like you to do what to execute this function greet name and this is where is this greet name function is the first two lines the first two lines what will this function do it will type hello name so basically what will happen if i call the function every time the function will go through each item in the list it will go to alice and what will happen in alice it will greet alice how is that it will say hello alice then bob hello bob then eve hello eve let's run the code and see the output hello alice hello bob hello eve okay very good so here we have two functions this is the let's say the main function greet everyone inside it we are using another function the third example functions can return values in this example the add function okay let's explain it here the add function i defined one function called add and if i want to see what this function do it's here return x plus y it adds from the name the two parameters or arguments let's run this code first alone so i'll make everything as comment and here i will say add and then 
two numbers two and five and the output should be seven perfect now I will remove it and I go to the second function it's multiply multiply from the name it will multiply the two arguments inside x and y and if I want to run this code let me just make these comments as comments and here I will multiply and then three and seven the answer should be 21 perfect and now the next step is so first I define first I define two functions add and multiply then what I will do I will call the function multiply this is a function multiply I call it by the name and inside inside my arguments the first argument will be to add so multiply here look at multiply it takes two arguments right two parameters the first one the first parameter can be a function as well it can be a function which is add I defined it here so instead of just adding two numbers three and four then it will multiply them uh, the first parameter or the first argument I passed it as a function called add so what will happen here the first add will be executed the function add will be executed and it adds two numbers the two and the three so two plus three five then they will be multiplied the five will be multiplied by four let me run this code and the answer is 20 again I have two functions add sums two numbers or adds two numbers multiply multiplies these two number any two numbers they don't have to be the same by the way x y it can be a b as long it is consistent we'll try it now then multiply i will call this function now let's see multiply and i open a bracket and let's see python ask me for what it needs two numbers right x any number and y any number it can be any number or any function as well right as we see here so here I will say okay I don't want to pass numbers let me pass numbers first and see the result sorry I need to comment this this three times five fifteen perfect now what if I change it now here I say okay I don't want to pass you a number I want to uh, pass a function so the function can be two and let's say nine so two na times nine eighteen plus five no two plus because this is add it will add 2 plus 9 that's 11 11 times 5 that's 55 55 can I do the opposite also can I the first parameter or argument I pass it as a number and the second one pass it as a function let's see so this is add and add what add 2 and 6 so what will happen here multiply multiply the first parameter 2 times the second one the second one is a function will add two numbers inside it two plus six that's eight eight times two the answer should be 16 the answer should be 16 Mumtaz. okay perfect now let's try one thing I would like to change this as B and this as a and then here need to be consistent of course a and B would it no a and B will it work the same right doesn't matter what you call them they don't have to be the same as the previous one as long as long you are consistent everything is okay okay perfect now let's go to the last one functions can be passed as arguments to other functions similar but a little bit more let's say complex in this example we have first function defined as apply operation and it takes how many arguments or how many parameters three a b and operation then it will return returns what what this function will do it will return operation a and b now so far operation what we don't know what is this so let's continue then the second function defined as add add two numbers by the name multiply it will multiply two numbers then here what will happen let's see example I will call my function apply operation and it will tell me how many parameters I need three arguments a B and operation so the first one is a number a passed three another number integer then multiply the operation here I am telling Python this is a function this is a function called multiply so what will happen here what will happen is 
first of all we will take two then the three and do the operation for them what is the operation is to multiply them together because here apply operation says multiply my function inside it multiply so it will multiply two times the three two times the three i will run the code and the answer is the answer is sorry because it takes the last one so i need to make this as a comment first and run the code now two times the three is six correct now if i make changes and now i will comment the first one the second one will be run so apply operation now it says add and add is a function is an operation okay it's a function and this function will add two numbers x and y so the answer here should be five five again the names multiply add operation you can call them anything see and if you want operation as long you are consistent this is i can call it item and here operation i call it item what else and if i run everything is okay it will be the same doesn't matter what you call it it doesn't matter what you call it but because we are doing an operation oh, operation then is better or ideally the name should give you a hint what you are going to do i'm going to do an operation what is the operation it's a function multiply or add multiply or add okay now what else multiply add what else we can do also be careful with the errors if you forget the colon there will be error syntax error invalid syntax what else um we here we need three three arguments if i remove one what will happen is a type error type error because you are asking for three but you are giving us only two so also this is wrong what if i add another number here let's say five what will happen also there is an error because you cannot call this one right we need we ex expecting a function here in your main function up in the function apply operation you are telling me you will call operation a b and this is a function okay this is a function but you are giving me int integer so this is not callable so this must be operation sorry this must be one of these two functions add for example add as a function and everything should be okay can i put a function from outside for example min can i put min what will happen if i put min this experiment and of course it is it will give you the minimum right it will give you the minimum but in this case you are not using either of these two functions okay you are not using either of these two functions okay so let me keep it add and it's using the first one five okay perfect so this is these are some examples how to use functions within functions or with other functions okay functions interaction very important try to do as many examples as you can pause the videos write these codes yourself without looking and then come back and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to overview some questions to practice our understanding and our skills in python functions about python functions so what we will do i will go over all the questions we have one two three four five six seven questions about python functions and then in the next video we are going to go over the solutions as usual please try your best to solve these questions they should be relatively easy and doable so try your best to do them even if you receive some errors look what is the type of the error try to solve it if you still can't come back to the solution video and don't be uh, don't feel overwhelmed or a problem it's totally fine the best way to learn is to make mistakes but you have to start coding so you can make mistakes and you learn from them so let me go over the questions the first one write a function that takes in two numbers as arguments and returns their sum what will be the output of the function when you call it with the numbers three and four so manually we can do it right but we want the function we want python code so question number two write a function that takes in a list of numbers in this case and returns the average of the numbers and what will be the output if we take a list one two three four five 
Question number three. Write a function that takes in a string and retains a copy of the string with all vowels removed. All vowels removed. What will be the output if we take hello world as our string? Question number four. Write a function that takes in a dictionary and retains a list of all the values in the dictionary. What will be the output of the function when you call it with the dictionary A1, B2, and C3? Remember, dictionary has key and value, right? We didn't see any example for dictionaries. Try to do it yourself and see what you will get. Next question. Write a function that takes in a number and retains the true if the number is even and false if the number is odd. This should be easy, right? Straightforward. We have seen similar question. What will be the output if the number is 7? Write a function, next question, that takes in a list of strings and retains a new list with all the strings in uppercase. Again, we have seen similar cases. And what will be the output if your list is A, B, C? And the last question, write a function that takes in a string and retains the string with all its letters in reverse order. In reverse order. What will be the output if our string is Python? Okay, perfect. The questions more or less are straightforward. A little bit maybe need some work. However, they are not that difficult. In any case, in any case, do your best to solve them and don't worry if you get any errors or mistakes or you stuck. Okay, at least you should be able to write the first line of code for each of them, for all of them. The definition of the function, right? Def, the name of the function, parentheses and colon. Okay, perfect. I'll see you in the next video with the solutions. Welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and see the solutions for our assignment or for our test on functions in Python. So the first question was write a function that takes in two numbers as argument and retains their sum. Then call the function, apply it when the numbers are three and four. So here, since I said write a function, then I know immediately I need a function and start the syntax with def, right? D-E-F. And then give it a name. Define your function. Give it a name. And what's the name of my function? It has something to do with the purpose of this function, which is returning the sum. So adding the numbers. So I will add how many numbers I need, how many arguments I need inside two numbers. So I need x, y. Okay. For example, call it whatever you want. Call it num1, num2, item1, item2, a, b, whatever you like. Then I know I need colon then enter and the indentation happen if you wrote the first line correct then indentation will happen automatically by python and here i will write return <coughs> excuse me and then what do you want your function to do what is the purpose of the function is to add two numbers together right is to sum them so i will say return x plus y right this is what i want my function to do finish this is the definition of my function i give it a name add i give the arguments x and y because when i call it how many arguments you want how many parameters you want inside two then i will define what the function i will say what the function wants to do it's sum to sum x and y then if i want to call the function simply i call it by its name makes sense right add and then x and y so here Python tell, tell, is telling me, give me two, two items, two numbers, X and Y. And here I will say, for example, three and four, because the question asks me for three and four. So this is three and four, and the answer should be seven. Okay, seven. See, X and Y, three and four. But imagine that I want to a set of number, a list of numbers, sorry, a list of numbers. So I don't know how many numbers inside. There will be a list of numbers the same way, diff, Add, this is extension for the question, is not there in the question, but I would like to highlight it just to make sure. So I will just put X or I will just put item or I will put numbers. Okay. Then colon, then return. Return what? Return add in this case. Add is not defined, so I will say sum sum okay because sum is a built-in function. Sum is a built-in function. In this case, I can use it and I can put what? The numbers uh, sum the numbers i want you to sum the numbers perfect now if i call it i will say add call your function main function add add what now python is expecting what one enter one entry okay and here i of course need to 
add in this case a list one two three four five for example and run the code and the answer is 15. so see the difference between the two cases the first case the first part i just used defined a function and the input here the the arguments inside are just numbers integers in this case however in the second case <coughs> sorry i defined the function then the argument inside is a list and i used within the code of the function another function so this is interaction between two functions and this is a built-in function sum okay this is the first question let's go to the second one write a function that takes okay without reading the question write a function then this is diff then i want to give it a name the name based on what let me see you have flexibility however make make it related to the purpose of the function takes in a list of numbers and returns the average of numbers so define i will say the average because this is what we want and then open brackets parentheses and inside it you want list of numbers right you want the numbers takes a list of numbers so i put list of numbers do you need colon yes then enter once you click enter or hit enter the indentation will happen happen automatically then i want here return return what i want to return the average now what is the average if you basic mathematics the average equals the sum over the length okay the sum of the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by how many numbers are there 1 2 3 4 5 numbers right so for example let me just put it to explain the average it's basic thing just to make sure for example if you have two numbers 3 and 5 or let's say yes 3 and 5 these are two numbers if i want the average i'll say 3 plus 5 8 divided how many items how many numbers are there 2 so 8 divided by 2 the answer is 4 okay now let me go back here so i want to say here i want to the the sum of the items um sum of these items so sum built in function and sum of what sum of the numbers divide by the length how many items five items and this is the length of the item of the list right length of numbers correct that's it now let me run the code just to make sure no errors are there everything is okay now i need to call my function average and then open parentheses and python will tell me you need a list of numbers so my list is one two three four five one two three four five run the code and the answer will be three because one plus two three plus three six plus four ten plus five fifteen fifteen divided by five that's three okay i'll remove this one we move to the next question write a function that takes in a string and returns a copy of the string with all vowels removed a little bit more what is the output of the function when you call hello world okay so take a function diff immediately then what does it do takes a string returns copy of the string with all vowels removed remove vowels i call the function okay and i call the string as s okay this is my parameter argument inside then i need to define i need to define the vowels because i will use this later in my code so now return 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 what return and look at this let's take it step by step this is a little bit more complicated not difficult but not straightforward let's say this is what do we call it if you remember this is list comprehension right write it writing a list in one line so c for c and s so s is my string c is a character so for any character in my string return this one if the character is not in vowels is not in my vowels string so i defined my vowels a e i o and u and small and capital letter lower and upper cases then i said go ahead and for each letter in my string hello world add it if it's not in the vowels string and here i put join join will join the letters will join and instead of keeping spaces between i just added join and i started with what i started with a string empty string so my starting point is empty string then i said join to this empty string every letter in my hello world that is not in the vowels make sense see this is a new thing maybe not in. we saw we have seen n now not in. okay 
this is in this is not in and whenever you are using list comprehension the if goes after after okay unless you have else and lf it goes before if you are not sure about the list comprehension go back to the lesson on that and study it quickly then come back here so then i will call my function remove vowels remove vowels what is your input it's or let's say what is your string hello world and if i run the code it will remove the eo and o so hll word okay perfect the next question write a function that takes in a dictionary in this case and retains a list of all the values in the dictionary retains all the values in the dictionary values remember a dictionary this is a sample a1 b2 c3 a dictionary takes a key the first part colon then value key value key value so i have one two and three these are values these are values i want to return only the values what is the output of the function when you call it with the dictionary a1 b2 c3 so write a function then i need def then give a name get values or return values or values values of what what is your input a dictionary i will input a dictionary then return what do you want your function to do to return a list correct return a list and i defined it as a list my output i want it to be as a list and what is input inside how do we call the functions the 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 dictionary's values the name of the dictionary dot values okay so this is this should be clear from dictionaries make sure you go back to that lesson if you are not sure about it then i define these values in a list i put them in a list then i just simply call the function get values and inside i put a dictionary a1 b2 c3 okay run the code and my list is one two three one two three perfect if i want the keys then i need to change it to keys this one okay for example keys run the code and i retain the keys okay perfect let's go to the next question now and the question says write a function that takes in a number and retains it true if the number is even and false if the number is odd and this is straightforward so write a function i have def then define the name give it a name is even okay i call it is even or anything you can call it even not odd whatever you like then inside you need your argument or parameter then what does it do this function retains if the number is even or no and this is very famous we have seen it very uh, often we have seen it many times the number mod 2 equals 0 means it's even okay now checking for 7 and it's false let me make sure it's working if i put 8 run the code true perfect okay the next question write a function again write a function def and give it a name what is the name that takes in a list of strings and returns a new list with all the strings in uppercase so i will call it upper or to upper then inside there are strings list of strings list of strings so return i need strings right i need strings inside i need strings so what i will say i will say dot upper because i know dot upper this function makes the letters uppercase and for any what i did any letter i call it s call it item call it character call it c whatever you like so i make it capital letter okay or uppercase and this is for what for any letter inside my strings for any letter inside my strings okay for any letter inside my strings so again this is list comprehension and inside the list comprehension i have a function okay so what does it say make every letter uppercase in inside my strings inside my strings so any letter in my strings what to do make it up capital letter or upper case so let's run this string and abc what if i change this one for example hello it will be capital as well okay 
So this is straightforward. These are small different ideas. The, the main structure is the same. You have def, give it a name. Inside you have your parameters. Then return, then call the function. The trick always, most of the time is what do you want to do? What is the code? Okay, I want to make it upper, then upper. Upper four, you need to iterate over the list. You need to iterate on your list. This is my list. I need to iterate. It means I need for loop, right? And I made it in side a list comprehension of course you can write it in different lines if you don't want list comprehension but this is straightforward one line and it looks nice and readable and the next and last one write a function def that takes in a string and returns the string with all its letters in reverse order then i need reverse uh, this is the name makes sense and then my parameter is s or string or whatever you want and then return return what return the reverse we saw maybe this one briefly before how do we make any string in a reverse order or how to make reverse as having this indexing right we say colon so take from the very beginning all the items inside my string till when till another colon it means till the end so from the beginning till the end then minus one minus one makes reverse this is also we saw it before in very early i think in the strings lesson so make sure you go back there to revise if you are not sure how this works but basically it says take all the items inside your string from the beginning till the end and then reverse them minus one means reverse them and do this to what to your s to your parameter and then i call the function reverse and what is your function what is inside your function or what is the input is python if i run this one it should be reversed it should be reversed and in o h t y p okay so each question has a small let's say idea has a new idea this is uh, adding two numbers basic this is average you need to know what is the average it's the sum over the number of items and the number of items in python we can get it by using the len function in this question we need the vowels and this is list comprehension we saw the dot join method okay then here we saw the get the values of a, a dictionary and the values let me just put this one as it was values not to confuse you the values as we use the dot values method and then we see the even this is easy we have seen it many times and then we saw the uppercase method upper and make sure you understand the list comprehension and the for loop and the last one we saw we have seen as the reverse the reverse how to reverse and this is the small idea colon colon minus one okay perfect thank you very much i hope you learned from this uh, video make sure to do it yourself take the questions again make it yourself make sure you understand it see where are the uh, mistakes you are or the errors you are receiving and correct it by watching the video again and again until you are comfortable with it thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this lecture we are going to learn about map functions in python map functions in python the next lecture we are going to go over the filter function and then the lambda function these are important functions and they work sometimes together so i don't want to read this now i'll read it at the end the explanation let me explain the map function through two examples then we come back and read to make sure we understand so here is an example <coughs> sorry for using the map function to square the numbers in a list so i have a list one two three four five called numbers and i want to square each element each item inside each number inside this list i can of course write a for loop and iterate <coughs> on each number inside but that will be longer a little bit and more complex than using the map function and if you have more complex lists, let's say, or iterables, then it will be difficult as well. And your code will not be the most, let's say, efficient code. So the map function is a built-in function inside Python that allows you to do operations to iterate over items inside a list by using the function. How does it work? Let me show you an example to make things clear. So I defined a function called the square because these numbers the items inside numbers a list i want to square each one of them so what i will do i define a function called square i can call it whatever i want but since i want to square the numbers i call it square makes sense then i will return the square this is what i want to do right i want to square each item inside the list so i squared i square 
them here then simply you call your map function map function you open parentheses then what do you do you write the name of your function which is a square this is the function we define then comma then the name of your list which is numbers right numbers so you have the map function then square this is the name of your defined function then the name of the list okay this is important then if you run the code it will give you it will not give you the output it will give you the name of it will give you it will tell you that you have a map function and this is where it is stored okay to call the function the map function and to get the output the square the squares of one two three four five then you need to put it inside the list why is that because the output of the map function is iterable is iterable is a list okay in this case so if i run the code now you have one four nine sixteen twenty five which are the squares of one two three four five okay <clears throat> very important again i define the function where i what i want this is what i want to do to the list to square each item then i have my list then i simply call the function by putting it inside a list okay another way to do that i can just simply instead of a list i can say for item n then map right what i want to do i want to print the item also that will work because you need to iterate right one four six nine sixteen twenty five the same answer but here it's not a list so both are the same result more or less but i prefer it's easier to have it inside just inside the list like that list and the output i need to remove this and one more and everything is okay one four six nine sixteen twenty five okay now let's read what is written here then we'll go to another example where we'll see the map function with a string so the map function in python applies a given function applies a given function which is a square in this case to each item of an input list this is my input list so i apply this function to this list to each item in this list and returns an iterator of the results very important iterator it's a list the output is a list the function is applied to each item of the list each item will be applied to by the function square one at a time and the result are returned as a new iterator which is a list in this case okay makes sense okay another example would be taking a list of string and converting them to uppercase let's see i have a string list hello world right i have this list and i want to convert each letter to uppercase so simply what i do let me i define a function called uppercase you can put any function you want any name then i will say that for the items i need to take string a list of strings right and i will return the uppercase i will return the uppercase how i return the uppercase my function is x dot upper x dot upper right so here is it's important what you want to do to the list you define it after the return here i want upper here i want it square okay here i want it square so what if i run this map then i put the name of my function upper under square case then i run this code it will give me that sorry there is an error map must have at least two arguments yes because i have this is my function and here i need my string list okay this is good let's see the error again if i run the function it tells me the map function must must have at least two arguments so i have one argument which is my function then i have my string underscore list and now if i run the code it will give me that you have a map function at this place and then if i put it inside a list then it will give me hello world capitalized capitalized upper cases okay upper cases what can we see as errors in this case what if i just make this x if it's not clear if i run the code also hello world doesn't make don't worry about what was written it's just you can keep it anything you can as long it's the name is consistent you have x x here okay you can call it 
letter for example or you can call it n I just want to show you that doesn't matter what you call it here right as long you are consistent n n the output must be the same will be the same hello world okay and you can do any anything you want anything you want inside the function whatever you want to do to this list you can define it inside your function so to summarize to use the map function you need a list or iter iterable, iterable item like tuple or a list for example then you need a function define a function and the function will do what will do what you want to do to the list okay perfect this is the map function in the next video we are going to learn about the filter function thank you very much and see you soon welcome everyone in this video we are going to continue with more functions built in functions and this time with the filter function in python and what does it do the filter function in python is used to filter a sequence of elements sequence of elements like a list and how does it do that by applying a given function given function you define a function to each element and retaining only this is the catch here retaining only the elements for which the function is it true so you will iterate over the list you will check this list and if the function defined here is it true applies to that item inside the list it will retain that item okay let's make an example or two and make it clear for us so I have the list called numbers one two three four five and for each item here I want to use the filter function to get only the even numbers so I want to output to retain only the even numbers in this list how can I do that I can use the filter function how do I do the how do I use the filter function I need to define a function let me write first I want to do it this way so I will say filter and inside the filter you need two input two arguments similar to the map the first one is your function which I don't have let me just write here anything just xxx of course this is not a name I'll change it and the second argument is your list the second al argument is your list numbers here so you need to do something to the numbers you need to do what you need to recheck if the numbers if the items inside numbers are even or is even you just return it you just return it so what do you do here you need to define a function that checks if the number is even and this is easy define is even this is the name of my function and we have seen many times how to define a function to check for even numbers by saying my number x in this case mod 2 equals or true equals 0 right which check, which is checking if the remaining after the division is zero or not this is the way to check if a number is even this is very important and here i will write my function is underscore even okay and now if i run the code it will give me that you have a filter similar to the map you have filter at this storage stored in this location and then i will just put it inside list do you remember why we put it inside the list because the output is iterator and i run the code now and i have the output two and four let me explain it again so I have this list I want to check the numbers inside I want to retain I want to output I want to print on the screen only the numbers inside this list that are even that are even so what I do I define a function I define a function that will check for even numbers and you call the function whatever you want diff is even then you have one argument inside which is the item one item x then you use this very famous equation let's say or formula x mod 2 equals zero and the output of course for this will be a boolean right either true or false now one is it even no then i will not use it two is it even yes then i will print it out okay how do i do now how do i use the filter function simple i write fi filter then two arguments the first one is even this is the name of my function and the second one is my the name of the list the first one is the name of the function second one is the name of the list and put them inside the list to have the output another example let's filter out all the words that contain the letter e so i have this list hello world goodbye okay and i call this string list it doesn't matter then i want to just filter out the word that contains e i want any word that in contains e i want to remove it i don't want it i want only to print out to print on the screen only the words that ha doesn't have the letter e 
okay so i define a function called filter underscore e doesn't matter the name again i keep repeating this then what does it do returns e not in x not n we have seen it before so check is e not in my x and my item inside the list so what will happen here the function will iterate over this list is there a letter e in this word hello yes then i will not print it because i'm checking not in word doesn't include e so i will print it out let me run the code and the output is word right and how do i print it out now we are familiar with that we just write the filter function inside it i write first argument as the function name filter underscore e and the second argument after the comma will be the name of the list which is a string list and i put everything inside a list inside a list to have because it's iterate, it, iterated now what if i want to just to print out the words that includes includes or contains the letter e simply i remove the not run the code and i will have hello goodbye right hello goodbye so whatever you want to do to the list just define it here inside the function after the return word after the return okay easy now if you understood the map function this is the same way but the difference is the filter function will check for true or false is this condition true if it's a true then it will be printed out this condition applies to this word no they will not be printed out and so on okay thank you very much practice it a little bit next lecture we are going to see the lambda function and mix it with different functions thank you and see you soon welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about the lambda function in python so a lambda function in python is a small anonymous function that is defined using the lambda keyword so first thing is lambda is a keyword built in reserved in python and is reserved for this function which we will see what does it do and here two other points it's a small anonymous function okay what does it mean it's used to create small throw away function throw away function means one time use one time use you cannot call it again and again lambda functions can take any number of arguments but can only have one expression okay we'll explain this through some examples let's see the syntax of the lambda function so this is the syntax you start with the lambda keyword and see the color of the lambda keyword is different then you have an argument we'll see some examples colon then expression okay let me comment this and let me show you some examples so before that the lambda keyword is used to define the lambda function because this is reserved built-in keyword then the argument after the lambda keyword is the input value that the lambda function takes they are separated by commas if there are multiple arguments so this is one thing we need to know lambda function can take many arguments then you have the colon then the expression is a single line of code that the lambda function runs okay it's what the lambda function retains when it is called we'll see some examples one thing important to note you can have many arguments after the lambda but you can have only one expression only one expression so let's see some examples quickly I have lambda this lambda then I have my argument X then colon then what is the code will be, will that will be run X square 2 so what does this function do obviously it squares a number simply squares a number and I call this a square I give it a variable name so I can call it later right so if I say here for example square 5 and I square that the output should be 25 right should be 25 p sorry because i need to put it at the end or alternatively alternatively i can just say print if i say print here or just put it the last line what i mean is because if you put it before other lines of code it will not give you the output and un unless you put the code inside the print you are telling python print it for me okay now this is one thing another function also we can see another use of lambda i can say okay x this is my argument and then for each x check if it's even or not right this is famous for checking even this is my expression so the the argument is x and the expression checking for even and the output here 
what do you think the output will be either true or false when I call this function if I say is even sorry what did I do here is even then I put inside the stick 8 for example it's even so the answer should be or the output should be true if I make it 9 the output should be false because double equal sign this is boolean right and the last one here as example we have lambda function retains the first letter of a string retains the first letter of a string so I have the lambda then I have my argument colon then I have the index right the expression which is index of the string the first index which is zero and I called it first letter and if I say first underscore letter and I say first letter of you you need to put a string right you need to put a string here for example if I say hello let's try and the output will be h right if I need the let's say <coughs> the last one I can say minus one and the output should be o okay just to confirm it is working so this is the lambda let's see more examples more a little bit more complex examples here's an example of using lambda function to square a number we have seen this one then here is an example of using lambda function to filter even numbers filter see now I can mix I can mix the lambda with the filter functions that's why you studied functions filter function before so I have a list of numbers one two three four five I have a lambda lambda what does it do here it just let's take it part step by step this is my function we said the filter function is a built-in function if you are not sure about the filter function please review the previous video about the filter function it takes two arguments the first argument is a function and the second one is a list or any iterable item tuple can be so I have a function and in this case my function is lambda function what does the lambda function do it checks it checks if a number is even or no right it checks where in the list called numbers then I don't need the print here I can just simply make it a list oops sorry so what I can do here even numbers I call my function this is my or my variable I called it here this is my even numbers and I need to put it inside list right and if I run this code it will give me, me the even numbers only it will give me only the even numbers very good okay then also I can use lambda function as argument to other functions like map and filter similar to the above case so imagine that I have string list another case hello world then uppercase string equals map I use it with map here and as you remember the map the map function takes two arguments the first one is a function in this case it is lambda function what does it do it takes the argument X and it, the expression here what it will do the code will be making it uppercase okay and then where now we go to the second part of the map function which is the second argument which is the string list this is my list so for this uh, string list do what do the lambda function make it uppercase okay so if you remember in the map function what we used to do we used to define a function here we used to say diff then we say upper for example then we say the arguments right it will take for example a string or x or whatever and then we say here four and we continue for each item inside correct this is if you want to use for for loop or we used to say return x dot upper right and so on then we call the map function then so we defined a function this is one way to do it define a function but if you want to use it only one time and you throw it away again uh, later you don't want to use this code upper like to make the upper case of the strings often in your code in your program then you can use it only one time you want to use it only one time then you throw it away one time use then use the lambda no need to define a function and like define upper and use the arguments separate you can just use it in one line simple like this lambda the argument colon then your expression okay and put it inside the map then we define it as uppercase string and then we put it inside the list because we know the map is the map function is iterable works an iteration so the output will be hello world in 
uppercase okay in uppercase can I do this one okay let me do this one if I take this map now this is the previous just to test the understanding if I put list here what will happen what will happen is the same right should be the same if I run the code it's the same right so no need to define a name here uppercase string then you put list of uppercase instead of the name here just put the whole thing if you want if you want to make it easier and just more readable maybe just define it so it depends how long and how complete complex and another things to see other examples i can use the lambda with filter as we have seen string list i have hello world goodbye this is my list then i need to filter filter what based on what based if e is part of the string or not i need filter then my function is lambda we have seen this function before x then colon e not in x then my list is the string list right my string list then i just simply call it and here should retain the word right if you are not sure about this example we have seen it before in the filter okay it's exactly the same but in the previous examples in the previous video when we learned about the filter we defined a function separately to give me the not in x okay go back to the previous video please and make sure you understand it if it's not clear now we are just explaining the lambda the lambda here this for this code we are showing that lambda can be used as argument inside other functions like filter like map so lambda functions can be useful when you need a small throwaway function like these cases for one time use for one time use or when you need to pass a function as an argument for a higher or to a higher order function like these cases okay this is the lambda function it's important you will need it make sure you understand it practice a little bit and i will put for you some examples and assignments so you can practice more thank you very much so we have finished now the lambda filter and map functions important functions good ones and they can be useful see you in the next video hello and welcome everyone again and in this lesson we are going to start to learn about object oriented programming object oriented programming or oop let's just take take it step by step in this video i am going to explain the overall concept and some important terms and concepts about the oop and then take one example see one example and in the next videos we are going to dive in take more examples and play with it and do many exercises okay let's start oop allows for the organization of code into smaller reusable components making it easier to build maintain and scale software so it's basically building blocks let's say that are readable and scalable and also reusable we are going to see all of that don't worry don't overwhelm yourself now just try to listen and digest as much as you can at this stage is a little bit confusing will not be very clear so don't worry about it so in other words oop is a way to create and use objects which are instances of classes to structure and organize code making it more readable and easier to understand so this is the objective this is the reason we are using object oriented programming to make it more readable to make it more easier to understand scalable software to uh, to to make uh, the components reusable okay some key concepts in object oriented programming the first thing is classes we are going to see classes objects attributes and methods okay let's see one by one classes or a class is a template or a blueprint for creating objects it defines the attributes and behaviors that the objects created from it will have okay a little bit not uh, very clear at this point once we see the examples it will be more clear think about a class as a blueprint or a map or let's say imagine that you want to build a house you need a map right you need the drawings you need a blueprint for the house to be built uh, uh, according to this uh, drawing so this is the class okay this is the overall let's say the blueprint this is your map the the general idea the general view of your code okay the general the general concept of the code for example you could create a class called car car is the class your class this uh, in this case and that this class defines the attributes of the car what attributes for example it's make it's japanese let's say model toyota color black and behaviors such as starting 
the engine honking and horn and so on honking the horn and other attributes so this is the class the class is the blueprint of creating the projects or the objects inside your project objects an object is an instance of a class okay it's an instance of a class it has its own unique set of attributes and behaviors that are defined by the class for example you could create an object called my car so we have the class called car my object is my car that is an instance of the car class my car would have its own make model and color so you define the overall class which is a car then you go and create some objects one object called my car and this my car had has its own make model color and so on you can create another object called let's say car number two car number three and it will have its own unique attributes then we have attributes attributes are the characteristics or properties of an object they can be thought of as variables that hold data for example the car class could have attributes for the make model and color so when you come and you say toyota black um, japanese all these are attributes okay methods methods are the behaviors or actions that an object can perform they can be thought of as functions that are associated with an object so you have the object you need uh, to you need to perform right you need to perform certain code certain actions think about it as functions we are going to see all of these in examples for example the car class could have methods for starting the engine and honking the horn okay how does it look the object oriented programming it looks like this you define the class first you call class and as you can see class word is in blue color because it's uni it's built in word for or reserved word in python and i called it car and i can put brackets here no problem car sorry just need to be this way oops sorry this is in arabic so i need to change it in english yes now it's just the parenthesis okay so class car for example then the colon at the end then you start with div you need to define and usually you start with this unique we are going to talk about it underscore underscore init method underscore underscore okay underscore underscore init underscore underscore this is most of the time you will see it in the class we are going to discuss it then parenthesis inside the first word you put self we are going to talk about it as well always self you can add anything here but as a convention and it's easier for everyone to understand even other programmers when they read your code they will understand the word self if you put something else it will be confusing so just stick to self then comma then you add here what you want make the make of the car the model of the car and so on okay then you go self.make because self.make equals make we are going to explain self.model equals model so self. whatever you put here make self.model okay make and model then we define what my car equals car this is instance my car my underscore car equals car car is my class here correct and inside i will define the information i will put the information so toyota is equivalent to the make camry is equivalent to the model okay so python understands by default the first input here will be for the make the second one for model self is not considered here okay self we use it to call here and to use it to define but later we'll talk about it now if you want to call for example i'll say my car let me make this first of all one by one if i run this code what will happen i will have output with just give it a second because the first time we run it now so it's supposed to give me my car dot make and the make is toyota so i should have toyota okay and then when i run the model it will give me camry so here is it here it is my car dot make is toyota my car dot model now let me comment this 
and uncomment this run the code again and the output should be Camry okay okay perfect now till now we are just highlighting theoretical information don't worry about it too much this is theoretical we are going to dive in so let's break down this example in this example car is the class we said the class and car it's the class it's a blueprint for template for creating objects we are going to create objects we'll talk about them my car is an object see my car this is an object okay this is an object okay my car this is an object it is an instance of the class and has its own unique set of attributes toyota and camry okay make and model are attributes of the object my car make and model are the attributes they are characteristics or properties of the object and they can be accessed using the dot notation see we access them using the dot notation so we said my car my object dot the model okay if you add more we can add more okay now if i say my underscore car then once you press dot you have the options with your attributes you have the make and model if i add more here it will appear here okay now where are we they are characteristics or properties of the object and they can be accessed using the dot notation my car dot make and my car dot model respectively the underscore underscore in it underscore underscore is a method of the class car it's a method of the class car it's special method that is called when an object of the class is created and it's used to initialize the object's attributes okay we use it to initialize to connect the class with the objects okay and this is reserved in python okay you see the color in this example the class car defines two attributes i have class i have two attributes make and model So two attributes and a method called init and an object which is my car okay and an object of the class car is created the init method is called to initialize the object after that the attributes of the object can be accessed and used okay it takes time to digest these ones okay it might be overwhelming now it is because it's not straightforward there are too many information don't worry about it the self keyword again here let's go explain the self keyword what about it is used within a class method to refer to the current object it's a convention in python to use self as first argument of a class method but you can use any other name we said you can use anything here but it's a convention in python everyone understand it so stick to it don't change it otherwise might be confusing the edit method is a special method in python that is called when an object of a class is created okay it's used to initialize the object's attribution the edit method takes the self keyword as the first argument where is it in it first argument is self okay perfect then which is a reference to the current object being created in the example i provided before define init self make model init method takes two arguments make and model and the self keyword which is used to initialize the object again attributes self dot make equals make and self dot model model so these are attributes okay the init method is automatically called when an object of the class is created perfect and it allows you to set the initial state of the object it's a convenient way to set the object attributes without having to write separate code to set them mm -hmm. you can consider init method as a constructor of a class don't worry about it if you don't know what is a constructor it's called when an object of the class is created and it allows you to set the initial state of the object okay all these more or less okay now at least at least what i want from you to know the general structure class then you write any name of the class in this case is a car parenthesis colon then diff in it parenthesis start with self then whatever attributes self dot the attributes equals the same so make 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 three times model 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 i would like you just to look at it digest it kind of memorize it more or less we'll understand by doing many examples then we created a, 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 an object an object here and the object starts or calls 
upon the class name car okay so here car will accept two arguments make and model make and model not three self will not be counted okay perfect this is an overview next exercises or next videos we are going to see more examples and practice more just to make sure we understand what are the object oriented programming uh, attributes classes objects and methods thank you very much and see you shortly welcome everyone let's continue with the object pro object oriented programming and in this video we are going to see three examples my goal is to show you as many examples as possible step by step gradually to able you to enable you to digest the idea of the OOPs and don't feel overwhelmed because this is a confusing concept especially at the beginning but with the time it will make sense and you will make more sense by understanding the objective of it and when you see it in bigger programs okay so the first example is a class called dog second one so I have here the code then the same code but with some comments for explanation and then second example is car class and the third example person class okay person class okay so the class dog I defined a class called dog and remember how you define a class how to create how to initiate a class you write the word class then dog and here one thing important I didn't mention in the last video that the class name conventionally starts with the D starts with the capital sorry not with the D with a capital letter in this case capital D uppercase okay uppercase then the second line your diff and the init method this is init method you start with it then parentheses parentheses self start with self then give whatever attributes you want so the dog might have name age breed whatever you want to define then call the attributes or let's say assign the attributes self.name to name and self.age to age that's it that's it then you create an object this is an object dog1 so i created the class then i want to create object from this class which is dog1 because my class is dog so i need <coughs> dogs right <coughs> so dog1 equals <coughs> sorry dog this is my class then inside how many attributes i need i have one two name and age so i need to enter name and age fido and three so let's just let me show you so once i print dog and i open the parentheses python will tell me you need name and age name and age so name it's a string so fido and age is let's say three okay that's it i run the code everything is perfect no errors now if i want to call it i say dog one this is the name of my object how do i call this object by that dot method dot method then python will tell me okay you have two attributes age and name which one you would like to call i would like to call the age then now if i run the code it will give me the age which is a three okay if i do the same dog one dot then python will tell me name is there and run the code it will be fido this is the name okay perfect let's see the explanation so define a class called dog class dog okay perfect so you might have a homework or you might have assignment or you might have an interview question and it gives you only the comments and you need to do the code right so define a class how do you define a class by writing the word class then the name of the class dog in this case parentheses and two uh, or colon a colon and the name of the class with a capital then the init method is a special method that is called when a new object is created from the class it's used to initialize the attributes of the object as we mentioned in the previous lesson so I how do I put it def to define right underscore underscore init underscore underscore parentheses start with self always then the attributes name and age self dot name to name equals name this is an attribute to store the name of the dog the name of the dog and then self dot age equals age attribute to store the age of the dog to store the age of the dog create an instance next step of the dog called dog one dog one is an instance dog my class then inside the name and the age which were the attributes name and age access the name how do we access by dog one dot name access the age dog dot age okay a print just to print both of them so if i run the code i will have both of them here fido and three 
This example demonstrates how to define a class called dog and how to create an instance of that class. Okay, the class has two attributes, name and age. Both are passed when creating an instance of the class. The init method is a special method that is called when a new object is created from the class. It's used to initialize the attributes of the object. Now the class has no methods so far, but it could have, and this is what we are going to see in the next videos. Let's see one more example or two more examples. Example two, I have in this case car class, class car, parentheses, colon, def, init method, start with self, put your attributes. In this case, I have three attributes, make, model, and year. Self.make to make equals make. This attribute is to store the make of the car. For example, Toyota, self.model, and here I'm following the same, self.make, self.model, self.year, and just write make, model year. Don't define or don't give a name for the make here. Don't say self.make equals Toyota, no. Self.model Camry, no. Here you just repeat the same, self.make equals make. This is how Python works, okay? And the OOPs. And then create an instance, my car, my underscore car, it's part, it's an instance of the class car, and inside I need to enter now the model or the make model year in order Toyota Camry 2020 then access the make easy my underscore car dot make then access the model my underscore dot model my underscore dot year will access the year and so on okay and if I run the code it will give me the make model and year Toyota Camry 2020 example number three class and this case person all of them the same concept class name of the class def in itself self dot self dot then you create a class you create instance you create an instance okay all are the same concepts def underscore underscore in it underscore underscore this is the method in it method self name and age for the person self dot name equals name self dot age equals age these attributes to store the name and age of the person then to create an instance of the person we create it called person1 person1 equals person and inside I need to give the attributes John Doe the name and the age is 30 now to access the name attribute person1.name to access the age attribute person1.age perfect in this example we define a class called person which has two attributes name and age again we repeat the same just for us to digest it, okay? Name and age. The init method is a special method that is called when a new object is created from the class. So whenever we created here an object person1, it, the init method will be called. That's why we need to enter these attributes, name and age. It's used to initialize the attributes of the object, name and age. We create an instance of the person class called person, okay? <coughs> and set it set its name to John Doe and its age to 30. We can access the attributes of the object using the dot notation person one dot name. Okay, I hope it's clear and you can create whatever you want the same way. For example, if I want more here, let's say I have let's say let's take the first example. If I copy this and let's say I want to add more attributes name age and what else I can for let's say breed okay then here I need to define self dot breed equals what equals the breed okay then here see here what happens let me remove this first of all if I run the code see what will happen there will be an error why why the error because inside the init I have three attributes here I'm only passing two so Python says you need to give me three not only two so I need to pass one more so I passed the name Fido I passed the age three then it's asking me for a breed and what a breed I can enter for example lap and here lap for example now if I run the code everything is okay no problems now you can say dog one dot and see the options you will have breed name age if i need breed run the code perfect that's it okay so play with it spend your time try to create the class from zero go to this code here remove the code just see or 
start from this one the dog remove the codes just keep the comments then try to create it yourself okay it will help you a lot perfect i will see you in the next videos where we are going to add methods we have now so far only one method which is the init let's see if we want to add more methods and what advantage it will give us thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone let's continue with our studies of the object oriented programming and this time let's talk more about the methods in oops okay so previously we saw this example class dog define the init method then it has one attribute name self dot name equals name everything is standard my dog then this is the instance equals dog and i give i pass the name fido and the output here will be fido right my dog dot name when i call it fido now what I can do, I can add more methods. I have one method here in it, but I can add more methods also. Let's say, for example, I want to add the method bark. So I will define it. So this is everything here is the same class dog in it, self dot name equals name. Then bark and it has the self always as in each as the first attribute or parameter. Then what it will do, it will just print woof woof. Okay. Then I have the instance my underscore dog equals dog from the class and the name is fido because i need one attribute fido then if i call it my dog dot park it will give me the woof woof twice because i put it twice that's it woof woof perfect and the methods always need parentheses what do i mean here if i say my underscore dog then dot i have two th options bark and name right because i have attribute or parameter name and here I have the bark as a method. So I have both options to select. If I say the name, I don't need parentheses. So run the code, it will give you Fido. For bark, you need parentheses, you need parentheses, okay? Let's see another example. I have a class, I name it square. Then init method, it has one attribute, one parameter side. Then what, it w what does it, what does it do? We'll see it after. So self.side equals side. Then I have another method area and it has the self as the first always first parameter then what will happen it will return the self dot side times self dot side it will take the side and multiply it by itself and remember you need to add self dot side okay not side alone self dot side times self dot side because the area of a square is the side by itself now if you want to call it simply you need to define an instance add it here square sqr equals square and you need to pass a number nine for example okay let me just do it from the beginning so sqr equals and we have square and then once you put this one python says okay you need to pass me the side the side how much i would say nine for example and if i run it let me just remove this one first it will give you everything okay no problems now if you want to call it what you would say is sqr dot and you want the area or the side i want the area for example then you need parentheses and if you run it it will take the nine and what it will do with it will multiply it by itself nine times nine 81 so basic similar to what we studied before here only we are introducing more methods you can add n as many methods as you would like for example we can define define another let's say um let's say para not parameter um let's say for example an equation i would operation 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 and the operation it will have self as usual then colon enter and what will happen here it will return it will return let's say self dot side times three for example just a random one then here run the code make sure everything is okay perfect and then if i i introduce this one i remove the sqr and now i say sqr dot and see the options i have i have the area operation and site if i see the operation i need parentheses and go ahead nine times three that's 27 go ahead play with it and add one method for example let's say um the the another operation let's say operation two and that will take the side and multiply it by itself three times it means nothing in mathematics just for the sake of practicing the python code 
Okay, another example. Let's say class circle, I call it. And then I have pi. This is uh, defined above all the methods. So this is a global, let's say, or this is class class object here. It's on the top. So it will be fixed for all the methods. It will be the same. Then I define the init self and radius. It has one parameter, which is the radius. Self dot radius equals radius. And then another method, circumference and it has self as usual and the circumference of a circle we know it is 2 times pi times the radius times r which is the radius 2 by r now i created one instance my circle equals circle and i passed 5 5 as what what is 5 here is the radius right 5 is the radius sorry this is by mistake here and then my circle dot circumference if i will call it just run the code. What do you think? 2 times pi times 5. So 10 times pi, which is 31.4, should be 31.4. Okay, in this example, we have a circle class with one attribute radius. Yes. The, circ the class also has one method, circumference. Yes. The circumference, this is built in method in it. Yes, we can consider it also. The circumference method calculates the circumference of the circle using the formula 2 pi times the radius. It's better maybe here just to times just to make it clear 2 pi and radius an object of the circle class is created with the radius 5 okay then the circumference method is called how do we call it my circle dot circumference the circum the circumference of the circle is returned 31.4 okay what about if i want to find the area okay let's do this one together i want to find the area of this circle how can we find it? Define area self, correct? Colon. It's becoming like more more um, by default. It's in your head. Def, the name of the method, self, colon, then down. What do you want it to do? That's return, right? Return. Return what? What is the area now? You want it to return the area of the circle. What is the area of the circle? Pi r square. Pi times the, the radius squared so that i would say circle dot pi correct so this is pi times the radius which is self dot rate yes times again self dot radius okay so this is my equations the pi radius squared or by itself and here if you are wondering why i put circle dot pi from where i got this is the same if you say if you say um the self okay solve that pi. but because this is the class object here it's on the top it's better to use the se the class name itself okay whenever it's on the top just use the class name it's the same result if you use self dot no difference but it's better here because I defined it on top because it's a constant. Pi is a constant. So we leave it as it is. It will never change. So just use the class name. And this is common in practice. Now, if I want to call it, what I would say, my underscore circle, correct? Then dot. What do I have? Do you want to retain the radius? No. Do you want pi? No. Area, circumference? Yes, I want the area. And then, do I need parentheses? Yes, because it is a method. Then run the code and the answer will be 78. So if you do this one, it's the same. Okay, so you can define more. Define more if you want. And in this case, let's find, for example, operation. Define a method called operation if you want to practice. And the operation will give you the area of the, area of, uh, the circle divided by the circumference the area divided by the circumference okay let's move to the next one and i have a class circle also it has in it and the radius circumference and area so it's the same this is what we did here okay this is what we did here so perfect these are methods this is how you add a method in the object oriented programming very helpful you are using and just pay attention to this one here i have pi I identified it as a constant on top of the method. So this is class object parameter. Okay. It's a number. It's 
general it will never change because i identified it as a constant unless i change it from here okay perfect go ahead practice play with it and i will see you in the next video with more examples thank you very much hello everyone and welcome again to the object oriented programming in this video we are going to learn about inheritance inheritance and object oriented programming so let's introduce it first then see two examples to make the idea clear so inheritance by the name by the by the way the name is like inheritance you need to inherit something from something else and usually or normally you will inherit from the smaller to the bigger right so here we are going to see inheritance is a mechanism an object oriented programming that allows a new class okay and we call subclass or derived class to be based on an existing class the super class or the base class the don't worry about the names we'll see them now in examples the subclass inherits the attributes and behaviors of the super class and can also have its own attributes and behaviors straightforward here is a simple example of inheritance in python so i have a class called animals and this is a super class or the basic class because it's the let's say the father the parent class is the on the top then i it has in it method with self and it will just simply print i am an animal or i'm animal I'm an animal better then another method makes sound and self print some generic animal sound okay this is basic this is my base class or super class then i defined another class below it and i called it dog and see what's the difference here here we used to have the class animals and then brackets or parentheses empty nothing inside now if you want a subclass you want to tell python okay this is a subclass of the animals class and you need to pass animals inside the name of the super class need to be passed inside the subclass this is a subclass or derived class then you have the init method with self and here another difference you need to add init method here dot see super dot what is the super the super is a function to tell python that you need to take the parameters the attributes from the super class from here also this super can be animals can be animals like here i can tell python this is animals dot in it okay i can say that i can do animals but the best practice is to keep it as super as super why is that because in the future if you change the super class name animals then you need to change all the names in any subclasses of of the animals class okay and that might is not a good practice so here super خلص. you have it only one time everything is okay and then dot the init method then print what we'll do simply i am a dog print i am a dog for example then we created the instance dog with a small d lowercase equals the dog the big one okay this is and see here we have no methods inside okay but yet i'm able to call the make sound the make sound is a method under where it's under the super class the animals class the animals class it's not under the dog class it's not here however i'm still able to call it because i am inheriting all the methods the attributes from the super class you see the difference if i run the code everything is perfect it will says i'm animal i'm a dog and there is some generic animal sound so it it was executed even it's not part directly it's not under directly the subclass the doggy class because it inherited how it inherited by passing animals in the class and by writing this line of code super dot in it okay let's see another example so the main difference is you pass the animal the super class name in the subclass and you write super dot in it below it second example i have another class person this is super class then init method it has one attribute or one parameter name self dot name equals name then i have display underscore this is the method and what it will do it will display the name and it will type this is a person with the name okay and make sure you write self dot name not only name then i have a subclass called student and because it's a subclass of the super class person i need to pass the name person here 
and then define the init method and it has two attributes or two parameters name and id then i have the super dot init just to tell python yes this is a subclass then i have self dot id equals id okay which will just define the id i didn't define i didn't say self dot name equals name c important because already it's here defined in the super class so no need to do it again i can override it if i want but i don't want now it's just the same then i'll say s this is an instance of the student class and I pass two. How many parameters I need here? I need name and ID. Alice and one, two, three. Then self dot display name. Where is this display name method? Is it under the student class? No, it's under the super class display dot name. Right. However, I am still able to call it because I am inheriting everything from the super class. So if I run the code, it should be okay. This is a person, Alice and see the output is this is a person colon alice the name okay okay see the explanation also here just what we said the student class doesn't have the display name student class doesn't have the display name method but it will inherit the display underscore name method from the person class from the person class the super class and it can use it directly after the student class in it method is called so after we call the init method we can use it you can see that when we create an instance of the student class and call the display underscore name method on it it will print this is a person so what does it mean when we call the display this when we call this method it will print this the execute whatever under it right okay perfect this is the inheritance this is inheritance it's very helpful because it makes your code more readable and also shorter right you don't need to write again here you didn't need to define display underscore name again because you can inherit whatever is in the super class okay perfect this is inheritance thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone let's go ahead and study a new thing in object oriented programming and this is special methods we learned about methods the init method and we learned how to define methods like bark method in the dog uh, class example and circumference and area methods in the circle class now let's see three special methods and called the under methods because i will explain to you why in a minute let's see the explanation then we see examples as usual so in python special methods are methods that have double underscores double underscores and this is where the name comes from d under double underscores at the beginning and end of their names like the init method also no known as d under okay we said this these methods are used to define the behavior of certain operations on an object such such as addition or indexing two of the most commonly used special methods are the string str and the length methods and see both of them has double underscore before and after the str method is a special method that is used to define the string representation of an object when you print an object the str method is called to retain a string representation of the object i will show you what does it mean if you don't define a str method in your class python will use the default one which will give you the memory address of the object the memory memory address okay let's see example before we move to the length so i have a class let's call it pi class it has init method with one parameter name self.name equals name then i here the object is my class and john right this is the name now if i say let me remove the lin as a comment now if i say print object here it will give you the parameter see here it'll give you the memory address of the object this is the memory address of the object my object is the obg which is my class okay the if i print it it will give me the memory this is the memory address now if i want to print uh, to print it to have the output i need to define a str method i need to use the str method so how to do that the same way very simple straightforward diff underscore underscore str underscore underscore then self as usual colon then return self dot name this is what you want it you want it to return the name so if i run the code now 
will give you John Doe. Okay, this is the name. For example, we entered here. Okay, it will give you the name. Compared to the previous one, because I didn't define the str, it will give you just the memory location. Okay, where you stored it. This is for the str. We'll see more examples. Then we, if we talk about the len method. It's a special method that is used to define the length of an object. We saw it before, but we saw it for a string or or list or something, right? Uh, similar or tuple, for example. But now we want to see it for objects inside the classes. It's used when you call the len function on an object, on an object. If you don't define a len method, there will be an error. Python will raise a type error when you call the len function on an object of that class. Let's see what does it mean. Now, let me and comment this and see what will happen here I call the len object the length I want the length of John Doe right it will give you type error type error which says object of type my class has no length has no length so I need to define using a special I need to call special method define underscore underscore len underscore underscore self as usual colon retain the length you need to retain the length of self dot name right and then the object this is my instance i will call the len obj and it will do it's eight because one two three four space five six seven eight it has eight characters okay including the space so this is the length method so this is important to note and just remember if you call the if you print the object without defining the str method then it will not give you an error it will just give you the memory where you stored it and for the len method it will give you a type error another example i have a class my list i have the init method and inside it there are items one parameter items then save dot items equals items then define the str define the len two special methods and then I'll say my list equals my list from my list here. I defined one object. I say one, two, three, four, five. Then if I print my list, it should print one, two, three, four, five. And then the length is five because one, two, three, four, five, right? If I comment len, now what will happen? I will have type error. Yes, because the length. And you have the right, the red line, control Z and then run it again everything is okay if i comment the str what will happen it will give you the memory yeah where it is sitting now so this is important this is important to know and the last thing is the delete method or del method is a special method in python that is called when an object is about to be destroyed destroyed or deleted it's also known as the destructure method is defined using the double underscore as uh, as we said then del and this method is used to release any resources that the object may be holding for example you defined the object let's say here my list if you want to destroy it you want to release it then you can use this method let's see example so class my resource then I have the init with the name parameter self dot name equals name. Then what will what will happen is to print the name and resource created. It will say this resource is created. Then R E S one. This is an instance. And if I run the code, everything is okay. File resource created. File resource created because I passed file right. I passed file. Now, if I uncomment the delete, the delete method, how to define it, how to call it, the same like the str and the len. Just def underscore underscore del underscore underscore self colon, then print and whatever you want inside, right? We are using the f format, self dot name, not name alone, self dot name, resource deleted, whatever you want to say. And then you just define an object res1 it's part of the class my resource here and how many parameters i need i need one which is the name and i call the name is file and then if i want to delete it i remove this and run the code and it gives, tells you the resource is created but then the file resource deleted okay deleted because once you call the dal you 
simply are deleting the resource and the message I told Python okay once you delete the resource just to print a message that the resource is deleted okay so these are three simple special methods there are many other methods you can look at the documentation but these are the for this stage the most commonly used okay perfect that's it about the special methods thank you and I will see you in the next video hello everyone okay it's time for a nice homework quick one so we have one two three four five questions we have five questions and in this video we'll go over them and in the next video inshallah we are going to see the solutions so the first question is create a class they are connected create a class called person that has two attributes name and age also add a method called display underscore info that prints out the name and age of the person straightforward and always step by step go word by word create a class then immediately go and say class right and then the name what's the name of the class person and so on you know the rest but my point is take it word to word and try to understand read the whole question first understand the problem then go and create start creating your code second question create a class called student that inherits from the person class from the first class add an attribute called student underscore id and a method called display underscore student underscore info that prints out the student's name age and student id third question create a class called teacher that also inherits from the person class from the first class so the first class person is a super class and the student and teacher are subclasses so create a class called teacher that also inherits from the person class add an attribute called teacher underscore id and a method called display underscore teacher underscore info that prints out the teacher's name age and teacher id fourth question create an instance of the student class the second class this one and an instance of the teacher class and call the display and call the display underscore info mm -hmm. display student display underscore student info and display teacher underscore info okay so what you need to do create an instance of the student class and the teacher class and call the display underscore info display underscore student underscore info and display underscore teacher underscore info all these methods to make sure they work correctly create and the last one create a class called course that has two attributes name and code also add a method called display underscore course underscore info that prints out the name and code of the course okay so it's about inheritance about creating classes methods kind of mix of what we studied so far okay perfect i'll see you in the next video with the solutions but please try to solve it yourself make as many mistakes as you want this is not the time to become to to write a full program or codes and uh, without errors this is the time you will never yeah and it's so difficult and maybe even when you are advanced programming you will still have errors you will still have errors so the best way is just go ahead and try just dive just put yourself in try to solve it make as many mistakes and learn from them that will help you a lot in the future thank you i'll see you in the next video with the solutions hello again okay i hope you had good time solving the homework and doing it and don't worry regardless what or how easy was it for you or how difficult was it for you don't worry this is the best time to practice and learn okay let's go ahead and see the solutions the first one let me make it a little bit bigger not that much okay so create a class called person called person sorry that has two attributes name and age also add a method called display underscore info that prints out the name and age of the person basic class so create a class called person class person two dots two uh, sorry one column and if you want parentheses that's okay then i know for person for a class i need in it so in itself how many attributes two attributes what what are they name and age so i always start with self then name and age here i have in this case then self dot name self dot age self dot name equals name self dot age equals age then also add a method called display info so def display underscore info and always it takes self 
that prints what does it do this method it prints out the name and age simple print the name and age you can say use the format the f format or or the dot form you can use either either the f format or the dot format now we are using the f format the f string so here i have the f if you are not sure about this one go back to the first section i believe where we explain the print formatting look at that lecture to give you more details so i have the f then a string name and this is just to print name then i will write, i would like to pass by the self.name not name alone self.name then comma age self.age and i close my quotations and then i just close the parentheses and then if i want to call it i created instance person1 equals person this class and inside i need two attributes two parameters name and age john and 30 then i will call it by saying dot display underscore info if i run the code everything is perfect name john age 30. okay perfect next one create a class called student is the same yes class so class student that inherits from the person class immediately it inherits from the person class then i need here in the person class it's super class we kept it empty here but for the student it is a subclass so it need to inherit from the person so i will write person between the parentheses then define the init method how many parameters add attributes called student id and a method called from the person add an attribute called student underscore id student underscore id and a method called display under student underscore student underscore info this is the method okay that prints out the student's name age and student id okay perfect here just add an attribute called student underscore id you might be asking okay where is it this is it uh, self dot student underscore id equals student underscore id what attributes this class student has it has the name age and student underscore id can i remove the age and name yes because they are already in the super class i don't have to add them i don't have to add them however they are there it's okay if you want to keep them it's not yani this is good also to know that we don't because we might override if we want to override the super class we can we can use them here as well so that's totally fine that's totally fine however you don't need them for this example so far because they are in the super class in the super class now then create a method display underscore the student underscore info this is it and it does print the name and the age and the id then i created an instance a student one always you create an instance object if you want to pass the parameters and type it out or print it out student it takes from the super from the class student the name and the what is this this is the student the student id right the name age and student id then i have the student one dot display underscore student underscore info okay and this is the method and if i run this everything is perfect everything is perfect yes now of course i can this is simple straightforward example but i can also yani use things are not available here let's say for example you want the student yani the method display underscore student underscore info is available under the student you might be asking so why i'm using the inheritance in another situation you can say student one dot something is not available in the class in the subclass student i can say that display underscore info display underscore info this method is not under the student class right display under let me make sure yes it's not there display underscore info and if i call this one it should be okay also yes it gives you mary age 20 name mary age 20 makes sense you see what i did here at the last point i just want to this demonstrate for you where is the advantage or the benefit of the inheritance because i can inherit from the super class this part this method display underscore info is not part of the student class so i add it i called it i called it by simply dot display underscore info okay even though it's not under the subclass 
but I can call it because I am inheriting. I added the name of the super class person and I added the super dot init method. Okay, perfect. Then similar to the student, I will add a teacher. It says create a class called teacher. This is class teacher also inherits from the person. So I add person and you will see the line super dot init here and then add an attribute called teacher ID teacher underscore ID. Where is it? It's here attribute self the teacher underscore id and i have it also here teacher underscore id in the init then add a method called display underscore teacher underscore info which is this one that prints out the teacher name age and teacher id name age and id the similar very similar example very similar example to the student but this is for a teacher again you can say teacher one dot dot what i need to take from the inheritance which is display info is not here but i still can call it because i'm inheriting from the person i call it everything okay it gives you only the name and age without the id okay display info perfect now we can go to the next one create an instance of the student class and an instance of the teacher class and call the display underscore info. Okay, this is what we did just now above, right? Display student underscore info and display underscore teacher info. So we are calling all the methods. The display underscore student underscore info, these are in the student class and the display teacher info, this is in the teacher class. However, the display info is in the super class, the person class. Okay, just to make sure he's saying here to make sure they work correctly the inheritance what you did So this is shows us where is the inheritance Playing role. Okay. See because I'm calling it. This is from the super class coming This is coming from the subclass super class subclass Okay, this is the why the inheritance was there. Okay, because I was wondering why the inheritance we have it So now in this question we have it. Okay, if you were wondering and the last one is Create a class called course that has two attributes name and code also add a method called display underscore course underscore info that prints out the name and code of the course so the solution simple class called course two attributes name and code always start with self and we have the init method then self dot name equals name self dot code equals code if you did all the examples all the practice practiced before with us in the videos this become more like second nature self dot name equals name self dot code equals code then another method what is the method here display course info and it takes self as usual then print print what the name and code of the course name if format name if string name self dot name don't make it only name and code self dot code okay and then the code is running everything is perfect they didn't ask me to call anything but if i want to call i will simply assign a course this is an object instance i said course equals course small uh, lowercase uppercase and i will pass what you need to pass two things the name and the code introduction to oop object oriented programming and the code of the course csc101 for example any anything you would like then i will call it by the method display course info run the code everything is perfect and the output is name introduction to oop which is taking from here okay and the code is there this is not inheriting everything not inheriting any for now okay perfect this is a quick overview of the solution make sure to make it with your hands if you didn't do it yet do it now i would love from you i would like from you really to practice because this python or any programming language you need to practice you need to do it yourself okay thank you very much and i'll see you in the next lecture